There Hello we go. and welcome along, everybody. There we are. <laughs> How are we doing? Welcome to the uh, grand finals of the Farming Simulator League for season four. I am joined by uh, my good friend Matty or Cast by Copter. Uh, welcome along. This is one hell of a weekend we have ahead of us. That's true. Welcome, welcome to the uh, to the World Championships, and thank you, Alex, for the introduction. Yeah, it's gonna be time for the World Championships. Finally, the weekend that everybody has been waiting for. We got a glimpse of the action yesterday when we finally decided who's gonna be the eight team that's gonna join the World Championships. Now we have all the eight teams kind of like decided, and of course, as we saw, it was Astrogon who made the uh, to the final spot of the uh, of the Grand Finals, and it's gonna be the first match of today as well because it's gonna be the first place versus the eighth place on the circuit points that we're gonna be showing in a second. So that means that we're going to start the, uh, start the weekend with Trelleborg versus Astrogon. So this is going to be a, well, interesting lineup. It is very much. I mean, Tr uh, Astrogon was showing a lot of improvement during yesterday's games. Um, the last game, they, they won by quite a bit. So, uh, yeah, good to see that. But they do face a bit of an uphill battle with this first match today against Trelleborg. Um all is not lost, though, if they lose against Trelleborg. You can lose your, uh, you can lose one game in this uh, first set and still make it through. So, uh, yeah, these group stages, you can make that little bit of hiccup and still make it through to the finals. So, uh, yeah, facing Trelleborg at this stage, not such a huge problem, so long as they win the rest of their matches. Yes. I mean, the groups today, so we have group A and group B, and they're all going to be like a standard double elimination bracket, which means that just like Alex said, that one team can still, you know, they can lose still one game, and then they will drop from the uh, well, from the winner's bracket, from the upper bracket to the lower bracket, and then they can kind of like, you know, still keep going on the lower bracket. And in the end, we do have the winner of the uh, upper and the lower bracket who's going to proceed. We're going to have a graphic from that later, so we're going to explain how it goes. But the, uh, that's, the, that's the idea. So one game you can lose, and that's about it. So ch second game, second loss, and then you're unfortunately out of the tournament. Of course, we do have a huge amount of prize pool money available as well. The teams are battling from 40,000. That's a lot of money. I mean, uh, I mean, Alex, you're a huge New Holland fan. Uh, can you buy something from New Holland with that money? <laughs> 40,000? I, th I think you could buy at least a, a, a little tractor from uh, from New Holland with that money, which would be... Uh... Which would be quite nice. We are going to go to the circuit points in a moment just to see what the standings are of the teams as they're coming into this. Um, which, uh, speaking of New Holland, they are, of course, uh, now sponsoring Farmers Fl Flamboyance, who are sitting at the second point on that table with uh, 400 points. So there we go. There is the circuit points. Trelleborg sitting nicely at the top with 500 points new holland uh the former famous flamboyance uh there at 400 and then down the bottom you can see astragon have now taken eighth place um with uh from um Cort uh, cortiva having beaten them in the play-in yesterday so uh yeah lots of really good teams in this uh, in this top eight that are playing this uh this weekend and of course, the uh, the circuit points, they don't matter anymore. So they are done, basically. You just needed to make on the top eight. Of course, you claim the prize money from the online tournaments. But now when you're here, it's all on the equal line. It's only the position on the circuit points that decided how the team's going to be uh, kinda, like divided between the groups, who they're going to be playing against. And of course, like we mentioned, Trelleborg, who claimed top spot on the uh, on the circuit points, they will play versus the last place team, the eighth place team. So that's going to be the first lineup, as we mentioned. But the, uh, yeah, $40,000 uh, dollars on the line and um and like i said it's a lot of money of course they claim the the money from the online tournaments as well we had a ten thousand prize pool on each of the tournaments before this so the total prize pool of the whole season has been one hundred thousand. so i'm pretty sure that with that money at least you get a bailer right alex oh uh, well uh, small bailer maybe, maybe. <laughs> certainly if you go back <laughs> 20 years you can definitely get a bailer for it i think farm machinery has sort of bumped up in price over the last couple of decades <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, I, I'm, I'll be honest. I have uh, no idea how much bailers are costing. I mean, in real life. So I'm just guessing here. Maybe somebody on the chat knows better. I think. I think you could buy my house for the price of a bailer these days. <laughs> which okay. is quite something. So which is better, like uh, your we house are going... or bailer? 
of my house. <laughs> <laughs> I like my house. It's very nice. <laughs> We're going to have a look at the bracket in a moment. Um, for the group stage A, I think going into this, I'm just going to bring it up myself. So, yeah, we are going to we are going to have the bracket A. Um, this of course is uh where we're gonna see trelleborg play first against astragon followed by my insanity versus bednar i think my insanity versus bednar is going to be a very interesting game two really close uh closely matched teams there uh that uh, it's going to be a real real fight uh trelleborg versus astragon i i think astragon are showing some great stuff um, but we'll see how we go. And then the second group we've got today, New Holland versus Voltra is up first in that in that pairing. Um, again, New Holland, former uh, Premier's Fanboyants, are playing an amazing back half of the season. Um, and then we've got Dietke Enfield versus Lintner in the second game. Again, two very closely matched teams in that game. So I think that's going to be a really good match as well. Um, any standouts for you there, Matty? Um, I mean, of course, I, I really like how yeah, the first game of the group is kind of lineup. You have like two different manufacturers versus each other. So we have New, New Holland versus Valtra. So that is, of course, like catching my eye as, as a lineup because that's uh, two manufacturers who are like competing with each other. And one thing about the schedule. So we had the group brackets there. So we're going to play all the matches from the group A and then we got to go to the group B. So group A is going to be as a whole played first we know the first two games then are we going to follow up on the upper bracket matches or the lower bracket matches after the two, two first ones that's going to be decided later so we'll know about that later and of course then when the group a is done and we know who's going to be advancing all the way to the next stages of the tournament from there then we play the group b so that's the uh, that's the schedule of today yeah and we're going to be playing four games from each bracket today so the only game from each bracket that will be left for tomorrow is to decide which of the teams that have uh, have lost uh, from each bracket is going to make it through to the final. So there will be uh, there will be one team definitely through from each bracket today. There will be one team definitely knocked out from each bracket today, and then there will be two, two teams who need to sweat it out. We're going to be sweating it out overnight, waiting to see if they're going to make it to those overall finals um uh tomorrow which is uh which is quite a, a nerve-wracking place to be i think uh overnight tonight mm. well we are going to be getting close to the moment you have been waiting for because the first game is just about to start and i'm just hearing to my eye that the yeah, thought well not to the eye to my ear <laughs> so i'm going to be hearing to my ear a bit of information that we're going to be seeing soon when the trailer ball players are going to be approaching the stage so we have these nice cameras of course the players are in a LAN, so they are playing in a local area network if that makes more sense and so all the teams are present on on germany currently and that they are playing on the same environment so we're going to be of course remotely casters unfortunately we are not at the venue but we can of course enjoy from this lovely uh, lovely uh, camera angles and view from the venue and we can actually see the players as well and of course we do have the interviews just like just like we had yesterday as well so after each of the game there's going to be an interview and there we go that is the handsome fellas from Trelleborg look at those guys they are just going to stage they know that they're gonna own it yeah they must be going into these finals really competent they've had such a strong season and uh it's it's they they know uh, where they where they're going and what they're doing, um, and uh, it'll be uh, it, it's going to be really great uh, for them. I think today, uh, Astragon is a, an, an interesting match to, to start them off with. Um, a team who have changed their uh, tactic uh, just this week in order to to to, to beat the receiver. Um, it'll be interesting to see how it runs for them. Uh, with with that tactic against Trelleborg, of course, Trelleborg won't have seen very much of it, um, and so uh, won't have had an awful lot of time to adapt to it. So uh, yeah, we'll we'll get to see what what Trelleborg do and whether we have a bit of an upset uh, as a result of that. Yeah, that is true. I mean, the strategy has been changing. Like you said yesterday, there's the Astrogon players who claimed this spot on the on the grand final yesterday on the evening. We had a separate broadcast from that, so we can see Astrogon approaching the stage as well. And then 
we'll see what's going to happen. But I, I mean, regarding the strategies that we spoke earlier, there was a discussion that Astrakhan they did change the strategy on last Wednesday, and now they are kind of like you know playing the same game as the others. And then you, Alex, mentioned that, for example, Trelleborg. There's a bit of like unknown factors how they play versus this kind of strategy we have seen lately. But we have also seen Trelleborg as the masters of adapting to the different strategies. So what do you think? What what are the chances? I I'm pretty sure that Trelleborg has been you know practicing quite a bit. Yeah, and I, and I think what what we're likely to see is if Astragon's new strategy does catch them off guard, um, we will see in the second match that that they'll adapt to it and they'll come back. What Astrogon need to do is if their strategy does work and they do manage to disrupt Trelleborg in that first game, they then need to have something else to pull out of the hat to then uh, to get them in the second game. Because, uh, as you said, Trelleborg, masters of adapting to strategies that other teams throw at them. And more often than not, uh, they will adapt to that and uh, and, and cause a... a, a, a cause, the, the team to lose in the second game. Mm. And of course, I mean, a lot of people probably wondering, where's Kermit? Because I mean, where's Kerminator? He should be here. It's the grand finals. <laughs> well, he's going to be here later. So no, no worries about that one. I mean, you know, guys, he moved to a new area on the Chicago next to the offices of Giant Software as well. But what I heard that it's pretty damn cold currently on that region. And it's, it's like minus 10 Celsius or something like that. And he was really worried that if he's going to start like cycling to the office, like, you know, 2 a.m. local time that he's going to freeze. Because I mean, he's not from Finland like me. I mean, he cannot handle the cold on the same level so it's going to take a couple hours to wait for the weather to warm up a little bit and then it's going to move to the office probably has a, like a nice blanket maybe a cup of coffee with him and maybe even pancakes who knows yep a nice warming pancake to get him started if he's lucky however we're getting started now and that was an awesome segue um with Trelleborg versus Astragon uh First match up of today's finals, and uh, we're going to be watching very closely as to what gets picked and banned. Uh, is there an uh, uh, or a little bit of disruption here from either team at this early stage? Trelleborg picking first. Yeah. Um, one thing that I'm wondering, it might not be like regarding this game at all, but what I'm thinking is that because I mean I, I'm pretty sure the Trelleborg, you know, they have been having these like mm. tricks on their sleeves during the season. So if they have anything new, they have to be probably saving that for the grand finals. We might not see it on the first game, but I'm just all the time, every time when Trelleborg is coming to the server, I'm just waiting like what they are coming up with now. So that that is the wow, wow factor that I'm waiting for. I will say Astrogod are out there playing mind games. They they threaten to ban the ideal with their first ban. They threatened to ban the Russell match with their second ban, um, mm. but instead have gone for the two more powerful front load attractors. That is really interesting choices. Uh, seeing as Trelleborg don't, Trelleborg actually do use both those tractors. They like to mm. use those tractors to be able to bring extra get bales in and the, the final minutes and still power uh, big balers. So this is disruptive. Uh, play we see immediately coming out the gate from Astragon. Uh Not overly disruptive picks from Trelleborg, interestingly. So uh, I'm I'm interested to see what Astragon are going to do here. Uh, this yeah. certainly plays into their plan of getting uh, more grain in and uh, and doing extra stuff. <laughs> and now Trelleborg <laughs> playing mind games by selecting herbicide until the very last moment. Yeah, they are baiting. Uh, as soon as I saw that, I, I was like, no way they're going to keep that. They, they they will change that, you know, at, right on the last second of the timer. And they did. So we have seen this baiting happening from time to time. And uh, one thing, I mean, Astrogan, they made it to the grand final last evening. So they came to the Erlang without knowing are they actually going to play on the, on the finals or not. And in a way, I mean, I might be wrong, but in a way, I do feel that, I mean, if I would be a player of Astrogon, or let's say that, like the game maker of Astrogon, they, they made it to the finals yesterday, they played there. So probably they have spent their evening at the hotel, you know, trying to scout the strategies and how we're going to play this. I think that they, ha they are the team that made like the latest 
preparations for this weekend. So I, I think that there's definitely a surprise factor that might come out of that one. Of course, I mean, I'm not saying the trailer ball came like unprepared. That No way. But I'm just thinking that maybe the other teams who didn't play yesterday, they took like a bit more chill evening when they came. And the Astrogon, they have been like playing and they have been preparing. So I, I think that they might have a, like a slight, I'm not going to say advantage, but I'm saying that they are definitely, uh, you know, more warmer to the series of games that's going to come. From from the picks we had there, both both teams going for Runner and Archimedes. That very much says to me both these teams are going for a grain game rather than a, a bail game, which is kind of what Trelleborg need to do to counter the disruption that uh, Astragon have set up early on here. And Trelleborg just beating Astragon to that case harvester. So that is going to delay Astragon a little bit. But Bama grabbed the Massey Ferguson. Looks like the ideal combine is not a choice on the podiums this time. And we see and JJ course, setting himself up for that early bail. Yeah, there's of course, uh, I mean, one thing that we cannot forget is the first bail record. I mean, it's 150, right, Alex, currently? So, and, and we have been talking about that during the season, that, you know, somebody might still break it. So this is the last moment when you can break this year's record on the season, because we are now on the final tournament. And JK is going to come inside, and he's going to put 140, 146. So that is a decent start, definitely. It's not the, the greatest of all, but it's definitely a great start. They are still you know, uh, winning the first bail battle as Major Melon is right now coming in. So he's, uh, he's going to be uh, looking something like a 120, maybe even less. Let's see when we actually see the bail. But it's going to be uh, quite big of a gap between the teams already after the first bail. It's interesting that uh, Astrogon seemed to have switched up a little bit because yesterday it was Bauer Maxi who was bringing the first bail in. So overnight, they've switched to uh, Major Melon doing that. And that is a huge gap between the teams. 34 points. That's a bay over a bale and a half. Nearly two full bales at the current uh that uh, Astrogon now have to make up. And um, that is a, a major disadvantage at this point in the game. But could it be that they, for example, have a, like an adaptive strategy at the start? So if, you know, when they're going to go for the challenges at the pads, if somebody's going to win but one battle, somebody's going to lose one battle, and based on what happens on the pads, they will make a decision who's going to go for the first bell. I don't know. That's just, just guessing and just, you know, throwing ideas that might explain that if they, if they have this kind of a strategy depending from what who got, gets out of the pads, then they will decide the role. But anyways, we don't have to worry about it. We have the lovely split screen, split screen view here. And yesterday, as the players are on the land, so we also yesterday saw that there was uh, images coming straight from the PCs of the players, uh, so-called like first-person uh, views, as, as they have all the computers there. So they're grabbing some signals from those PCs as well. And when those signals are showed, not here right now, but then we are losing the statistics of the other team from the grain and the bales and so on. So if there's lines only, no numbers on grain, bales and combo points, then, uh, then just know that it's not a, a real information that, you know, they still have the bales and they still have the grain, which they had before, because we were kind of like, at least I was kind of baited yesterday about that, because when I was like, where did that go? <laughs> so just to let you know, because there's a new element which we didn't have uh, earlier this season. And Trelleborg have grabbed herbicide over direct delivery. I would guess that Astragon are going to do the same. Roadrunner is very close, but has decided not to pick up herbicide. When your opponents pick up a, uh, a power-up like that, it's, it's probably wise to at least match it. And JK beeping away as he uh, unloads here. That is a three times multiplier sitting there for uh, Trolleborg. Uh, they have no bales, and Astragon are about to even things up here. So, yeah, that's not going to make much difference at the moment. I think the grain is going to make a difference when we get to the final stages of this. We'll see if Astragon again managed to pull out that extra little bit and, uh, and grab the extra multiplier. Although, as I said yesterday, Trelleborg are the only team we've seen to win a game when they have a 
a 1.8 multiplier and their opponents had the 2.2. So uh, Ashkon really, really had to secure that uh, that extra grain, get that 2.2 multiplier, I think, to, to be in with a, a really good chance of winning this. Yeah, I'm just wondering, like, give me your best estimate, Alex, like when, give me a minute and a second, we'll both make the guesses, like when the last bit of grain is going to be delivered to the silo on this first game. For Trelleborg, I think they will deliver it at about the nine minute mark. Because yeah, I will say... that's what we've seen Trelleborg doing. It allows them to uh, then go and press bales like mad for longer. Uh, for uh, Astragon, I think it's going to be about seven and a half minutes. I think they'll wait until after that second drop. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what I was going for. That you know, the, the one time that's the final time. Doesn't matter which team. But I'm 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 also saying that about seven twenty, seven thirty. I think it's going to be quite late, especially now when Astrogon changed strategies uh, earlier this week and they have been playing the grain games. Right? I, I wouldn't be surprised if they like you know overextend that strategy a little bit, try to find some kind of a wow factor versus Trelleborg, for example. But yeah, we just have to wait and see. There we go. The grain is going to be up driven next to the silo already. Jk. I mean, nice moves. He could easily go into a dance floor, I mean, with those moves. Look at that guy. I mean, if he would be in a nightclub, I mean, he would be just raving all night long. Well, I, I think the 100-meter dash is, uh, is in the cards, considering he has the... I uh, know oh, he doesn't. It's it's Wooler who has the uh, the Roadrunner perk. So that's quite a nice bit of fast running without the Roadrunner. Well, talking about Roadrunner, he's here. And he's going to be right showing his dance moves as well. He's going to be just running away. So, I mean, this doesn't look like dancing. He's just, you know, running away, like almost like a guilty of something, like, you know, escaping with a stolen wallet or something like that. He's running like that. But yeah, anyways, the grain is waiting next to the silos. And uh, I mean, no bales are being pressed. The gap after the first bale, uh, that was actually 34 points. I don't know if we spoke about that one. And with Alex's term, that's about 1.6 bales. quite a gap that they have to close and Wooler coming in and whacking that harvester head on the building. I did see a, a comment in the, or a, a mentioned in the chat yesterday, why don't they just drop the heads off combine? In the FSL, you can't drop the heads off combines. They are welded on and, uh, and will not release. So, uh, yeah. Otherwise, I think we'd be seeing combine heads dropped all over the place. Um, but there is just enough space to get combines in and uh, and get them to unload here. And this is... Ashgod is still out there getting more grain in as Trolleborg starts to release it now. Mm. And the yeah, 8 drops and are there. And it's, oh, yeah. it's speed limit and speed up. Both teams going for speed limit. So that is not going to make a massive difference. Uh, it's all about how much grain can Astrogon get in now. And they, yeah, they are still harvesting it. So they are running behind Trelleborg. Can Trelleborg get uh, a bale or two in while they have this 2.8 multiplier? Uh, that would really give them a lead that would be almost insurmountable for Astrogon. And, and Astrogon still not got their second harvester there yet. Yeah, look at the grain. I mean, we are less than seven minutes on the game and they still have plenty of grain remaining, both teams. So this whole grain game that we have been talking about, I think, well, yesterday, today, I think the last tournament, the tournament before that, it's just... Uh, I mean, it's just extending all the time. We are seeing deliveries like very late as the teams are playing guessing. We can see you know, some of these very nice uh, in-game screens from the players as well. So when, when we are seeing uh, some of those screens, they are actually from inside uh, what the players are seeing as well. Not this one, of course, but the uh, but you know we can actually see what the players are seeing from time to time. And uh, there we go. The final bits of grain is going to be delivered for Trelleborg. And now we can see also Astrogon unloading it. They're still stuck with the 1.3 and they still have about 30k remaining. So it's going to be pretty equal. It's going to be a close to a 2.0 multiplier. Um, let's see when they will just unload remains of it because they still have 22k and they haven't started unloading it. Meanwhile, Trelleborg has been pressing the bells and now the bells are going to start going on that belt. 
So they will try to claim some points before Astrogon can unload it. I mean, there's going to be three belts, so it's going to be worth a lot of points. That's 75 points, by the way, on the belt. And now the unloading starts. That's going to speed up the belt of Trelleborg a little bit, but they will still get some bales in with more than 2.0 multiplier. But it's going to be staying somewhere around 2.0, I could imagine, the multiplier when Astrogon will unload that final 5k. It's very slow, but it's coming. So many extra points there for Trelleborg, managing to, to unload bales while they still had a good multiplier. And the multiplier is still in their favor. It's so close. Oh, it, it's not enough. There is not enough grain there for Astragon to even things up. And they are now uh, at a deficit on their grain. They have been outplayed at their own strategy by Trelleborg, which is what Trelleborg are so good at doing. This is this is going to be a much lower game, a much lower scoring points game because Trelleborg won't be creating quite as many bales. Um, I don't think with the way they've got set up, they're, they're, they've not got the under pressure perk, so they can't create the bales at quite the same rate as they usually do. But yeah, they've just gone in there and they've straight out played Astrogun at their own strategy, which is amazing. Um, I will say a quick thank you to Eon Raptor for your raid. Welcome, 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 Raiders. I hope you enjoy the FSL today. And yeah, this is shaping up to be an amazing game right now. Yeah, I mean, the whole... The grain delivers, they happened very late. And I guess, well, of course, Trellebock, they won the first bale, but they also managed to deliver those three bales. Uh, it wasn't like a complete 2.5 multiplier, but still with a decent multiplier. And now they're also leading on the pressed bales, and the gap is about 100 points, so they're definitely having a lead. And uh, it's going to be very hard for Astrogon to come back from this situation, because we know that Trellebock is one of those teams that very rarely makes the mistakes. So we can expect that they are just getting all the bales to the belt without any problems. And uh, they will just claim the points and Astrogon by having about the same amount of bales currently. It's just, uh, I mean, there needs to be something like very strange going on. As uh, Trelleborg needs to make a mistake, for example, if Astrogon wants to catch up. Because, I mean, well, just with the pure effi efficiency, they, they can't do it. Uh, the 55 bale points that they picked up in the super drop will help, though. Um, that definitely wipes out the first bale difference. And uh, it gives them about an extra bales worth of uh, points on top of that. So, uh, yeah, that's going to help. But you can see now, Trelleborg are just pulling away as they uh, as they get to creating bales like mad and uh, and scoring the points from them. Just so efficient, uh, Trelleborg, at this. And, and just an absolute joy to watch them do it. Oh, mistake as well. Oh. One bale is going to drop. Um, of course, not what they hope for. Um, but like I said, I don't, I don't think it's going to make that much of a difference at this point. But let's see. I mean, of course, miracles can happen, but it's going to be very hard. And, and we saw the new Holland baler there. So is that, Alex, something that you can trade for your house? Uh, I need to check the price of the new Holland baler. I have a feeling that probably... <laughs> It's Maybe. probably worth about that much. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. The, um, that's about it. So two minutes to I've go. I've lost my train of thought now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry, Alex. Um, I didn't yes, mean you to show off the track. Against... Oh, fantastic for Astragon. They have evened the scores up by managing to catch uh, Trelleborg unawares and, oh. uh, and score... Uh, a really important bale tastic. That is that is so important and and so necessary for them. Uh, if they can keep scoring points, they they have a chance here. I mean, they are scoring two points less per bale, um, and uh, and bales are just coming in all the time. For um, mm. the fight is definitely there from Astro. They're not out of this match yet, or out of this game yet. They. they yeah, they are coming in and all guns blazing. Yeah, I mean, they're, of course, trying to do everything they can, but the uh, if Trellebock will just, you know, get all those bales in, I mean, <laughs> look at these guys. They are just not blinking at all. They are just very focused on what they are doing. 
but the 50 seconds to go on the gap is well now it's like about like 100 points now it's more than 100 points so i mean Trelleborg has more bells they're just getting all of them on the belt all the time and uh, you know they're just you know, very very steadily getting the points all the time so they're not like really uh, making any mistakes and astragon i mean of course getting that bell test is going to help but I don't think it's going to be enough. As we can see, the gap is already increasing more and more. 200 points the gap. And, uh, you know, there isn't that many bales available for Astrogon anymore. They don't have, they just have less than 10 bales. So they cannot make that amount of points, even if they get all the bales inside. So it's not going to make a difference, unfortunately. And there's a clear winner for this series already. Well, not for the it's, series. It's amazing. Time. When when Astrogon got that bale tastic, they got within 20 points of Trelleborg. This match is going to end over 100 points difference. That is insane. This is why Trelleborg have been so dominant. Because mm. they, when they get into that, that rhythm of scoring points, they just score and score and score. And it's, yeah, look at that. 36 bales delivered to 28. Only three in the bottom for Trelleborg. Seven in the bottom for Astragon. Uh, that's mm. that is the difference right there, and mm. uh, yeah, and that is that is why Trelleborg are such a hard team to beat. Yeah, but looking at the other players, as we can enjoy from these player images, we can see that the also the players from from Astrogo, they were enjoying from it. I mean, they were actually smiling after the game. So clearly, they are still happy to be there on the on the finals. I mean, maybe uh, I mean, of course, when they had the game yesterday, they didn't know if they're going to make the finals. So it seems that they are really taking everything out of the grand finals. They are still enjoying being on site, and uh, I mean. Right. So many teams have lost to Trelleborg. It's not that they are the first team that's going to lose to them. <laughs> so there's no shame on that anymore. Yeah, the, the more exclusive uh, club is the uh, the teams that have beaten Trelleborg this uh, season, which at the moment is is only New Holland. Um, no, nobody else has beaten them. So uh, yeah, it's you. You are very much the underdog coming up against Trelleborg at the moment. And uh, we'll we'll see whether Astragon can can turn things around, bring a, a slightly different strategy uh, against Trelleborg for this second game. Certainly amazing to see Trelleborg just turn around and use their own strategy against them so effectively. Uh, I, I expected there to be at least a game um, of 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 Astragon being able to to force the multiplier in their favour before that happened. Um, but uh, yeah, Trelleborg are on top of it straight from the get-go uh, showing exactly why they are such a hard team to beat mm. and as a reminder of course all the matches they are best of trees um, until we get to the grand finals the grand finals got to be best of five but all the matches before that on the group stages for example today they're going to be best of three so just to let you know that we have been playing best of trees the whole season we got to continue on that same pace but the grand final, that's going to be best of five. And, and talking about the grand final, I mean, of course, I'm, I'm going away ahead of things, I know. But yeah, you mentioned, Alex, you mentioned a new Holland. So, so I mean, just give me a chance. What, what, what are the chances that we get Trelleborg versus new Holland grand final? Like, just give me a, like a yes or no, or what do you think? I think the, the way both teams are playing, I uh, I think that's probably where the smart money is on the final. Um, that's not to say that the FSL isn't full of surprises and we could end up with a completely different uh, setup on the final. Um, but uh, yeah, with the way Trelleborg have been playing all season, as dominant they've been, they've, they've got to be a shoe in. And um, with the way uh, that New Holland have been playing the back half of this season, uh, again, they have they've got to be a shoe in for the final. Um, not to discount the rest of the teams because we have a long road to travel before we get there. And uh, and yeah, yeah, we do have Trelleborg again versus Astragon. Uh, Astragon can still cause an upset at this early stage, so uh, we'll yeah. see how it goes. Also, the the other thing is a, a Trelleborg New Holland final would require Trelleborg and New Holland to win every match to the final. The upset we could have is one of those teams not winning one of their games and slipping into the other team's bracket, in which yeah. case you're, you're, they're going to meet before the final and, and, mm -hmm. and we, we would have a completely different final setup. So yes, exactly. yeah, there's there are so many little things and twists and turns that can happen over this weekend that would prevent that from happening.
So uh, yeah, there's uh, there's there's so far to go before then. Yeah, that is exactly. That's I mean, if they're gonna if they're gonna meet somewhere on the middle, then we can have a surprise winner, um, uh, or at least a surprise team go to the finals as well. But the of course, I mean, let's not go ahead of things. I mean, that is uh, of course the expectations are very high with these teams based on their performance on the circuit earlier. That's why they were the top two teams on circuit points. But anyways, we have the uh, the captain picks coming in. The bands already we saw. Let's see if Trillebos gonna be baiting with something. We have Big Hall actually chosen by Trellebock for the moment. We have seen Big Hall being used earlier this season, so let's see. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they actually keep that pick, but no, they're going to change it to bottleneck, so they're going to be baiting once again. <laughs> and uh, uh, there we go. So it's it's not that many surprises there. And then we have the players' picks, of course, happening after this one. And uh, let's see if there's going to be any surprises there. But most probably it's going to be a pretty much the, uh, the same selection unless we can see, for example, the telehandlers. It's been a while since we have seen Trellebock with the telehandlers. But the uh, for the moment, it doesn't seem to be the case. And uh, th- th- it's interesting with the banning of uh, the tractors from Trelleborg. They don't seem overly concerned as to, to what they're banning or trying to cause much disruption with what they're banning. Um, because normally you would ban two vehicles of the same type like Astragon have, where they've, they've banned two of the front loader tractors, the two most powerful front loader tractors. Uh, Trelleborg are out there banning one big tractor and one front loader. Does mean that most of the front loaders are out, but neither team are going for that. It would be more meaningful for them to ban the John Deere, I think. And you can see here, oh, are they going to go? They're going to go big tracks. I'm su- slightly surprised they've not gone for the JCB. Although I was told after the last time I said, um, why are teams not going for the JCB more? Apparently, it's a little bit unwieldy to control um, because it's so fast and because it has the all wheel steer. Um, it, it tends to be a more difficult track to, to, to work with despite its power. So that's why teams tend not to go for it. Um, but uh, I think we're going to see a very similar game here. I think uh, both teams are going to play the grain game again and Astragon are going to hope against hope that they can get more grain. Is mm. the ideal combine available? Oh, matsi has been beaten to the New Holland. Roadrunner is about to be beaten to the New Holland. Baylor as well. This is not a good start for Astragon. Oh, yeah, and they've Oh, now that's not good. That gives an option for Trelleborg to nick that combine, but they're not on it. Oh, no, Trelleborg have claimed it. Sorry, that would give an option for Ashkon to have got that combine, but uh, they weren't there able to take uh, advantage of that mistake from Trelleborg. Yeah. Um, I might be wrong. We have seen this happening earlier when Trelleborg, for example, goes for the pads and they will claim it. They will actually also kind of crash the tractor at the backside of the uh, of the combine. But the uh, I think what happened there was that he crashed that, then he claimed that, and then he noticed that he cannot move it because the tractor is crashed so heavily that he needs to reverse that a little bit. So I think he claimed that already before moving there on the uh, uh, to remove the tractor from the end side. We get the J coming with the first bail. And that's 130. So JK uh, will claim the first bail major Melon. The gap is not going to be that big, of course, depending how this is going to go. He's going to reverse that in because the bail is not really yet peaking from behind the pay- bailer. And it's not going to go in at all. It's going to like leave it outside. I don't know what happened there. Uh, probably didn't go as planned. And uh, <laughs> you can see the uh, the players' faces. Uh, they were just like peeking other screens like, what's going on here? <laughs> but they will finally just it- shove that in. And that's uh, now. I, w- I was saying that the gap is not going to be that big, but it's mm. still pretty big because of that smallish. Uh, I don't know what was it, like a brain fart or a mistake or what happened there. But it's going to be still 26. Uh, a fairly big problem for Astragon here is the fact that they have the little Rostal match combine. Uh, that is going to cause them quite a problem with getting extra grain in it. It holds far less than the other combines, especially far less than that uh, ideal combine and the John Deere combine holds. So they are not going to be able to get an advantage on the grain uh, in the later stages of this. And and it 
pretty much guarantees that Trelleborg are going to have uh, a multiplier advantage in the closing stages of this game. As a result, they have got to score points early. They've got to, to make sure that when they have an advantage, they take full advantage of it. Uh, I don't see how they can do that, though, against someone like Trelleborg. I was in a way hoping that we would have seen uh, the big haul because the grain game is what it is. So, I mean, okay, the big haul hasn't really made that much of an impact, but I'm really waiting when the big haul comes in and somebody will, you know, claim victory with the multiplier they're going to take with the with the big haul with the, from the grain game. But the uh, that's maybe happening sometime later. We don't know. We saw that. I mean, there was a one week, it was like tournament number five when the big haul was actually used pretty heavily. And then it kind of like disappeared after a while because of JK coming in, he's going to start unloading it. So he's going to get that. Uh, he wants to get that early multiplier for them. And then, of course, si it's a matter of Silo time. closed he is a power up that is on this field at the moment. Yeah. And, and Astragon have got it too late. That's a 2.7 multiplier that is now closed. Mm. And and can't be evened up. Yeah, but the uh, Trelleborg they don't have points. any bales. Morning, Mad Alex Gaming. Hope you're doing well, my friend. Coming into the chat there. And uh, you've got a couple of minutes uh, if you're in the chat and you want to predict who is going to win this game. Do you think it's going to be Trelleborg? or Astragon, uh, you can use your channel points to make your prediction, get your predictions in and uh, see which way it goes. I think the prediction is, uh, wow, it's a much more even prediction for this game than it was last game. Last game, it was it was like 80% Trelleborg is going to win it. This time, more people are predicting that Astragon are going to win it than... Uh, than Trelleborg, which surprises me slightly. Yeah, I think we are seeing just these small things happening from Astrogan from time to time with the first bail on this game. We saw some issues with the pads. We saw those all also on the previous game. So I think it's, I mean, we have said it so many times that Trelleborg is just so well performing all the time. They're not making much of a mistakes. The efficiency is top notch. They're reading the strategies right. And uh, if, you, if you're a team that is, I mean, playing still very really well because i mean you made it to the grand final so you got to be playing well but but if you make like these small mistakes you know like a very small ones from time to time they're gonna cost in the end and uh, i think that's what's happening with astrogon i mean they i mean the strategy and how they're playing the game in the end it's it's not bad i mean they're doing pretty well but yeah you know just having those small issues with the first bails and so on and and, and you know some delays with the timing and and you know like for example, the silo close, which they didn't pick, which unfortunately, Trillerquark, by the way, didn't take advantage of it at all because they still have the 2.7 multiplier, but they don't have any bales, so they didn't deliver any with that multiplier yet. So it seems that the kind of like Astrogon got away from that a little bit because Trillerquark could have taken an early lead uh, with, with those with that multiplier, definitely. But what I'm saying is that Astrogon, I mean, if they're going to keep doing these small things from time to time, that's of course going to give away the win for Trillerquark. The, the worrying thing at the moment is that the multiplier is still sitting at 2.7 to 1.3. Uh, Astragon still have not delivered any grain. And uh, unless they have a significant amount more grain than uh, Trelleborg do at the moment, uh, this, is, this is not going to end well for them. They're going to end up with a massive uh, multiplier against them. But with both teams bringing combines in and uh, and getting everything set up. I don't quite see how they've got the extra. Mm. Uh, if they're using that Russell Mash combine, they they can't have a third combine as well. I don't think, or unless that's that's what their strategy has been to dump it all at the end. And grain multiplier is out there for the eight minute uh, multiplier. In fact, yes, they do. They do have three combines, so it looks like. They're trying to get that extra grain in by uh, really loading up three combines at the, at the end. But they are at that disadvantage. Beemaster leaving to go and get the grain multiplier by the looks of it, which seems to be a mistake to me. 
That's a long way for him to drive. And if not, why isn't he waiting there to unload the grain? 24 seconds left. And yeah, I would expect Wooler to, to pick up that grain multiplier. I would imagine that both teams they want yeah, to pick it here have so much grain. It's got to be both teams taking that. But what I'm really worried is that both teams they have a lot of grain. But even with that multiplier, five seconds. It's not going to be he's enough. Right? Gonna they're going to miss that one. That's oh, going to be a huge problem. No, he's no it. they will not get it. They will not get the multiplier, and that's how things are decided. That's that is, I mean, oh, they're going to be so ah. Uh, it didn't go that way. But what I was going to say before that, even if they would have got the multiplier, I mean, they had 69k of grain. And then a Trelleborg, they had 61k of grain. And still the 2.7 multiplier for Trelleborg uh, at that moment. So I don't think that even if both teams would have got the multiplier, I don't think that Astrogon still would have been able to like close that gap because that extra 9k, even with the multiplier, is not going to be enough to close 2.7. Trelleborg are baiting them now. They, they're just letting them use all their grain up. And then they're just dumping yeah, the lot of it. They've got 35 seconds. Look at that multiplier that's against uh, Astragon at the moment. Um, and they're letting Astragon empty their grain because they've got such a huge multiplier that it, it just undoes everything. Uh, and, and, and they end up going at a three times if they're not careful. And you can see now Trelleborg dumping grain, trying to make sure that they can uh, they can take as much advantage of that multiplier as possible. I, I don't see Astragon's route back from this. Yeah, I mean, there's there's no That's way coming it. back from this. Trelleborg, even they did manage That's to also deliver the bales with a 2.7 multiplier, and now they're 2.8. There's no grain for Astragon at all. And uh, we can see Trelleborg there just, you know, putting it oh. 2.9. And the, uh, I mean, I mean, even though, yes, the belt is slow, but I mean, Astrogon, they have 12 bales. If they stock that on the first floor or the second floor, it doesn't make much of a difference, to be honest. And they can make like 100 points out of that one. So even with 10 bales, and even if Trelleborg would have zero, they don't still have enough bales to close the gap. So it is, uh, I mean, it's, uh, so, I mean, Yes, we have five minutes remaining, and I know that uh, people probably hate when we are like, you know, calling things before they happen. But the, uh, it, it's just, uh, it, it's next to a mission impossible once again for Ashka to come back out of this one. So, I mean, they gotta start focusing on the lower bracket already. I, uh, I, 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 I don't see, no matter what gets dropped at four minutes, I don't see how Astrogon come back from this. That is, that is devastating, they that multiplier. And, and, they they are trying to to do things so they're they're looking to to get or they're looking to get the uh the, the combo yeah combo oh, yeah, they're just waiting the for the right moment they the are from that. so two more bales wooler is not there in position bauer matsy is oh wooler is and it's still the counter astragon get the counter yeah, and they still have the bales for the possible combo as well. But I mean, that is that is definitely something they can claim the points. But it's still gonna be very difficult. So I mean, you said that you don't know what needs to come oh. out of the uh, out of the sky. It's gonna be bottom boost. That's not gonna make much of a difference, to be honest. Only Trailer Box gonna be claiming more well, points. That, I mean, that, that's they would the have Trilobog. dropped 500 <laughs> points down from the sky. That <laughs> might might have made a difference. Or maybe if they have dropped, let's say, like a 10 pancakes for each of the players that they can just get some food uh, and they get some more energy then they can claim the points with the new speed gained from the strength you 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 can see the look on on astrogan team's faces this is this is just a disaster for them yeah they know that it's, it's over that they well. are they are fighting it and they're, they're trying to score as many points as they can but every bale they put on that conveyor only scores one extra point compared to putting it in the bottom, whereas every bell in the, sc the top scores 19 extra points for uh, for Trelleborg. Yeah, that's just that is that is uh, Astrogon having to score three bales for every one that Trelleborg scores. Mm. Yeah, I mean, there's no and way. Desperately the gap is trying already... to get the combo again and not not managing it this time it got countered by Trelleborg. yeah the gap is like 300 points so 
Uh, I mean, even if you get a combo, even if you put all the bales in, it's just unfortunate not enough. At least they're smiling still. I mean, we can see these. I mean, we can see them laughing. We can see the uh, uh, that, for example, Major Malone was, uh, you know, uh, like a like a smiling a little bit, you know, behind the screens and. You know they're still having a great time. They're still enjoying the hospitality of, of Giant Software at the uh, at the Erlang Studio. So uh, definitely, uh, they are enjoying from the time still there. And it's not over. I mean, they are still just dropping to the no. lower bracket. It's not the end of the world. You can still, you know, uh, you know, you can still proceed from there. We have the next game is My Insanity Petnar, and of course the losers gonna drop to the lower bracket as well. So it means that Astrogon, if they drop, as it looks that they're dropping, they will play versus the loser of the next game later on, and then they still have a second chance of proceeding but of course that this is the only lose which they can take so if they're going to lose any more games after this one then it's over but they still have a fighting chance eleven bales to six astragon aren't even creating as many bales anymore as uh, as Trelleborg are. uh i think i think they may be conserving themselves a little bit for uh for the next game Trelleborg just so dominant, made so many good choices, done, did so much disruption to Astragon in this game. From, yeah, from I mean, getting the, the right harvesters at the start to picking up uh, the, uh, the the power-ups when Astragon didn't. Yeah, I mean, I would say that Trelleborg, I mean, they are playing their game, uh, pretty similar to what they have done before as well. Uh, they're playing it well. Uh, they're not making mistakes. I mean, I don't think that we have seen that Trillerbog has been able to keep that 2.9 multiplier for such a long time ever. So this is definitely a very scary if you give that multiplier for your enemy or your opponent. It's a, it's a, it's a very scary to give it, especially a team like Trillerbog. So, I mean, they will probably make it to uh, thousand something points. So it's going to be definitely four figures that we're going to see on the scoreboard. Astrogon, I mean, if they're lucky, they can get to 500, but I think it's going to be staying below that even because, you know, just 10 points something from one single bail. So there's no way that they can make that many points. So it's going to be about double points for Trelleborg versus Astrogon as we only have five seconds remaining and Trelleborg, are they still claiming to get something special here? It's no, not going to be a thousand point game. Bails. Oh, damn. Oh, look at them. They're unhappy with each other. <laughs> well, they're happy with their, with their win, but yeah. Getting in each other's way at the end, preventing the thousand points uh, mm. f uh, for the game. But uh, yeah, Astragon, the moment they didn't get that great multiplier, they were sunk. It was it was just going to be, well, the si having the silo closed on them at, at the 12 minute mark and then uh, missing out on the grain multiplier at the eight minute mark just did them in. And look, yes, yeah, so much less grain delivered. Uh, less bales delivered. Uh, just overall, it was a bit of a stomping that one. Yeah, well, that's going to mean that Trelleborg is going to be advancing to the next stages of the upper bracket, and Astrogon is going to be dropping to the lower bracket. And the next game is going to be Mind Sanity versus Betnar, which means that the winner of this game is going to be playing uh, versus Trelleborg, and then of course the loser is going to be playing versus Astrogon later. So that's the, the name of the game, but the. Uh, I mean, final words, Alex. What do you think about this first game, and what do you think about the grand finals? Um, I uh, I think Trelleborg come out of the gates showing exactly the kind of team they are, turning around, turning uh, Astrogon's own strategy against them right from the beginning. Uh, yeah, they they are going to be a hard team to beat on the way to the final uh, this weekend. Yeah, that's definitely true. I mean, uh, Trelleborg they have definitely shown that. Yeah. They are still the same team which they used to be. We're going to be heading for a break, but we're going to be back for the second game just in a matter of seconds. So stay there.
Oh, there we are. Well, we are missing somebody, but anyways, we are back, and uh, there we go. We can actually get the interview this time. Congratulations to Astrogon. They did well. Yeah, they're pretty happy to be on the online event. They are enjoying the chill atmosphere and uh, just, you know, hoping to be there. Yeah, they're just playing their game, enjoying the uh, the chill atmosphere and... Uh... Okay, they have two or three different strategies that they're trying to play. Team is working fine. They're talking about the bails on the second round. Yeah, they had a problem with the harvester. That's why the first bail on the second run uh, didn't work. Okay, there. Okay, they're talking about the, the, who they want to play on the next game. And they said that they, if they can choose who's going to be the next opponent, it's going to be Mind Sanity, that they are kind of like hoping that's going to be proceeding from the next series that's going to be their next opponent. Talking about the general format. They were asking who, what they can they learn. Okay, there we have the replay. So in general, they were just talking about how the game went. It's a bit uh, hard to do the translation at the same time. Of course, I'm not very fluent in German. So I have somebody like whispering to my ear. So it's a lot of listening and just trying to tell what they're talking. But anyway, so they were just talking about the tournament, how they felt playing there. And uh, I think that the, uh, I mean, it seems to trailer book they were, they were just, you know, enjoying from the atmosphere, having a pretty chill, played the first game. They have different strategies on their backs. So when the time comes, they can definitely just try to, you know, pick the right strategy and that try to play those lines, which they have already established uh, before the event. And I guess Alex is back as well. I am. Yes. Sorry. It's, uh, I, 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 my my throat was getting a little bit um a little bit raw, so I tried to make a cup of tea in the break. Okay, so I'll just take it from here. Yeah, just enjoy your slightly. tea moment. That's a very British uh, thing. So please, Alex, enjoy your tea. I have coffee. I don't have any pancakes, nice. but I have some some uh, some bread here. But that's gonna wait for a later time. And if somebody's still wondering where Kermit is, he's gonna be uh, coming later. But he's not gonna be on the next game. So we are waiting for a message from him when he's gonna be starting to approach the uh, the studio building in Chicago. And uh, then we know that he still needs to go through the uh, all the uh, the possible snow piles and the uh, the icy roads. So we'll see if he's gonna be coming back to one piece. There we have the um, highlights, of course, from the last series. And uh, right. there we can see here, the moment when they're see... stuck. When he when he was in the harvester, it was yellow. So that prevents the other team from picking it. When he got out of the harvester to get the tractor off the back, the podium went green again, which means that uh, Astragon could have jumped in that combine and grabbed it and 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 mm. nicked it from under him. Um, but when he got the tractor off and got back in it, it went yellow again, which means that it was it was locked from Astragon. The the thing is in this season of uh, of the FSL. You have to actually move the items completely off the podium to lock the other team out of them completely when you get out of them. Um, because we had a lot of teams in season three just going up to a podium, connecting to something, uh, claiming that piece of equipment, um, and then driving off without having driven it off the podium. Now you have to spend longer actually to claim a piece of uh, equipment outright. Yeah, that makes sense. I, I think it makes sense because we have, sometimes we see teams that they're just, you know, touching it a little bit. They, they will claim it just that the other team is not going to get it. So, yeah, it's, it makes that at least a little bit more difficult. 
But yep, anyways, we saw the score lines how this second game went. Uh, Astrogon didn't get the 1000 points, so my estimate on that was wrong. But they still got the double points versus Astrogon, so it was pretty clear that Astrogon they dropped the lower bracket, and it's gonna be a uh, trailer box who's gonna well keep on going on the on the winning bracket or winner bracket, the upper bracket. And now the next game is gonna be the second game from the uh, from the upper bracket that's gonna be my sanity versus Bednar. And uh, we should be getting a bracket graphic right here. So we can see game 2A. That's where we are at. And then, of mm -hmm. course, Trailer Box, the advance to the next game on the upper bracket. Astrogon on the lower bracket. And then Betnar or my insanity this game. The loser is going to go to the 4A. And the winner is going to go to the 3A. So then we'll see who's going to be staying on the upper bracket. And who's going to be proceeding all the way to the lower bracket. And uh, we spoke about this series, Alex, earlier. Uh, you said that this is one of those matches that you're very heavily waiting for. I think it was mentioned yesterday as well that this is one of those matches. So, so I mean, uh, Trillibok, they said that my insanity is the one they want to play against on the upper bracket. So who's going to be advancing? What is your, like, uh, you know, your gut feeling about this game? Well, this is the thing. So my insanity and Bednar have 70 points between them in the standing. Uh, there is, is not a huge amount between these two teams. Both teams have had a good second half of the season. Um, uh, Bednar, you know, getting themselves up to sixth um, in that final tournament. I think they jumped like four or five spaces uh, in that that last tournament of the season. Um, and my insanity have just kept themselves nicely at third. Um, I think my insanity actually jumped a few places as well because we had Vultra drop quite away later in the season. Um, and yeah, I think uh, I think the four teams that are in the middle, so Mind Sanity, Dierka, Enfeld, uh, Lindner and Bednar, all uh, were um, able to, to capitalize on that and, uh, and, and, and get themselves into really good positions. Uh, so I think these, these two teams should be fairly close today and, uh, and this could easily go to three games. Hmm. Well, we're going to be seeing the players in a matter of seconds as they're going to be walking to the stage. One thing that I want to mention, oh, there we go, that's the My Insanity. They have banners and everything. Look at that. <laughs> they are just coming in. They are smiling and they are happy. So they're definitely having a game. Hey, I mean, okay, team shirts are there. We can see the banner. And one thing I got to note, all three guys, they are wearing jeans. Because that is something uh, which is not always happening. I mean, a lot of the uh, the esports players in general, they like to go with the uh, something with the more relaxed. But these guys, they are here for business because they are having jeans. <laughs> well, jeans. Are, I, that's the thing. Jeans are nice and comfortable. Yeah, I, 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 I or maybe I'm just old fashioned like that. I like, I like my jeans. <laughs> I mean, nothing wrong with them, definitely. But I, I, I just think that because people are, you know, they're sitting all day long. Sometimes they are trying to wear something more comfortable. Of course, it depends on the brand. And then we have Bednar as well. I mean, look at these guys. They don't have jeans. None of them has. No, they, 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 they are set up for comfort. <laughs> yeah, they are set up for comfort. And I'm sorry if I'm like, you know, getting out of the topic, but these are just the observations that I'm making. And the, uh, but one thing I want to touch is the, uh, the kind of like the circuit points. We spoke about these teams that, yeah, they, they had a, a bit of a gap on the circuit points, uh, but, you know, not that big. But what do you think? I mean, the circuit points, if, if you ask from me, I think they are maybe a little bit um, misleading sometimes because mo in most of the cases, uh, the amount of points the team has claimed, uh, I think the result is that just, you know, on what stage of the tournament they have faced Trelleborg, for example. Um, because, I, I mean, I they have almost lost to them. Exactly that. Yeah. <laughs> I think, I think right. where the circuit points are very much is dependent on which point in any given tournament you ended up facing Trelleborg. Mm. And, uh, and, and yeah, it, it kind of shows a little bit. Uh, my Insanity did make it through to the finals one more time than uh, Bednar did. And uh, when they did, um, they they took a, a second place. They took a silver, um, mm. uh, which was, yeah, my Insanity facing Trelleborg in the final and losing. Um, Bedmar did uh, again also made it through to a final and uh, and 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 lost to to Trelleborg. So um, I don't know which team it was that that ended up losing to New Holland because when New Holland beat Trelleborg, that was a semi final, not a final. So I have a feeling that that game might also have been New Holland versus My Insanity. 
Yeah, I think um, it was. I think it was. And and so yeah, so my insanity have been unlucky at the 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 one time they haven't been knocked out in a final, um, mm. or the 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 you know one of the two times they've been knocked out in the final. One was to uh, the top team Trelleborg, and the second was to the the second team New Holland, which is yeah, maybe uh, that's yeah. the reason why. Maybe that's the reason why Trelleborg so wants always, to face my insanity. Excited. Yeah, they, they, they've only faced them in one final this season, and uh, and they have beaten them. So it's, I think. Well, my insanity are also let's let's not forget are the, are the third highest team in the rankings at the moment. So they are, uh, or, or for this season, because of course at the moment the the ranking stage of this is over. So uh, they are the the first best team, third best team um, that is in the league this season. So uh, yeah, I can absolutely see why Trelleborg place them um at this stage um mm. we are just going to be uh waiting a little bit more for the teams to get started there's a, a slight technical issue um but um in the meantime you pretty nice lovely faces for a little bit longer um <laughs> and uh yeah so what, what are your thoughts on this game <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, definitely, I think that my insanity is kind of like my favorite on this one. I, I, I agree with Trelleborg. It's it's very hard to uh, like disagree with Trelleborg, what they are thinking, because, uh, well, they know the game so well. We can see, of course, Alex Lovely. He's uh, having his uh, best face on the screen for a moment. So a bit of a lag there on the on the frozen. UK and the connections. <laughs> but, the, uh, I mean, it wasn't a bad face oh, that you were showing. Geez. So you were just happy and enjoying. So you can just, you know, go on with that face all the time. I mean, you're always smiling. But, yeah, I think my insanity is definitely the favorite. And, uh, I mean, I don't have the stats here, but you mentioned that yeah, the team that played versus the uh, uh, New Holland uh, or the Fermi Flamboyants at the time on the grand final, I think it was definitely my insanity. So I think that they have like you know went to the the, the biggest heights from teams outside of Trelleborg and New Holland. So I think that they they gotta be the favorites for here. We also saw when the when the players came in, so we definitely now we can see that the yeah, Betnar players they are. I would say that the average age of the team is a little bit higher. And then we saw my insanity. I think I think there's beautiful more like a young talent on this one. So it will be an interesting interesting line because I think the experience is very valuable on this game and uh we'll see how they yeah, are just the pure skill and the young talent is going to be uh, like doing versus the uh, experience that not have. uh just confirm it was uh new holland versus man santi in uh tournament five in the final um and uh and yeah it actually went to three games and man santi taking the second game so uh they are they are a really strong team my insanity yeah, yeah, we have seen. I mean, they have been, they have been, they have been challenging the uh, Trelleborg and, and and New Holland constantly this season. Um, I mean, the base game, what they do, it, it's right there. I mean, it's pretty good. Uh, so I'm just wondering if they have found that you know that small bit that has been missing because I think the series have been pretty close with them. So I'm just waiting to see if if my insanity has been able to boost somehow. Uh, their level of gameplay and found that missing bit that they can actually, you know, go all the way uh, and and make it, for example, to the grand final. And I think that if there's a one team that uh, we mentioned last time that if Trelleborg and New Holland are going to face at the earlier stages of the tournament, I'm just wondering, like, could my, my insanity be like somehow gaining advantage from it? But of course, they're coming from the same group, so it's not easy to be on the same group as Trelleborg. Uh, both teams going for very similar setups here. Uh, Bednar have banned the telehandlers, uh, which I don't know if is a thing that my insanity tends to use. Uh, my insanity banning two of the big tractors, though, uh, which is a little bit of a disruptive gameplay. We will see what gets picked here. I kind of expect my insanity to go with a front loader tractor. Uh, one of the, the bigger front loader tractors. They've, they've gone for the large Deutz, though, as their first pick. Uh, Hyper, though, for uh, Bednar going for that little John Deere that every team seems to really love at the moment. And there we go. The Massey Ferguson with uh, Archimedes++ Plus Plus picked by Haynes for My Insanity, while uh, Chausse has gone for the Case Puma. And final choice on each team, uh, the John Deere for My Insanity and the Deutz Far uh, with uh, Bednar. And really interestingly, second game in a row today, 
we have not had uh, a pick for under pressure. Bail creation seems to be the uh, it seems to be falling by the wayside for teams in favour of extra grain points. Uh, Kermit will be here later, yours. He's uh, it's it's very early morning and very cold where he is. Haynes taking his time getting that ideal, which is amazing because normally that is really hard fought over. In fact, I've just had word that uh, Mr. Uh, Kermit is live, or he's about. um i'm hoping everybody can still hear me um so uh we got mental here uh being uh, uh emptying uh shows uh, as it comes and we're coming round and see so we've got our 126 to 100 on the first bail that is uh, a, a difference of uh, 26 points nice and easy to calculate this time and uh, we have a bale and a bit that needs to be made up at the moment
I, th I, I think we might have lost. Uh, we might have lost Matty. I'm a little bit confused at the moment. Um, so I'm going to. I'm going to keep chatting uh, while while we figure this. Um, I apologise if we're talking over each other. Um, but uh, yeah. So uh, I. Uh, where are we on this? So Hyper is bringing in the. The load. In fact, they haven't got the overload down here, so they must be having a third combine bednar at this point. And as a result, uh, they are. Yeah, there we go. A third combine for Pentel. Have they also got a full auger wagon too? Have they not delivered any grain? In fact, I don't think either team has delivered any grain at the moment. My insanity sitting there with a whopping seventy-eight thousand liters. And um, we've got uh, we've got Bednar here with uh, seventy five thousand liters. So uh, I'm not sure where this is going to leave that. In fact, if we get grain multiplier at this point, then that is going to be a huge, huge point for uh, Bednar. Uh, so, uh, shows coming in here, dropping off, uh, or positioning all these combines. Uh, yeah, still 75,000 oh, meters maybe to 78,000. There you So, I was a little bit confused. <laughs> oh, you were confused. Welcome okay. back, Copter. Uh, yeah, I don't know what happened there, but the, uh, anyways, we are back on it. Uh, we're back. I'm, I'm, yeah. So apologize, uh, apologies for the confusion there, everybody. Um, we, uh, we, we've got a, quite a huge grain situation here. 78,000 liters to 75,000 liters. Both teams fighting it out. Uh, looks like speed up has been the choice that both teams have got. So uh, I think my insanity is going to come out of this with an advantage. Okay. Well, I mean, I was talking a lot of stuff here, meanwhile, as people did in here, so <laughs> unfortunate. <laughs> but yeah, at least we are back here now. I think, I, I mean, I, just, I made the best joke in the world, meanwhile. I spoke, like, plenty about pancakes. I, I, I think I, like, also <laughs> uh, uh, exposed the, the winning strategy of the whole grand finals. And I also told, like, very personal secrets about uh, all the players and about Virtual Farmer and Terminator as well. But uh, luckily, I mean, you just didn't hear it. So we are back at it. So uh, <laughs> let's just see how the, uh, how the, um, how the game goes. Uh, yeah, lots, lots of comments in chat. I'm sorry if we're talking over each other. Well, no worries. We can't hear any of you. <laughs> Ah, it's one of those things, you know. You can't. I can't. I can't hear you, and I kind of wonder, oh, what's gone wrong with my system? So uh, yeah, I should just keep going when that happens. Yeah. Um, oh dear. So uh, we still own all oh, first points. First bail point scored here, and Bednar are doing it at a two point seven, two point five, two. Uh, two point eight now, two point nine multiplier. Uh, Bednar mm. taking massive advantage of the uh, multiplier they had while they had it. I've said so many times I want to see teams do this, and Bednar have done it. They have scored points at the best possible time they could score points. Uh, so uh, absolutely fantastic to see that kind of play coming from them. Yeah, five and a half minutes to go, so well, <laughs> I, I'm not going to repeat all I said while I, was, I wasn't I was audible. But the, uh, I mean, what I was uh, one point that I was discussing there, meanwhile, was the, the whole fact that the, uh, you know, the grain, grain game, how it went again, like so late, uh, like towards five, six minutes, I said, even though I was muted, but still <laughs> I said it. So uh, <laughs> we are there. And it's going to be 2.0 multiplier. So we have seen this like delay all the time. Just the grade is going to go all the way till the end. And what we also saw was the silo closed, which we haven't really seen. Uh, I mean, picked and not used at all that many times. So that was one of those moments once again. Yeah. As both teams could have really... Uh, well, I think my insanity could have really done well with a uh 
with the grain multiplier. I mean, they are at a 2.2 to 1.8 multiplier now. They had that extra 3,000 litres of grain. Uh, they've now managed to get it delivered, but not before Bednar scored probably enough bales to even things out when, when they had a 2.8 and 2.9 uh, multiplier. So uh, it's really now, can Bednar keep this point advantage they've got? Can they get the bales back, uh, get them delivered, and uh, and keep my insanity at, bale, bay, at, bale, at bay for the next four minutes? Um, or are my insanity going to close this gap? Bottom boost is huge for my insanity, though. If Bednar gets it, which it looks like they're going to, uh, yeah, that's actually pretty big for them to, to be able to score points immediately down the bottom. Uh, fantastic for them. For the next 33 seconds, in fact. So all of these bales going into the bottom. Lots of quick, easy points. And look at that. That has taken has taken them out well into the lead. Yeah, it's... Uh, I mean, I don't know why my said they actually decided to put the, one of the bales on the first floor. Did they actually think that they got the bottom boost or not? Because they still put one on the... Maybe they were trying to do... A, yeah, there was a combo actually coming in, so that's why they put it on the first floor. But, the, uh, I mean, the gap is pretty huge uh, versus uh, my insanity. They have the bales, so let's see if they can... Act. They still have three minutes, so it's not yet over. But in a way, I mean, when we're coming to this like a two, three minute mark on the game and if you're like losing with, uh, well, not yet losing, but let's say that you're down 200 points from your opponent. Uh, in a way, I, I don't know if it's the uh, the right way of saying it, but I'm going to say it anyway. So I think it's a bit of like a track position on Formula 1s that, you know, you have it, you keep it if you have the track position and it's going to be very hard to come over from that one. So uh, if you have like a couple hundred points on a three minute mark. And the gap closing up a little bit, but this is because Hyper has had to go out and grab Bales. Uh, now Bednar are again scoring Bales. They should be able to hold this. There's, uh, oh, there was 50 points in it, but a huge number of uh, points scored from uh, Mind Santi. Close it up, and then Bale combo countered from Bednar means that they go nicely into the lead again. That is not good for my insanity. Losing that bail combo is going to cost them. Uh, in fact, it has a hundred points difference opened up again between these two teams. Uh, Bednar playing a cracking game to make sure that this uh, this four point deficit they have with every bail isn't ha isn't harming them. They have played really really well to counter that, and we've only ever seen one team uh, do this before. Uh, have this much of a multiplier against them and uh, and be able to hold their own against it and possibly go on to win. And that, of course, is trellable. So uh, Bednar playing an absolutely blinding game here to uh, to make sure that, that my insanity's disruption doesn't actually disrupt them that much. I think there was definitely a chance. I mean, before that counter combo or combo counter i think there was a chance for mines to actually catch up on bednar but now it seems that they are making the gaps so the efficiency of bednar is just very good they're just getting the bales in they have a faster belt uh, not by much but at least slightly faster so that means that they can also try to score those points a little bit faster there's a couple more bales available for my insanity but i don't think it's going to make much of a difference because the gap is already 110 points which means that you know with the one bail difference you have no tools available to come back from this situation so uh it seems that betna will be keeping this series yes the, the score line is going to tie a little bit but yeah that's just about the bales which my minds and just put in and uh, when we have when we can see betna just you know putting these on the belt maybe stacking something on the first floor they should be reaching like a seven and a half hundred points or something like that and that should be enough And the gap is closing a little bit. Although, again, Bednar opening it up. Seven seconds to go. Uh, there is less than, uh, yeah, about 50 points between them, I think, at the end of that. Uh, so, uh, good game there from Bednar. Held my insanity off. Uh, again, managing to, to keep that 2.2 multiplier at bay. Uh, really interesting thing. Really important thing I think they did. 
apart from delivering more bails than their opponents, uh, they managed to get bails in at the best possible multiplier they could. And as a result, they were able to pull out enough of a lead to keep my insanity from winning. Uh, and then managing to do the, the countering of the bail combo, uh, really good play there. Excuse me, from Bedna. Hmm. Oh, but dear. anyway, there we had it. So it was Betna, it was the experience who was winning this time. Uh, and my insanity, the young talents or the young guns, uh, they, I mean, immediately when they lost the series, we noticed that they had a, like a very fast strategy meeting. We can see that the players were immediately starting to discuss about how they will how they will play on the next series. We can see that they're having discussions. They're they are just thinking about how, what they will do. You can, you can see that the brains are working as we speak. So the next series is going to be interesting. But of course, Betna claiming the first game. They got to feel good about it. And um, I mean, they just need to win another one. But I do have a feeling, I don't know why, but I do have a feeling that this might go to the third game of the series. I think my insanity is definitely uh, trying to like crack the, uh, the nut open and see uh, see what they can actually pull out of it on the next game. So this is be interesting series the second game especially because we can definitely see I, I just love this when we see the players we see their reactions you know we know what they are thinking we can see that these guys they are just chilling they are enjoying yeah good game ggs let's enjoy and my insanity at the same time they're just brainstorming there you can almost see the smoke coming out of their brains they're just you know trying to figure out how they will play the next game it, it was wonderfully defensive gameplay from uh bednar at various times there that that whole thing as i said that whole thing of scoring even a few bales when they had the the big multiplier uh worked really really well for them uh meant that they were able to uh to give themselves that cushion of points and uh and 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 keep my insanity off at the end um how my insanity counter that is going to be difficult because countering a counter is is really difficult to do uh they did everything right pretty much my insanity in that game they they played a very disruptive game they they did it and and and, and they got the multiplier they needed but it wasn't quite enough for them to win the game so here we go yeah, round that. two yeah, there was definitely a chance for them. Um, I think that the, uh, the, like, the combo counter for Bednar's side was the key moment because I think without that, uh, my insanity probably would have won it. So it's just about the small things, to be honest. And now we'll see if they if they will get those small things right. This is something that we uh, we have discussed earlier as well that you know the, these small things are sometimes costing so much. You know, and it kind of you know it, when you put those teams side by side on the game. It might seem that they are just doing the same thing, but small, one small thing there on a 15-minute game, it can change the whole series. And when you do a bunch of those, then it's going to be affecting the circuit points. It's going to be affecting the money, which they are winning from the tournament. So you just have to get all the things right. I mean, just like with the real farming as well. I mean, there's a lot of uh, small details that you have to know. I mean, if you do something wrong, uh, when you're kind of putting the seeds on the ground, then, you know, some months later, you're going to figure out that, you know, something is not right. So interesting uh, set of bands uh, again. The big tractors banned by my insanity. The telehandlers banned by Bednar. We are going into the captain pick phase. Bottleneck, uh, I yeah, ideal, and the case picked by both teams. So yeah, very similar setups here. And then into the player phase. And what are they going to go for? I'm not expecting much difference here. I, I think that, that it was a very close game, despite the score line in the first one. Uh, and we are going to see some very similar picks. Uh, I would be... Well, yeah, Archimedes uh, allows stuff to be emptied quicker. I'm, I'm slightly surprised that teams don't go for uh, under pressure instead. Because under pressure would just allow more bales, whereas Archimedes just allows quicker unloading. And if you unload in the right way, that shouldn't be as much of an advantage as teams seem to be placing on it at the moment. I think the only reason why they are not picking the under pressure is that they don't want to hear me singing. <laughs> I've just had a maybe look at even the cost. Uh... Ah, this is why. So it's a points thing. 
Archimedes mm. costs just a single point, while Xander Pressure costs two points. That's why teams are deciding not to go with it. Uh, because they need the points elsewhere. Okay. So we can see the teams. Let's see what's going to happen here. Uh, because I was expecting to see the game. But I mean, I don't mind about seeing these hands-on fellas on the screen as well. Uh, they just have these like huge monitors in front of them, so we cannot see the faces that well from this angle. But I mean, we can see the images there on the on the screens below them. And by the way, if you're wondering, uh, those are you know the, the, the guys are actually you know on those places sitting, of course, so you can see the nicknames associated with each of the players as well. Josie, Ventil, Hyper on the side of. Um, on the side of Petnar and of course on the minds of the other players. Now we have the game finally starting. So there was a bit of a delay there. But yeah, now it's going to start and we'll see the battle once again from the first pair. And of course the challenge is happening at the pads first. Because eventually uh, he's going to be trying to challenge one player from the mind sanity. Not sure who that's going to be. But they're definitely going for the... Oh, uh, Ventil has got Canadian a little shield. bit of an advantage. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, Coming he's gonna claim in behind that. Uh, Haynes to pick that up. And I uh, know oh it wasn't behind Haynes. So that is two battles for uh, Baylor's that Mind Sanity lost. So they have mm. not got the first choice Baylor's that they wanted. And I'm not sure that Andy, is. That's... Yes, that is off there. Yeah, the first bail is being done. Um. So yeah, we can see Bednar. I mean, Ventil already disengaging behind the uh, behind the combine, and let's see, it's gonna be yeah, there's a one straw bridge that is currently open. I don't know how much time there is actually left. So what he's gonna be choosing is gonna go from the bridge, and that's gonna be fine. So uh, it could be it should be like 137 or six if he's gonna toss that in. It's gonna be close to 150, but no, it's gonna reverse. That's gonna be still a 135 maybe. Nice. Yeah. Exactly. So the first bail is going to come and we can see the nice effects on the screens as well. Um, so if there's live audience on the stage, they can uh, they can see what's going on as well. But definitely bet now winning the first bail battle. And of course, I mean, they won the first game, so they will kind of, you know, claim the upper hand for the second one as well. So this is going to be a real test for the strategies of my insanity, because there's going to be, uh, I think, about one bail of the difference after the first bail, first bail is going to be delivered by Jan as well. This is quite a late first bail. 106, so uh, just under. No, in fact, that's one and a half. That's, that's yeah, one and a half bails uh, yeah. difference. So more than one bail, they've got to score extra over Bednar to win this match now. Mm. That and, is true. Uh, or win this game and keep themselves in this match. Uh, that is cool. Well, that's that's not insurmountable. We have seen teams do it, but it's uh, it's not a good disadvantage to be at at this stage. Um, and it has all come out of the disruption of uh, Bednar managing to beat my insanity to two of the Baylors. Yeah, now it's just about the grind on the fields. But of course, I mean, yeah. About the first bail still, so yeah. When you lose the first bail and you kind of lost the first game as well, so it beats, puts you in a mental state that okay, I, I mean they're leading on the point, so this is gonna trust on the game that they're doing, and we'll see if there's gonna be a comeback from this situation. But that is uh, that is something that we have to see. But it's gonna be hard. But of course, I mean it, it's still pretty early stages. Anything can happen, and um, but that difference. And I, I have to correct you a little bit, Alex. It's not 1.5 bales, it's 1.45 bales with the calculator. The difference. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just gotta do it. <laughs> There's a one point difference there. So just, uh, it is what it is. But this time, at least, we don't have the silo closed on the first drops, which means that it's gonna be still in the play for the later drops. Um, so if silo closed, I mean, if it comes later, then um, I think it's gonna be impactful uh, because if it comes here on the 12 minute mark, we saw in the last game, it didn't have any impact because teams were just so heavily collecting the grade and not delivering it before the yeah, the later stages of the tournament. But the, uh, yeah, herbicide is gonna be picked by my insanity. I don't know, I probably didn't go for anything because I mean, herbicide is like a very minor perk on this season, to be honest. Ventil getting their first to drop the grain. 
Yeah. Right, so the deliver is going to start. But now we'll claim the early advantage with the multiplier, but uh, they don't have any bales, and we can see my sanity having the grain, so they will just complete the unloading, and uh, uh, it's not going to make any of a difference, so they will just keep the same multipliers as far as these drops go. We'll see what's going to happen later. Uh, but yeah, 2.0, so they are done with it. Both have unloaded the, unloaded the, um, the grain they have, and now there's, well, other parties already collecting more. It's going to be used later, so they will just continue doing it. No bales are being pressed. What I'm really looking is that the time when teams are starting to press the bales, I think that's uh, that's also always a very good indicator. Like when you see that people are working on the fields, and if when the bales are starting to come, so then you know the time of the first bale, unless there's you know something special going on that somebody wants to claim a couple of bales with the super multiplier or something like that, it usually tells a good story how similar the strategies are. I think there's a very slightly less amount of grain being delivered for Bednar in that first drop than there was for my insanity. Looking at those indicators. Okay, so you can see like a one pixel of a difference somewhere. I'm, I'm a web designer. I'm used to looking at, uh, at one pixel differences. Ah, okay. So, so what you're actually seeing is that you don't like because the bars are not symmetrical. <laughs> yes, basically. <laughs> that explains. I mean, that's how it the web designers right. are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know. Uh, I know. It's, it's sometimes annoying. I, I noticed when you said it, I noticed that, you know, there was a bit of a more black on the Bednar's side. And mine's ended just having yeah. like a couple more pixels. But now it's completely <laughs> off the books. I mean, we can see that it's almost like a half a, half a bar difference there, if that's what you're looking at. But 2.0, a multiplier is still going to be sticking to, uh, to that. And still the grain is being collected. So uh, let's see let's see how, how it's going to end. And uh, of course, I hope for Alex's sake that the, uh, these things will actually deliver the same amount. That, you know, nothing is bothering on the graphical elements of the, uh, of the view anymore. <laughs> Sorry. It's only it's only when it's 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 not massively obvious that it's really jarring. <laughs> no, I I completely understand you. I mean, uh, uh, I I have this. I mean, this is something similar, but it's not about the web designing. So when I when I drive a car, and uh, I always need to have the temperature on the air conditioning on 21. I mean, not on 22, mm -hmm. not on 20 because I don't like um, even numbers. It has to be an odd number for me every time when I put the AC on. I don't know why. So I just, you know, I, I like that some elements are always the same. And if there's uh, like, somebody driving with me on the passenger seat, it needs to be the same. If somebody dares to change same. that to a different setting on the different side of a car, <laughs> I always immediately have to change it back. I, I want to have them the same. Oh, we got bail. We got bail multiplier turning up at the eighth minute here. That could be fairly big if either team has. Well, mine says he has five bales, so bail multiplier would be fairly big for them. But Bednar immediately going in and dropping uh, because they know that it is bail multiplier and not grain multiplier. So uh, there's there's no point in them waiting to drop the grain. They might as well get the multiplier uh, up in their favor. Mm. Both teams have picked it up now and they need to take advantage of this. Uh, about 85 seconds on both teams. And everything's evened up now. Yeah, it's pretty tight. I mean, the multipliers are the same. Uh, the second batch of grain has been delivered and they're still they're still having some we can see that they're like organizing the pipelines to get it like better flow to the silo so we should be just you know ending up maybe i mean look at the grain so we have mine sanity actually having like a 3k more so they might get like a 2.1 and bet might be ending up with 1.9 uh, of course that you know depends from the time when they are unloading it but the end result should be the same we can see bet now they will try to get a small just a very small 
you know, benefit of the multiplier that they will put these bales on the belt, and if they can, you know, it's not going to be enough, unfortunately. And actually, it's not going to be even. Uh, it's going to be two, what, two point one and one point nine. So that is that is the difference. So there's two more points for each bale for Bednar, and uh, now it's all about the work. We can see the scores. Some bales were delivered, and the score line was four points apart when we have about five and a half minutes to go. So the grain game is over and the teams are still very much tied. And the male multipliers, I mean, they are pretty much the same as well. I think Bednar is maybe taking a little bit better use from that multiplier. They're getting more bales in with it. And that, that you know, they, they also got the first bale. So I would say that Bednar is currently definitely looking stronger, even though the multiplier is not really working their way. But it's only two points per bale. So if you just use the multiplier, you know, many times multiple enough times to gain more points then i mean even with that 2.1 multiplier it's going to be hard for mindset to catch up i see we've got both the mr dj goham and tony miff uh, appearing in the chat welcome along to you my friends i hope you have had a oh, i hope you're having a good morning because what it's it's about 6 a.m there so uh, uh a uh, nice bit of coffee and uh, and a, a bit of FSL. What a way to start the day. Mm. And I just got to uh, touch the topic a little bit. I mean, yes, we have an interesting game, but the guys are delivering. So we're talking about the temperatures there on the chat. And there was a discussion about the uh, about the digital displays. <laughs> yeah. So the history, why I want to have 21 Celsius is that 21 Celsius was absolutely on the middle of my car like uh, 15 years ago before I, ha I changed yeah. to a car with a digital meter. So that's why the 21 is the one that I want oh, to have. It was absolutely uh, in the middle. <laughs> pointing straight up is how it should be. Yeah. Okay, back to the game. Sorry about the uh, about the nonsense once again. <laughs> At least we're not yet talking about the pancakes. But the, uh, the situation oh, is still pancakes. the same. The four minute drop, that's the one that can still change the game, if anything. And the super drop is there. And this needs to be, it's going to be bail points. And that's going to be something points. that's going to be picked oh. immediately by my insanity. So that is exactly something that can help the cause. And this is going to give them a fighting chance. But Bednar being really, really good at delivering and scoring points with bails here. Again, they've pulled out a good lead. They're, they're holding the lead. And and my insanity are, are having trouble catching up, despite the fact they have this 2.1 to 1.9 multiplier, which is, uh, that's quite something. That really is. This is some great gameplay. Yeah, 100 points. Um... I mean, there's a lot of bales for my insanity at the seven for Bednar. So if my insanity manages to deliver all the bales, it's going to be getting awfully close, actually. So of it course, is. it comes down to the fact that if they can deliver those, but yeah, there's still time, three minutes. And if they have double the bales, which is about 70, sorry, it's more than 70. It's like more, 100 points more, more than 100 points more. So yeah, it's definitely doable. It's going to be getting very close if they manage to deliver all of those bales because the hyper <laughs> just, <laughs> getting a bit of... just something sideways. I mean, I mean, if he would be a skateboarder, he would try to do a front side ollie. Uh, good morning to Dark Desire Simulation in the chat as well. Hey, people saying hi to chat. I've got to say hello back. <laughs> oh, that, that little John Deere is, is surprisingly stable. Uh, with that weight on the back. I mean, it must be a little bit hair raising coming over the safer route um, with the uh, with that tractor with three bales on. But, you know, the teams are pretty good at keeping it upright uh, as they do it. Yeah. Well, there we go. The bales are getting in. A few minutes on the clock. And there's still the advantage. I mean, they have been pressing more bales. I mean, there's no other reason why Mines and can have the same amount of bales like two minutes later, as they have been delivering some points as well. So there's a chance, but it's very close. So Bednar, if they just Ooh. keep doing and keep getting the bales in, not Bednar. making mistakes. Yeah, Ventil makes an oopsie. So he's going to be dropping to the water. I think he's going for the quick route out. Yeah. 
I mean, we have the safer route, and now we have the quicker route as well. <laughs> That's the. Uh, the as uh, as Jenny it. mentioned in the chat, I believe you do have something happening with pancakes later today, don't you, Copter? Oh yeah, there's gonna be a pancake stream tonight. Uh, we're gonna talk that more about that later. But about two hours after the broadcast on my channel on Twitch TV slash Cast by Copter, which is my chat nickname as well, I'm gonna be doing a live pancakes cooking stream. It's gonna be the Finnish pancakes. I'll show you the recipe, I'll show how it's made, and I have some nice farming simulator perks associated with it as well. It's going to be about two hours after the official broadcast, so make sure to come I, there and, and join it as well. I have a feeling I'm going to go into my stream tonight very hungry. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm just wondering. I mean, I have my kids at home, so they probably want to eat it as well. <laughs> I don't know how, how much is going to be left for me. But anyways, 30 seconds on the clock. And once again, the score situation, the gap is still about 70 points. It's still about the same, and, and, and there's a chance, but now the bail difference has changed. I mean, there isn't enough bails anymore for my insanity to post gap, but they don't have the time as well. But now they're going to be going all the way down to just six points oh, away from yeah, it now. Insanity. There's going to be two bails on the bail, now they're going to make that inside. Oh, we, we can see my insanity claiming the lead, and that's oh, going to be more no, points no, coming into 803 and 780, and one second, you're going to be bet now with 22 points. They will still claim it. It's getting close. As we oh. said it, awfully close. But Bednar coming in there, despite being two points down for every bail, producing, yeah, three extra bails in uh, and scoring them all in the top. And as a result, <laughs> winning it just, just by 23 points. And in fact, first bail. That's that's uh, that's less than the first bail difference. So first bail won that match for Bednar because they managed to get the extra points at the start. That is massive and shows the importance of getting those first bail points. It can win and lose you matches. It's close. I mean, okay, so Bednar's got to go with the two zero all the way to the next game and of course my insanity is going to be dropping on the lower bracket so it's going to be Betnar facing Trelleborg and then we have Astrogon facing my insanity so those are the next pairs on this group A and uh, we can see clearly that the my insanity players they're not really happy with the result they were kind of like you know uh I mean, they were just wondering like how this happened. But there's one thing that I have to mention about the last game. I mean, we saw when Betnar put those two bales on the belt when we had about like nine or ten seconds to go. And if they wouldn't have gone in, they would have lost it. I mean, that was so close. They had 755 points. And then they put those two bales in uh, with the multiplier. And that's that was like 40, uh, 42 points, I guess. And then... Anyways, so so that was so close. So if those two fails wouldn't have gone in, our mind said they would have lost. And I think they went yes. in with the last second. Yeah. Uh, so that was that was in incredibly close at the end. Those last bails, the first bail points, everything Bednar did was was right to make sure that they kept that lead. They delivered so many bails, it was awesome. We are gonna be go on a couple of minute break. We will see you uh, after that. Don't go anywhere.
And we're going to be Welcome having the back. interviews coming in, I think. So there we go, the captain of Bednar. Let's see what we're going to be getting from here. As explaining about the game, they had a very good start for the game. We're talking about the comeback. Did they believe that Mindsen is going to come back? They were happy with it, so they said that the uh, uh, well, they, just, they were they were fine with it. How the game went, so they of course didn't like think about the odds, how or if Mindsen is going to come back or not. Okay, something funny, I guess. <laughs> That's uh, a bit of information we missed. Okay, they're talking about Trelleborg. They know that they have to play Trelleborg on the next match. They know that it's going to be hard for them. And I think we're done. So there we go. Betna winning the series. And Alex, your thoughts about this? Um, I th I thought Bednar played two absolutely blinding games. Uh, yeah. It was uh, it was amazing that first game, holding off my insanity with a two point two multiplier the whole way through. Um, and uh, meanwhile, ooh, wow, yeah, that's not a good way to get stuck. I missed that in the first game, so that would have slowed everything down. Um, but yeah, to, holding off that with that two point two multiplier throughout the, this. The latter half of this first game, um, keeping my insanity at bay, winning by so many points. They laid a lot of groundwork for it and, and played hard for it. The second game, uh, I think they had a, a lot less groundwork laid, but they came in and they went and just kept delivering bails at an incredible rate. And we saw yeah. it. Their, their, their lead kept going. And they managed to get the, uh, they managed to still deliver bales and even up the number of bales. So that meant that they had to be bringing in more bales than my insanity. Yeah, I think the gameplay from Get Betnar all the time it seemed like very confident. They were always like on top of the situation, uh, most of the time, of course, leading as well. But I, I didn't see like any signs of weakness really. Yes, they didn't maybe make like a four-digit point game, so they didn't get like above a thousand points. But it was still a very solid gameplay from them all the time. And whatever Mindsand tried, it just didn't work. So they were able to counter the. Uh, well, the strategies of mine sanity pretty well. Of course, it went awfully close on the last game, but still, I think it was a very solid series from Betnar. There were there were a couple of times when I noted things that uh, were were minor mistakes, stuff that didn't get in their way, but uh, things like driving combine uh, driving a combine through crop, which slows it down and everything. So uh, yeah, I I think that. There, there are a couple of places for Bednar to improve, but in general, I think they they had two very solid games. There we get to the jump. Definitely, uh, that was meant to happen, so it was not a mistake. Otherwise, well, I mean, of course, if you don't have eyes or just driving eyes blinded or something like that, but yeah, that was definitely intentional. We were wondering about that on the last game, but that's the uh, that's the the previous game, and now we're going to be proceeding, of course, to the next game. And as we know, the pairs. So we do have Trelleborg versus Bitnar, and then we do have Astrogan versus My Insanity. So those are the uh, the lineups, and of course, uh, as far as I know. We're going to be uh, continuing, I guess, on the upper bracket still, or are we going to go to the lower bracket? I don't actually know what's going to be the next game, but we're going to be seeing it. Sure. We, are, we are going to show the group go. B brackets. So uh, oh, okay. we've got New Holland versus Vultra and Dirk Enfeld versus Lindner. I, I would presume our next game is going to be New Holland versus Vultra as, as we're ah, showing okay. this. Um so uh yeah that is a game i'm looking forward to uh partly because it's new holland and partly because uh vulture have been a really really good team in the past so uh this is this is going to be quite a good one um I think. okay so this is the uh the two manufacturers that i mentioned so 
we have in the Finnish manufacturer, Valtra, that was discussed on the chat earlier. And then, of course, New Holland, uh, which was known as Ford on the past. So I don't so, know about the nationality. Uh, yeah, well, I, I, yeah, New Holland is a, uh, it's a, it's somebody I know a little bit. So New Holland is yeah. from the merger of uh, Fiat Agri, uh, New Holland and, uh, and Ford. So uh, the tractors are blue for Ford uh they uh new holland is 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 the name and they have the fiat agri symbol so it's it's a you can see the merger of all three companies uh mm. in the whole setup of the new holland equipment mm. and yeah of course Walter yeah, also has some... much new yeah i mean of course Walter has some roots also like outside of finland as well so it's like a finnish swedish merger uh with yeah, with volvo and um uh with Valmet. So that's the uh, that's the history of those. If you want to be talking about the brands, and I mean, like I said, I'm I'm highly excited about this because I think this is the first time when we see actually like two manufacturers facing off. We have had like Trellebock, why we Trellebock Wheel Systems is the official long name of the. Uh, uh, kind of like the team, uh, they are the ones. If somebody's by the way wondering, because I was wondering about it, I have been in Trelleborg, it's a city in Sweden as well. And first, I told it it's like this city is like sponsoring, you know, a, a, a sports team on the farming simulator. Mm -hmm. Stupid me, of course, but it's actually the, the company Trelleborg Wheel System that is the one that produces the tractor and the uh, all the agricultural utility yeah. wheels for the vehicles. So that's the uh, that's where it comes from. I don't know about the logo, maybe that's a pattern on the wheel or something like that. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, but Bednar, of course, are uh, another manufacturers. Uh, they they uh, make uh, implements and cult cultivators and, and cedars and things like that. So uh, yeah, there are quite. A, we do have quite a few manufacturers who are in uh, in these finals. Um, of course, Astragon as well. They are a uh, a publishing company um, who uh, help to uh, help giants to self publish uh, farming simulator as well. Hmm. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Well, that's nice. So we have plenty of uh, manufacturers, but now we have two uh, tractor manufacturers, let's say like that. So maybe that's the proper way of putting it. But anyways, it's going to be an interesting lineup. So of course, New Holland, uh, which I mean, Fermi as flamboyance or Farmy as flamboyance, whatever you want to call them. Uh, so they're going to be, of course, facing off with, with Valtra. And uh, in the end, of course, I mean, uh, if we're completely honest here, as we are always very honest people with, with Alex, especially, <laughs> that the, uh, uh, I mean, New Holland is definitely one of the uh, kind of like, you know, favorites of the tournament. They have been doing very well. They have been improving all the time during the season. They won one of the online tournaments as well, which is uh, the only team besides Trelleborg who has been able to win one. So, of course, we have to rank them highly on our books and Valtra. Even uh, despite the name, they haven't really had that same level of performance, if I'm completely honest. So, of course, I'm hoping to have a very tight series. But, of course, I mean, if I would have to uh, put my bets on something, I would put it on New Holland. Mm. I, th I think of the two teams here, they are the stronger team at the moment. Um, they have uh, they have um, had a much better latter half of the season than Voltra have. Uh, Voltra scored points early in the season. Uh, they they got a couple of third place uh, game or third place tournaments, and 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 that's why they they managed to stay at seventh. But uh, they were much higher in the table earlier on in the season than than they've ended up, and it's partly because they haven't made it through to the finals for the past few tournaments so uh, it's going to be interesting uh, to see uh, what Voltra can pull out of the bag here um, see if they're, they're they're missing from these finals um, causes or missing the from the finals of the last few tournaments has caused them any uh, any issues and see what they can uh, they can bring uh, against New Holland here I think hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely always the element of surprise. And just like some people in the chat, they want to have the element of chaos as well. So hopefully <laughs> we're going to see that as well at some point. But you never know. I mean, of course, we can have always like our assumptions about what's going to happen. But I mean, of course, they're just predictions and guesses. Um, um, we'll just have to see how the teams are performing on the server. We have seen leaps on the strategy from multiple different teams, uh, changes on the strategy. So we don't know, for example, at Walter, how they will play this one because we haven't seen them for a while. So of course i mean whatever we say just take that as uh with a bit of a soul to be honest now mm -hmm. uh, we just like to build the, the kind of like the the starting situation for it but the uh 
yeah, let's see. Uh, will be interesting. There's a bit of a delay. We're going to be continuing all the way towards the uh, the players and the game as 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 soon as they are ready. But uh, of course, as this is like a live event at the venue, you know, random things can happen. So uh, we're just you know waiting for a longer. So Alex, do you have any story that you want to tell here? Um, I try to tell. <laughs> You put me on the spot now. <laughs> um, I just, I just started thinking uh, for um, back to the last match, to the Mind Santi versus Bednar. I'm thinking actually, Bednar is winning that as strongly as they did is a little bit of an upset. I expected those games to be close, but given the disadvantages and the disruption and things that Mind Sanity were doing. For, for Bednar to come out and win was, was quite impressive. And here we go, new the new Holland team coming out for the Premier's Grand Boyens, uh, now sponsored by New Holland. Uh, uh, coming they have into a coach? Fun. I think they, they might have, have a coach. coach. I think teams yeah. do teams do have a coach. That's the thing. Yeah. The, the, the and with the flag, well, they don't I mean, normally walk out with them. But yes. Um, so uh, I think Fabius Fanboy in general is a uh, French team. Um, but uh, I think that was a Portuguese flag. That was a yeah, I think it was well, Portuguese yeah. flag, the French flag that we saw there. Yeah. Now we should be having Voltron entering the stage as well. We can hear the music, but we can see the players as well. Logos are definitely visible. And do we have Will? There's, there's no coach. I was waiting for the fourth guy as well, but no, it's going to be just three guys. And I really love the tie with the uh, with the Fermiers flamboyance coach. Oh, sorry, New Holland yeah. coach. Um, the New, Ho the I mean, New Holland uh, yellow and blue. Yeah, the tie is good. Good add addition to it. And it's, uh, I mean, you can clearly see that they're French. <laughs> I'm not making said comment. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, uh, but yeah, I mean it's uh, I mean it's, it's a nice nice lineup which they have there. I mean, I'm, the one thing I'm, I'm just a little bit worried that the uh, they're the only team. I, I don't know how well the uh, it has been told beforehand that there's going to be a coach, but I'm pretty sure that the coach can actually see the monitors of the. Um, I, I, I I really quite like we've, we've talked about this before, but you can see on the bottom of the New Holland one, um, the the. Um, that they've gone for different poses to the normal ones we see on mm. uh, on team photos, which is great. I love that they've gone for that. That's brilliant. Yeah, no, Listening no, just to yes, what we've been e saying. E e post that I said. I, I show you the example last time, so uh, we have yeah. seen plenty. Of <laughs> but anyways, the game is going to be starting, so it's going to be now the first game of Group B. So this is the same story which we had there on the. Uh, there we go. Images that is uh, that is go. a nice piece of images Fantastic. as well. But the story is the same that the winning team is going to continue on the upper bracket, and then the losing team is going to drop on the lower bracket. So we're going to be first, first seeing these two first matches of each of the brackets. I guess we got to go after uh, the two games from Group B, maybe back to Group A, and play the uh, uh, the next matches from each of the. Uh, uh, upper and the lower brackets, but yeah, let's worry about that later. There we go. We have the ban phase already, and uh, Vultra coming in with an immediate ban on the John Deere, while uh, New Holland banning the Massey Ferguson. And, <sighs> yeah, and the then ban banning the Vultra. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Well, let's see if Walter is going to respond by banning something from New Holland. <laughs> no, uh, Deutsch <laughs> no, far is banned, the Deutsch. so nothing has been banned from the New Holland. So, uh, but I mean, there's still uh, plenty of Walter utility on the play as well. So it's it's not that big of a problem to be honest, at least not for now. So. Anyways, there we can see the captain picks. I mean, bottlenecks. Uh, oh, New Bailey. Holland showing off, picking picking the New Holland Baylor and the and the New Holland combine before switching. Mm. Yeah, banter is always good as long as there's like a you know a bit of banter going on. You know that the guys are just you know enjoying and having a great time. So uh, let's see what's going to be happening on the player picks. But yeah, I mean, with the bottleneck, we can expect pretty much the same. We can see case by the way for Hedon. So that's, uh, I mean, we have seen that on the past as well, but it's not, I mean, I, I think it was used more at the uh, start of the season. 
But now lately, I don't think it yeah. has been, you know, that much being played anymore. Um, the predictions are up on the Twitch chat if you wish to make a prediction of who you think is going to win this. Currently, it's sitting at 95% New Holland and 5% Voltra. Uh, the chat very much thinking that Voltra are going to take this game. Yeah, I'm just wondering about, I mean, uh, as, as we have been also talking about the uh, the equipment and the prices and we have been comparing that to Alex's house. <laughs> <laughs> on the broadcast i'm just wondering <laughs> if we actually do have a Valtra owner so uh, i mean if, we, if you want to buy like a Valtra tractor what, what are the starting prices like tell me on the chat because i i honestly don't do, know, you know the I, person the person the person to ask is not me it's my brother who actually works for oh. for a uh, uh for an agco dealer so okay <laughs> i have no idea well I guess the chat is going to be maybe helping us out. But okay, let's focus on the game once again. Uh, there we go. We're going to go for the, uh, of course, for the challenges on the pads. And then we're going to proceed all the way towards the first bail. Because he's certain uh, he's not that far away. He's going to claim that bailer. There's no challenge at all. So we can see that the other player from New Holland is actually reaching all the way down from the hill. And he's going to go for the other bailer, which is the, uh, uh, it's not this one. It's not the crown one. But anyway, so Chrome player is going to be taken by Loiko. And now we can see just they are, I mean, both teams are starting to make the first bail. They are both actually, well, I'm not going to say that they're that far. But yeah, I, I don't think that we're going to be seeing like a 140 point first bails based on the position. Maybe New Holland, they are very damn close actually. But they definitely have a better place uh, to uh, put the first bail in uh, with a decent time. As we can see, Walter, they're so much further away. So even when they get the bail, it's going to take uh, at least like 15, 20 seconds to travel to the barn. And New Holland, as we can see, the X-ray images there on the background, they are all, already very close. It's going to be still like below 140. But I would imagine that if they toss that in with the swing, it might be like 135-ish or something like that. And so it's going to be then getting like, a, let's say, 10 or 15 points less than what uh, New Holland is getting, depending. But it seems that as we don't get the points, uh, there we go. The first bail is going to come in 128. So they did miss the swing or they did just reverse that and they didn't do like the full swing that we can see from the points. So less than a bail between them, only nine points between on first bail. Looking back at the reason why, the reason why many teams were collecting or were getting that case bailer earlier in the, the uh, season uh, was because it has a lower fill volume to uh, to create bales. So it only takes 3,600 litres to make a bale on it. Um, and it can carry three bales. Uh, the John Deere, uh, by comparison, uh, takes 3,800 um, and it can only carry two bales. So uh, that's that's why teams were going for that case bailer earlier in the season. Um, but as you said, people uh, teams seem to be shying away from it a little bit um, later in the season. So um, yeah, New Holland still seem to like it. And I think it's still the bailer of choice for Trellable, if I remember as well. Well, there we go, the split screen view. And one thing I, I have to mention, between the games, when we had a short break, I had a peek from the window and the first snow just came in in Finland. So it's now snow on the ground here. So these, these landscapes that we are seeing, I'm just very much enjoying from these, knowing that I'm not going to be seeing anything like this for the next six months. <laughs> yeah, we've, uh, we will not be having snow around here anytime soon. Hmm. So Kermit, I'm just Kermit telling us this morning that it's minus 14 where he is. It's plus 14. Yeah, I'm just wondering right. if they have the snow. Is it just cold or do they have the snow? <laughs> but yeah, yeah, Kermit is, I mean, yeah, the official information came in that Kermit is actually on the office building already. So he should be uh, getting to the next series. So people who are waiting for Kerminator to come and join us, it's not that far. So on the next, uh, I think the second game from the group is going to include Kerminator, definitely. Uh, meanwhile, we can see uh, something's happening here. We saw the drops coming in as well. Uh, we can see Silo Close being picked by New Holland, which means that, and also by Valtra actually. So uh, this came pretty early. Uh, we do have some grain deliveries. We can see Seren going here, gonna place the, uh, the tractor and the trailer right next to it. So they're gonna start unloading it after the Silo Close is gonna go down. 
and we do have some prices <laughs> about the Walter tractors on the um, okay it's not that bad actually okay let's not talk about the prices I mean so I mean <laughs> easily, uh, thank you the Jonas so thank you from those price estimates so let's say that if uh, I, I'm sorry about the for the viewers who are watching this on Facebook or YouTube but I'm gonna talk about Twitch a little bit so if somebody will uh, let's say donate 100,000 subs for the channel then I, I'm pretty sure that Alex can buy the uh, the tractor for somebody I was gonna say 100,000 subs for my channel <laughs> no 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 let's not advertise that we're just gonna I mean okay let's say that whoever finds a, me to pass 100,000 to, to Alex's donation <laughs> subs or whatever then we can definitely uh, like I put it like a uh, real Voltra tractor raffle out and then I mean I can just make like a 1,000 pancakes on top of it as well <laughs> pancakes for everyone <laughs> Okay, uh, next level, next uh, level of 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 a, a raffle. <laughs> good, good morning to Mrs. Kerminator as well, who is mm. in the chat. It's always nice when the the nicknames are kind of like you know, staying inside of a family, in a way. <laughs> I mean, both my sons, uh, they started playing computer games with the nickname Copter. Suddenly, I don't know why. <laughs> Maybe because they used my accounts. But anyways, uh, my, my, so, son, my son definitely wants a YouTube channel when he gets older. Oh, my son has a YouTube channel. <laughs> but well, yeah, my, he's my, not very yeah, active. Mine is, mine is I mean, seven years old. I'm not letting him anywhere near a YouTube channel until he turns 13. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we have been talking about the channels enough, uh, about different channels, YouTube and Twitch and so on. So let's see what's happening on the game. So nine minutes on the clock, we can see Vulture just unloading it, and the multiplier is definitely working for them. Uh, they're not that far away from the point, but look at the grain on New Holland's side, 76,000 liters of grain. So that's a, that's a very big amount of grain, which usually if you want to get something like that, you have to have big haul, but you don't. So that's, uh, I, I think that's an amount that's going to surprise Valtra later. I think uh, usually we can see the teams are getting something like 60,000, maybe a bit more, 65, 69 even. But usually the figures starting with seven don't happen without the big haul. And um, if everything goes or, according or to the plan, New Holland, they can, uh, they can definitely, uh, I think New Holland can win the grain game. They can. There's, it's, it's very interesting at the moment. Uh, New Thanks, Holland Jude. have managed to get two ideal combines. Vultra are spending a lot of time up there with two players, which is a bit of a, an issue, I think, for them. Because but, uh, New Holland are now out there bailing with, uh, with, their, uh, with their second player. And that means that they should end up with more bails. And in fact... They are already two. Uh, they are already an extra bail up on uh, on Vultra and New Holland coming in, dumping a huge amount of grain now. Mm. Yeah, I mean New Holland. They have they have more bales. They have more grain. Um, so if everything goes according to the plan, uh, I think they they have a very good chance. We can see the difference. Okay, now it's actually pretty tight. When you see the two point zero multipliers so of the unloading has happened. And when you look at the grain situation now, so it's about 31, 29. So in a way, uh, it's it's pretty tight. And if, let's say that if both teams will unload the grain, I'm not sure if that 2K is going to be enough to even put it on 2.1, 1.9 multiplier situation. So they should be pretty equal with the multipliers when everything has happened. And then I think the bales that they are pressing at the, as we speak, that's going to make the difference, of course, pending what's going to be the four minute drop and so on. But I would say that New Holland, they have a slight advantage here. I think the big problem here is that uh, Vultra have spent a lot of time getting this extra grain in just to get this 2.1 multiplier. And New Holland has spent the time getting five extra bales. That is a huge advantage if they can score all of them. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure this has been the best uh, strategy from Vultra going out and grabbing more grain. 
Um, especially if, if, if New Holland can just drop a small amount of grain in, they will uh, they'll they'll even things up. I'm not sure they're going to because they seem very focused on getting bales created now. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it's it's I'm not sure Vulture's strategy here is going to pay off. I don't know. I mean, I'm not say that I'm not saying that I disagree really. But what I want to point out is that, that, that you know just a couple of minutes ago when we had the look on the grain situation, New Holland was winning it, and now actually Vulture won it. Uh, so they got the 2.1 multipliers of the 2k of grain was enough to get that slight advantage. I think there was definitely some elements ready to, let's say, cause, I'm not going to say like a disaster, but definitely there was chances for New Holland to, uh, let's say, take a higher multiplier and press some bales at the same time. Yes, they have the bale advantage, but we still have five minutes to go. So there's still time to press the bales. And uh, I, I think that in a way it's impressive that Waltra managed to come to 2.1 multiplier and now they're actually leading on the points as well. So in the end, depending what's going to be the last drop, that might be you know something that's going give, to give away something for either of the teams that's going to you know, cause a, a gap on the scoreline. But I think that we're actually seeing a pretty even battle. And in the end, it's going to be just these two teams, again, down to the efficiency at the belt. One bail, two bail of a mistake at the at the bridges, at the belt, for example, that can actually, you know, cause uh, to lose the game. I agree, and I, I and I think at the moment, what uh, both stackers, stackers for both teams, can't go out there anymore and uh, and go and grab bales um, because they need to be here. They need to be stacking stuff at the time. Now, the advantage they have is they are running two balers that can bring in three bales at a time, whereas Vultra is only running one. They've got that little, uh, the, got that little coon baler, um, but it's uh, it can only take two bales at a time. So they're going to spend more time going back and forth. That is multiplier switch, uh, which is actually going to be really useful for New Holland if they had bales on the belt. They do not. And as a result gonna make no difference at all yeah this is interesting i mean we can see new holland they just they have been gathering a lot of bales here they do have these but then they have six extra waiting there so these should go in and then we'll see what vulture will come up with they, they cannot use the multiplier but anyways like uh, if they would have been able to use that it would be just a couple points here and there I'm still thinking that the differences should be coming from a dip, from bigger things, but of course we have seen like even score lines, like with exactly the same points, and then we have to look at the uh, the next results about the bales delivered and so on on the comparison chart. But the uh, I th to my eye, this is like a pretty tight series for the moment. We can see that slightly. I mean, when you look at the uh, New Holland, um, so the gap is not like even tens. So it's not like 20, 40. It's like 10. So, and, and as they're delivering the bales, that 10 point of difference, it's gonna fade to another 10 after the bales gonna go in and they're gonna lose like two more points. So yeah, slowly but steadily, they might be losing like a one or two bale or of ad a advantage just because of the multiplier. And that's where Vulture can actually catch up. Both teams are bringing in as many bales each time. So, uh, Vultra are bringing in four with one baler and two with the other. The downside they've got in comparison to New Holland is New Holland brings in three bales on a baler, unloads those bales, and then heads out again. Uh, they're having to disconnect and load up the bales onto the belt each time when they come in with the JCB because uh, their, their stacker is having to go out and collect bales as well. This is slowing Vultra's entire uh, setup down. And, and this is why we're seeing this widening gap at the moment between New Holland and Vultra. New Holland are not having to go out with their stacker and get bales. They're not having to disconnect a baler uh, as a result. And all of that is costing valuable seconds all the time. And you can, you can see now how much that is is costing as as things go and the other thing is uh, anton here is having to stack the bales himself in order to actually uh get two bales on the belt at a time whereas uh here for new holland they're coming off the baler pre-stacked 
and so that's saving them time as well and this is this is why new holland are such a tight team and are able to score points so well because they have that efficiency the whole way through their strategy that that just saves those those few seconds um and that allows them to score more points Mm, yeah, completely right on that. I mean, when you look at how Walter is operating, it's, it seems like pretty slow, to be honest. So now we can see Anton that, yes, he has been getting all the bales around the belt there. And that's going to be like, well, three more bales, so waiting for more. But, yeah, the gap is just slowly increasing. I think they have, oh, well, yeah, well, it says there, like three bales more. And that's going to be uh, 63 points in total. And Vulture actually um, having problem getting the bales back to their uh, their bar. Yeah, it's slow. I don't think that they have the bales to uh, come back from this situation. It's 15 seconds. I don't think that they can even put all the bales inside unless they're going to shove it on the first floor. And uh, yeah, that one bale might go in. And those are the final bales. And we can see that it's not going to oh. be enough. It's going to be getting close. It's not going to be enough. bales on the New Holland's belt as well. And Anton, no, he's not going to make oh, it. Anton's but in the end, I think even... Yeah, but I, I don't think that even if he would have shoved it in, I don't think it would have been enough. So we're going to be seeing the scores in a matter of seconds, how many points the gap actually was. But I don't think that the last bail actually may, would have made a difference. If it would, then of course it would have been just super heartbreaking. And now we can see the faces. I mean, uh, in, in Finland, yeah, it's it's more than 61 points. Five, one bail five didn't make a difference. Five more bails. Mm. Five more bales from New Holland there, just mm. going out there and pressing and pressing and pressing and getting them back and not having those times where they have to to stop to load bales, not having to send their stacker out has just meant that they were able to press more bales and, and get them back in. Mm. And then we can see the coaches are checking. We do have, a, I think that's an admin. I think that's class, actually. Yeah, it is class. <laughs> so class is, uh, yeah. So he's there, definitely a, a person working at a giant software. So he's there checking on something. I don't know what they are checking, but they are just, you know, confirming something. I don't think there's much of a problem because they won the game anyways. And uh, but these guys are still happy to win the uh, the first game. And of course, uh, I mean, can't say the same, unfortunately, from Valtra because they, they lost it. We saw the faces, uh, a bit of an empty stare for the moment, just uh, to wonder what, what happened there. And uh, I think what they should be doing now is to discuss like how they're going to proceed, because they know that that's going to be a very hard team to beat. So they have, they have to come up with something. And uh, what worries me a little bit, that there, there isn't much of a communication going between the games. Yes, they are, you know, probably having some ideas, but usually these moments are the ones that you have to use, uh, you know, to improve things, change things, to find the means how you can win the next match. And this, this is the thing. I think uh, Vultra here are facing the same problem that My Insanity were facing last game. Uh, My Insanity did great disruption play, uh, Cause were causing issues for Bednar, but Bednar were turning around and still delivering points and delivering bales more than than the disadvantage that they had was. And the same was true here. Vultra had New Holland at a disadvantage, and uh, and New Holland still had the uh, the the, the uh, ability to to get enough bales pressed and enough point scoring to do to uh to get it done hmm. yeah i mean they have to find something i mean the, the start didn't really go how they hoped for and uh they were like all the time they were like playing catch up or all that stuff. They, they, they were not really like on top of their game they did the strategies that they probably like had prepared but in the end um they just you know they were always like one step behind But okay, the bands are coming in. So let's see what's going to be our game. band. So the Massey's gone first again for New Holland. The John Deere's gone first again for Vultra. Vultra's second ban. I'm, I'm fully expecting a large tractor. No proper disruption coming from Vulture, banning the John Deere that everybody uses. 
<sighs> and then the um, Voltra band by New Holland. <laughs> yeah, that's the. Uh, I mean, they did it on the last game as well, so why not to do it here as well? The captain's fix. Picks, but banning, uh, banning that that John Deere that is that is a big one. That really is. Hmm. I would love to see something else than the bottleneck. I mean, we have seen something else. I mean, we have seen, okay, we have seen, for example, the uh, um, the big hole being used. Um, I think there has been only like one or two matches during the, let's say, past four, three, four tournaments where somebody has chosen, I mean, both sides have chosen something else than the bottleneck. So from time to time, we see that, you know, the other team is like picking something else, but then the other one is going to stick with the bottleneck. And I think that's the, um, I mean, that's what you need to do. But yeah, uh, very rarely we see that the both teams are actually choosing something else. We have seen big hole being chosen by both teams a couple of times, but that's that's about it. But of course, it tells a story about the perks and, and, and kind of like the, uh, the picks available this season. So let's see how that's going to change for the next season, for example. It's going to be too late now to think about that one. Uh, we can just accept that the meta is to play with the bottleneck and sometimes with the big hole. I don't think that's going to change during this this grand final, to be honest. And uh, But anyways, the second game is going to be underway and uh, no surprises there by much. So it's going to be once again the standard battle of the pads and the first bail as well. So there the we teams go. Teams are away. Soren going for that case bailer. Ooh, he's going to get it. Overshoot by New Holland. Their Vultra really needed that bailer. And it leaves New Holland with the uh, John Deere bailer. So not quite such an advantage they had last time. Well, this is looking good for Valtra. I mean, they're so close as well. We can see from the fields and from the position already that they're pretty close to the barn. So when they will produce that first bail, of course, I mean, 40 minute mark is kind of like the 140 point mark as well. So it's going to be hard to beat that. So we are looking at first bails below 140, I think. As we can see, Sir now leaving. And yeah, it's going to take about 10 seconds to go there. And I don't think that Sir is really the one that's going to swing either. He's usually just reversing it in. But no, there's a bail actually incoming. So he tries. He needs to try. It's not going to go oh, inside. He and that's a problem. So he needs to go back for the second sweep and try to get that in. We can see how the players are watching. Oh, this is the, this the is... windows. Like, what's going on there? Like, what is on your screen? Like, why didn't oh, you get that in? No. And they are... They are worried about the wrong things. They have to trust that Sören can handle this one. And meanwhile, the other players, they just have to focus on their New own Holland. doings. And we can see New Holland coming at the same time. I mean, Sören has lost 30 seconds already on this one. And it's going to be hard. 111. But they are still getting the first bail. And we can see New Holland coming 108. But one thing that I still want to say, that just imagine if Valtra would have put that in with the first try, they actually would have a gap of about 30 points right now and that's that's the thing that is a huge stroke of luck there for new holland that first bail points difference could have been so much higher and uh and yeah that, that is a, that is a really big stroke of luck there yeah he well i'm i mean i do have a feeling that on the next game where we see Valtra, whatever match that's going to be, I don't think that they're going to try to swing. I mean, they had a good pace there. Even with the, uh, if they would have just reversed that in, it would have been like 135, maybe. I think that was doable. So, yeah, they just lost a lot of points because of that one missed swing. But it is done. Let's not worry about that too much. You know, these things happen. We have seen even Trillebor missing the swings so it's uh, it's completely normal nothing to be worried about you don't have to talk to the doctor for example <laughs> uh, new holland are strong with their grain game here they have uh, both of the ideal combines we've got speed limit versus direct delivery expecting both teams to go for speed limits um because the the big problem with direct delivery 
and I think the thing that would uh, that would change how much it gets picked is it has no multiplier on it. So uh, mm. yeah, it, it doesn't it doesn't give a multiplier to the grain in the same way as delivering it from this overloader does. And so teams don't tend to go for it because they don't want to lose uh, the advantage that 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 multiplier gives. Mm. True. Well, we can see teams, uh, we can see Walter already unloading the grain. We can see also New Holland going to the position height and it's going to start unloading it. Um, I guess the multiplier is going to be pretty much the same. Highland is just barely reaching the silo, I hope. Uh, it's a bit going on the concrete, but the, uh, I guess it's still like pouring in without any issues. So yeah, we can see that the multiplier is like going back towards the 2.0. Let's see where they want to leave it. Are they going to leave it at the same? Yes, they are. And uh, what, what does your uh, web designer I say about those bars? Uh, that says that they are pretty even. Hmm. I don't think there is much advantage either way there. I think I think in all honesty, both of them completely filled up their uh, their overloaders before they emptied them, so it'll be the same amount. Okay. Well, meanwhile, as the, as the guys are grinding on the fields, we can see that there's a Jenny, a Terminator, having the discussions on the chat at the same time. I can see discussions about the pancake points, not about the, the channel points anymore. So the pancake points, that's the... Uh, I'm just wondering what, how, how these, these like, channel points are actually going to convert as a pancake points. Like, what's the official way? But I can say that if you have any channel points and if you happen to live in Finland, come to my place this evening and I will give you pancake. But the... Uh, I don't think that that many guys will be just taking the plane and coming to Finland because of it. I'm not sure stopping to uh, to wait for the overloader to arrive was a great idea there. You kind of want to get as much straw on the ground as possible. Um, and uh, yeah, sitting there waiting, they're, they're, you, you don't ever really want to be sitting there waiting. Um, at any point, there's always something you could be doing to forge your team, and uh, I don't, I don't think that was uh, that was a great choice there. Well, grain is still okay. Now we can see Voltro actually unloading a bit of it as well. So they got to take the 2.2 multiplier. They don't have the bales to utilize that though. Um, but still more grain is going to be collected, so I guess we see the same, that there's going to be still the grain delivers after, let's say, a six-minute mark or something like that, so it's going to be very late. Um, no bales have been pressed at all, and we're just 45 seconds away from the eight-minute drops as well. Um, I'm just wondering how this grain game is going to end, in a way, because now Vulture, when they have that slight, multi slight advantage, and they are still collecting more. So, and, and, and now as New Holland collects the grain, they're going to unload it. So I think Voltra has a slight chance to keep that multiplier, uh, of course, depending how it goes in the end. But I think that they have a, like, a, you know, because they, have, they will be delivering grain definitely later than New Holland. So I think that the, uh, they have a chance of, of course, they don't know how much New Holland has been collecting, but it, let's say that Voltra, you know, takes it on the safe side. They collect everything they can, which should be about the same as New Holland will be having and the, and the boats Despite the different timing, they should be unloading about the same amount of grain after this one. And there we go. The eight minute drops. Uh, give me no. Bail multiplier. Almost, I saw the multiplier, but it was bail, not the grain. So expecting both teams to start dropping their grain into the silo as quickly as possible. Um, and then the last possible moment. Uh, both teams grabbing that bail multiplier. Yeah, I, I was really hoping to see some <laughs> disrupt like the, the grain multiplier. So when I saw the multiplier, I was like all excited. And you know, when, when we get the feed, me, Alex and Kermit, as we are casting, uh, the quality is not the same as what you get. So it's, it's a bit more rough. Uh, to, uh, to, to, to minimize the latency and stuff like that. So yes. especially that white text on the bright green, it's not always like showing up that well. You know, when you're watching like a, a lower quality yes. stream, you know, th those gets mixed up. So I wasn't able to make out the bail at first. I was just saw the multiplier and I was like, oh, let me let that be a grain multiplier. But that wasn't the case. It was a bail multiplier. <sighs> Hyden taking anyways. the speed up there, I think 
because they know they have no chance to take advantage of the bail multiplier. So we'll basically just speed up and uh, and try and create more bales that they can score with that way. Um, which is a nice little tactic, especially if Vultra don't get a power-up. And it looks to me like they haven't. So that is a, a nice little piece of advantage uh, New Holland have gone for. Knowing that they can't score the bales while the multiplier is there, um, just trying to, to get whatever advantage they can. Mm. Now I want to see what's going to happen with the multiplier because these are the uh, the crucial moments. I think Vulture, they have a chance of keeping that because they will get 2.1 maybe. Yeah, but the, I, I think New Holland is out of grain already. We just don't see it. Uh, and now we can actually see it when we are changing to Tita. Um, so there we go. It is the uh, the bales now being pressed and delivered. So yeah, Walter will win the, uh, the 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 multiplier game or the grain game with a, with a, with a very slight uh, difference there. So two points more per one bale. But of course now you have to be efficient as well. And when the score lines are just three points apart, I think these last five and a half minutes it's all about just you know doing the work, getting the bales, and uh, especially on a situation like this, the four minute super super drop uh, that can that can change the game quite drastically um i mean one combo can change the whole thing as well so all the small bits and pieces they have to be taken into account and i mean new holland uh, i think both Walter and new holland has been pretty good on executing the strategies the only weakness we saw in the last game was that anton uh for for uh, for some time he wasn't able to you know do the job as efficiently as new holland but in the end he did get all the bails in so he just had a different style he was still able to do it so uh, it's going to be very hard to call who's going to win this one. I, th I think you're right. I think this is a much closer game this time. Uh, mm. New Holland haven't got the bailers that they wanted. They're still bringing in three bales at a time with both bailers. So they've still got that efficiency running. But because they're using that New Holland bailer rather than the uh, case bailer, they are having to use a little bit more uh, straw each time. Just looking at the advantage of that New Holland Bailey, it does have a faster working speed than that case, though. So uh, it may just end up that it pans out a little bit. Mm. And, uh, and evens out a little bit. <sighs> Four minutes and there we go. Bale withering. Okay, that's, uh, that's, well, that's going to make a, a bit of a difference, at least, if nothing else. Let's see, it's just a very small time to utilize that. And then we can see a replay of oh, the safe for food. And oh, little it, oh, collision. Oh, and boy, who's that on the ground? <laughs> oh, that's not good. Anton losing a bail trying to go over the raising bridge. That's going to delay Vulture as well. And uh, wow, New Holland have pill pulled out a 200 point lead at this point. That efficiency massively coming into play. The bales are there for Vultra. Vultra have 10 more bales than New Holland. But uh, crucially, uh, they've, they've got to score them. Yeah. And, uh, and Vultra uh, and New Holland's efficiency is going to come into play with that. Yeah, I mean, I'm a bit worried about the... Uh, but, okay, last time we were worried about Anton. He actually did deliver all the bales. So I'm not going to go with that route this time. So we just have to wait and see. But it's going to be a huge task. He needs some help. And uh, the problem is that if somebody comes to help him, then, of course, it means that the... Uh, I mean, they're, they're not going to be pressing the bales at the same time as they're delivering the previous one. So they are maybe a little bit, like, out of sync. They are maybe a little bit behind from the strategy uh, on the schedule-wise. So I think that that's, that's definitely the problem for them. But let's see, that's going to be one bale dropping out. That's not going to help at all because that's going to be, in a way, you can also calculate it with the time. So one bale goes up on the belt about 10 seconds. So basically, if you have to redo something, that's costing time. So 10 seconds out of the clock. And uh, if it's going to go tight with the clock, then you don't have the time to put those bales anymore inside. And teacher having to go out and grab bales because you are, he's been so efficient stacking them on the belt uh, that mm. it has meant he's run out of bales 
gives Vultra a chance to catch up to deliver some of these bales. And we're beginning to see what the actual bail and points difference is here as a result. Um, there we are, still over a hundred points between these two teams. And a massive number of bales coming in now. <laughs> Little bit of air there for Vultra and Lennox. And there was one bale on yeah, that pitch as well. Already existing. Oh, the, yeah. Well, that's that's the one Anton dropped earlier, which I'm guessing he's going to go and grab now. Mm. Okay, one last minute is going to be starting, and it's going to go and pick up that one bale. They still have 10 bales, and I mean, they're pretty much closing on the points. I mean, it's just going to be 30 points away, and uh, that's not much. So it's still doable. They still have the bales, but they have to get those inside. And of course, I, I cannot be without wondering that if they would have got that first bale in, uh, the situation would be uh, quite much different. So I think that they, New Holland, they have a slight upper hand here. Uh, but it's just, you know, pi one bail or something like that. That's how it seems to my eye. So let's see how the, uh, the final stack is going to go. That's going to put yeah, they are, New they Holland are above 600 points. Again. That's going to be points for Valtra as well. They are coming to help 27 points. They, they, they don't have the time to put all these on, this, on the second floor. So they need to get these three at least. And then somebody else needs to shove the remains. And Anton needs to drive a couple bales up from that belt. I think that's the only way they can still try enough. to win this one. He's going to drive the goal there. He's going to drive that old first floor. That's not going to work, unfortunately. As New Holland has been putting some bales inside as well. And they don't have there the time. It's going to be New Holland who's going to claim the Let's second game it. as well. And they will proceed all the way to the next stage on the uh, on the upper bracket of the group b and it's going to be of course unfortunately um uh vulture who's going to go for the lower bracket but they are still going to continue just like my insanity and just like astragon earlier vulture not looking happy there uh and unfortunately uh they are going through into the loser bracket um as new orleans show Actually, a pretty dominant play there in both games. Very, very impressive from, from them there. Uh, they're showing why they've had such a strong back end of the season. Because to be at a, a 2.1 down and then to just be pulling out in points the whole way through that, that latter half uh, of, of both games is just so impressive. Mm. Yeah, I mean, well done, definitely. I mean, two-point scoreline. I was, well, I mean, of course, we said it, New Holland was kind of like the, the favorite to win this series. But, I mean, Walter, they had a chance, definitely, on this second game. That first bail would have changed a lot of things for them. Of course, I mean, in the end, the gap was bigger than the first, but the possible gap of the first bail. But still, I think that there was a chance for it. But it's going to be anyways. Uh, this, this game is over. We're going to be seeing the replays and the interviews after the break. And any final words, Alex? Uh, yeah, what a, what a showing from uh, New Holland now that they have their sponsor. It's been absolutely fantastic. Um, looking forward to, to more games from them today. Um, I'm going to be taking a break now. Uh, Kermit will be back with Copter in a couple of minutes. Uh, we will see you then.
and we are back with the interview of New Holland. So let's see what we can make out of this one. Compliments and congratulations from the both sides. They were pretty confident about the game. They had a slow start, but the, uh, they changed some settings. Okay, they were missing the sound at the start. Also played really well. They didn't have any sound on the at the start of the first game, so that's why class was there. But yeah, they are just thanking about the opportunity and uh, happy that they managed to get the two point zero. Talking about strategies now. Okay, the main reason why they won it was that they, they kept their calm and uh, uh, played the game as they were planning to originally. And Tita had a huge impact. He saved a lot of the situations by just being so efficient at the belt. Really close series, they identified that. So Walter wasn't the easiest opponent. They, it was a tight series also from their point of view. Talking about the next possible opponent. Giatka Lindner, and they are just thinking about it. Both are strong teams. Both have done a good job on the scrims. Okay, they are confident. They don't really... Uh, yeah, it, wasn't, it doesn't matter for them who's going to be coming against them. Good luck. And we're going to be heading to the replays. So that's the next next thing. So there we can see New Holland who won the uh, the first game of the Group B. And now we're going to be heading for the, uh, for the highlights. And guess what, guys? It's going to be finally time. We should be having the one and the only Terminator. Should we? Are we? <laughs> I think What's up, so. everybody? <laughs> <laughs> How's it going? Uh, yeah, I'm happy to be here. Um, I uh, had a nice brisk walk in this morning, which was interesting. Uh, not walk, a bike ride. Um, and <laughs> it was, uh, yeah, nice and chilly, but I'm happy to be here inside where the heat is warm and the, the coffee is warm too. And of course, I'm always excited for the FSL action because it's really all the energy I need, Copter which uh, I'm, I'm just excited to, you know, kind of see how the teams are performing today. And um, yeah, there's still a lot of action to come at this point. Yeah, definitely. I mean, only three games are done from the first day of the grand finals. And of course, there's going to be plenty of action today, but also plenty of action tomorrow as well. So the next game we're going to be seeing is the, um, the uh, second game of Group B. That's the, uh, the next one. And then we'll see who's going to be, of course, facing facing um for example new holland on the upper bracket and who's going to go versus the uh, versus Valtra on the lower bracket later um so that's the uh, what's going to be decided on the next game and uh, just like I said it's Lindner versus Diatka that's the next game right new holland i mean uh they said they they had a little bit of a slow start but all that really matters at, at this stage is that you just keep advancing right so to me, it looked like they were uh, pretty comfortable. I think that you have to expect the scores to be close at this level, Matty. I mean, you're in the World Championships. There's a lot on the line here. So, I mean, we're going to see some teams, I think, that we normally are used to seeing, you know, kind of win by significant margins, start to uh, struggle a little bit. And then, of course, you add into the factor that these guys are playing for the first time this season for the most part, away from their setups at home, and they're having to deal with a new environment, a lot of distractions around them, and completely different equipment that they're not familiar with as well. So uh, I think that teams are having to learn how to adapt to this, and um, I think that as the weekend continues to go on, as long as you stay alive, you'll get more and more comfortable with the situation. 
Yeah, true. I mean, and I have been quite surprised actually that the how fast the teams have been able to you know put the setups in place, uh, you know their own settings, controls, what they are using. Because normally, when you go to uh, let's say like an online, uh, well offline environment, your LAN situation, uh, you know it takes a bit of a time when the teams are you know putting their configurations. But here we actually do have a pretty much the same pace as we have on the online tournament as well. So it's a, it's a good job they have been doing so far. Cool. Yeah. Um, I mean, I just, uh, I, I'm really wondering, you know, like my insanity and Bednar yesterday, I want to talk about that real quick before, uh, Dayaka come out. And, um, that was the match I said yesterday was kind of the pick of my matchups and my insanity go into the loser's bracket. And here they come. Dayaka Ehrenfeld coming onto the scene. They'll be our blue team in this one. As we see a shot of uh, Michael Shrout, the head of our video team there, in a crouched position, filming, filming the intro. Very nice. Well, anyways, I'm, I'm those guys are looking good. I mean, they were just walking in. Like, like you know, they have done that before, <laughs> clearly, at some point. They were just like, yeah, we are here. Like, it it kind of like reminded me from the football athletes, to be honest, uh, at the first glimpse. So there we have Lindner. Right. <laughs> Parts are coming in at the same time, and uh, these guys are part of the uh, the, the jeans gang as well, clearly. So, uh, Linder pulled out the biggest surprise of season three, I would say, when they unveiled that Linder load up strategy. It's no longer possible to do this without transport company and play anymore. Um, but do Linder maybe have some surprises for us here? the world championships time will tell these two teams you know maddie i'm kind of interested to see this is our on this is it within the standings the most even matchup we have of the day it's the four seed against the fifth seed so dayatka finished with 180 circuit points and linder finished with 170 so dayatka had three bronze finishes and they made it to the uh finals one extra time linder only advanced past the the knock uh, the, the earliest knockout round once so for linder a chance for them to get an early win same for diaka of course it doesn't mean the end for either of these teams whoever loses here will drop down in to the second chance bracket and let's see how these teams are going to shape up Maddie, since you've been on uh, so far the entire day, what have you seen so far as being the strategy, the go-to for teams? It's the, uh, it's the grain game. <laughs> I don't think we have seen the, <laughs> a single game where the grain, uh, I mean, where the last bit of grain would have been delivered before about the six minute mark. So I think there has been like grain deliveries happening on five or six minute marks, still all, all, almost all of the matches. So I think it's definitely the, the, uh, the the strategies which were introduced like two, three tournaments ago, uh, more teams have been adapting into it. Uh, we saw that yesterday on the uh, on the Astrogon versus uh, Cortiva game as well. So I think that's that's how the teams are rolling in, and uh, I'm, I'm I'm expecting nothing else from this game either. Uh, it's probably going to be a, like a very long grain game. So, in a way, I would really love this. I, I said it once already with Alex, but I really would like to see the, the big hall being used for the grain game once again. But I know that it's going to be, of course, exposing some of the other things. So when you don't take the bottleneck, it's going to leave you a little bit uh, open uh, for some other strategies. So I can completely understand why the teams are not picking up. But as a caster, I can always hope. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, and it's interesting because early on in the season, Unstoppable was... Um, still being used quite a bit, but bottleneck this season has definitely been kind of the go-to for teams. Uh, I am interested here. Are Linder going to pick their own piece of equipment? Uh, well, Dayaka have picked it. There it is. Both teams have picked it. The Linder, Lintrek, want their own, oh, a fake out. And they've yeah, gone with the telehandler instead, which That's is very one. nice. But so, so Linder's opponents have picked a Linder, but Linder faked out picking the Linder. <laughs> Uh, you yeah, I mean, we haven't the seen a telehandler being used today before. That's the first. And uh, That's I mean, good. I mean, this lineup of of I mean of of Diatka versus Lindner. Um, I mean, you said it. It's a close series. They were fourth and fifth on the circuit points. 
And and I was trying to figure out myself, like which one I should be. Okay, not rooting for, but you know, just think about the odds. Like who's okay, really winning this series? And it's gonna be a very hard one. But in a way, I think Lindner has been more like finding surprises during the season. And uh, yeah. I, I wouldn't be surprised if they have something in store. Maybe uh, you know, practicing the Telebog toss, for example. Uh, there's gotta be a reason why they chose the Telehandler. Uh, there's got to be a reason for it. So I'm just very Lindner eager to see what was, is that reason. was trolling there, Maddie. Lindner was trolling with their, like, picks. Did you see what they were doing? They were just cycling through different tractors, and there at the end they acted like they were going to pick the Manitou forklift and the, the skid steer and the Fiat, and then, of course, they actually picked what they wanted. Um, I knew they weren't going to do that. They weren't going to pull the Kermit mistake and, and pick the skid steer. You don't want that, trust me. Um, but I still think the telehandler is the key here. I want to see what they do with it. Yeah, you're right. The telehandler is 100%. I, I'm honestly surprised it's the first time it's been used today because they are the fastest stackers in the game. Now, you can't pull anything behind it, but usually your stacker is not pulling anything anyways. So it's not that big of a deal. And when it comes to the lender especially if you take the weight off of the back of that lender with the stacker on the front it is going to go wobbling all over the place as lender are in great position here for a pretty decent first bail depending on how Sinfry can get into the barn here and if he can do it on the swing or not we're going to be in the 130s i would say by the time he arrives unless he hits it on the run he's going to try to hit it on the run may have timed it just a bit wrong though and now that is in such a bad position that it's just gonna have to sit there i think they're gonna leave it for later oh no he is pushing it back still a 130 yeah. that would have been quite a significant score yeah i mean it probably would have been like 140 139 without the mistake so uh we have seen mistakes being done today earlier with the swings but it has it, they have been costing a whole lot more so we saw like a 30 points lost for Valtra on the last series. And now Lindner, they actually had a pretty quick fix for it. And JP is not going to swing it. He's going to reverse that in. So they, it's going to be Lindner having a quite significant lead, 25 points. Ooh, yeah. And uh, well, with, with Alex's terms, it's going to be 1.25 bails. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's a decent uh, margin because you will have to deliver... Uh, unless you get like a nice multiplier advantage, you're going to have to deliver more than one bail to make it up. But there's plenty of time. We've seen already yesterday in the play-in match that first bails weren't always the factor. But you want to maximize the points you get in every phase of the 15 minutes. These are the early yeah, points you score. There's going to be several minutes without anything scored now, Matty. But later on is when the bulk of the points are scored. I mean, of course, they want to get the points. I'm just wondering that. I, I think it's also like a psychological element that when the other team is leading, that the other team knows that, you know, we are behind. So it kind of affects the whole team uh, in a way, at least on the mental state a little bit. Of course, they got to be trusting their strategies that, yes, this is going to work. We're going to catch up the amount of points needed. But, you know, never nobody likes to be on the uh, let's say on the on the losing side of the scoreboard at any point of the game even if they know that they still have a chance of coming back from them so i think it's definitely a psychological thing as well we can see the players i just love these player views we can actually see when the guys are playing we can see when they are like talking to each other and uh, we can see like how they are feeling after the game and do they have like you know discussions about the uh, for example the possible improvements if they're gonna lose the first game and so on so that is definitely a great, great content, and this is the uh, definitely what the World Championship Grand Final deserves as well. The first drops are there. Silo closed. Uh, we haven't seen. I mean, we have seen Silo closed earlier today, but we haven't seen it being so effective. It has get, came up once or twice on on 12 minute drops, but the teams they have been just collecting the grain more or less at that point. And I'm talking about the grain, by the way. Look at how late Lindner is collecting the grain. They are just now reaching. 10, no, they were 000. dumping it out, Matty. They they were dumping it out intentionally there and uh, dumping it onto the ground so that they could keep harvesting. And I'm sitting here wondering, like, are they going to do what I think they're going to do? And is that why they picked the telehandler? I talked about how last season they did the lender load up with transport company. You can't do that because you can't bring 14 in at a time. But because of how fast that telehandler is, and it has the ability to bring three in at a time, 
I'm almost wondering if Lindner are going to do some sort of modified version of that strategy, and that's why they've just decided to dump the first batch of grain on the ground, and then they're going to just try to get as many bales stacked up as possible and deliver them all at one time for some bonus points. We'll see if that's what they're going to do because they now are collecting grain instead of just wasting all of it. And they do have a three to one disadvantage right now in the multiplier. But look, they have 10 bales pressed already compared mm -hmm. to zero for Diaka. So they went ahead and pressed 10 bales and, and didn't bother with the grain at the start. If they can get those 10 delivered at the very least, right now they'd be getting a bale tastic with 50 bonus points. And there you mm. see Apollo again dumping out the grain as he moves towards the baler, presumably. And yes, indeed, Linder are pulling out something different here. And they're going to just yeah, I mean, try to get as many bales ahead as they can. Yeah, and Diatka, Diatka is not pressing any bales. So if they're going to go for the combo, for example, there's no bales for Diatka that they can actually counter combo at all. So definitely, if Linder is going to go with the, with the very early delivery of a huge amount of bales, they can get the bale points. Of course, they don't get the huge multiplier, but they will get the combo points. And uh, for the moment, Ehenfeld, they don't have any bales, like, like said, that they cannot counter the whole situation at all. So they have to start pressing the bales. And that, that's going to disrupt their strategy because they are not prepared for this. So whatever they are doing yeah. currently, if they have to start like by, you know, just by surprise start making the bales, then that's going to mean a lot of time. And there we go. Cerser they had so many bales next to the belt already. He's going to try to get the all, both bales. He's going to make a, sm a small mistake on the jump on that bridge. But, I mean, they, these guys, they're definitely set for something new. And I do like what I see. <laughs> this is definitely great. As the guys, they're just so calm. I mean, you can imagine, like, we made the mastermind strategy. And now we're going to execute it. And they're not leaving, like, a blink in an eye. <laughs> yeah, I, I, they are um, known, like I mentioned at the beginning, they were the tricksters of season three, and uh, we've not really seen this type of strategy be used in this season because it's been a little bit more difficult to achieve. And I like that okay, Lindner is pulling it out now. Um, the only problem here is, is this is going to be, if they go ahead and deliver these, this is going to be 90 points on the board for Deyatka. And I hope he does deliver them now because the multiplayer may not stay in their favor for long indeed he's going to and in fact there's even more coming in so we'll see is it going to be the tricky strategy or the more solid one that's going to work out after the eight minutes bail multiplier and direct delivery meanwhile have shown up bail multiplier would be absolutely huge for diatka right now with that many bales ready to deliver it would also uh um be helpful for Lindner, of course. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, but this is a problem. I mean, Ehenfeld, they have been now pressing the bales as well. So whatever combo is going to come, they can definitely, you know, counter that. We can see the bales already getting, they have the bale multiplier, they have 3.0. It's going to be Ehenfeld who's actually going to get these points. That's going to be 45 points where one bale, and there's going to be more of those coming in. They have 75 seconds. So those bales on the belt, wow. completely alone, are going to be worth 140 points. So that's going to be a huge amount of points, which Ehenfeld is now getting. And Lindner, I mean, they, they tried to play this trick strategy, which I think at the time it felt very good. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, they have a 0 .0 0 0.1 multiplier. They don't have any grain. So uh, this is a huge risk which they took. And now when Ehenfeld is coming with the bail multiplier, with the 3.0 multiplier, I think that's going to go definitely over whatever Linder is planning. So in a way, Linder is actually in a pretty bad spot for the moment because they don't have any grain collected. The multiplier is gone. Um, so this is not looking that great, to be honest. But this is, the, this is the strategy. You sacrifice your points and you play a very high gamble where you are going for combo points. And Falwi is aware right now that they are close to a combo. Meanwhile, Lindner has gone ahead and put one in. So that actually was a good bit of a disruption by Lindner because that could have been a combo for Deyatka and instead they made them waste a couple of bales into the bottom. So they got 30 less points. But as you can see, Xerxeris is just going to stack all these bales up, and they are going to make a push. 
as late as possible and try to stack up combo points. And if they do it right, they could end up with hundreds of combo points and easily close that gap. So it's a very, though, high-risk uh, strategy because if Diaka just makes sure that they counter it at the right time, it completely blows up the effort from Lindner as one now falls off for Diaka. But if I'm honest, I mean, you maybe know better, can they make 400 points? That's the question. Let's see. There's going to be... Uh, well, if they get on that stack, 15 in a row... 15 bail. So, yeah. So, um, if they get 10 in a row, that's 50. If they get 15 in a row, that's 100. If they get um, 20 in a row, that's 150. This is all stacking, by the way. And if they yeah. can get 25 in a row, that's 200. So, you're talking about, right there, about 500 points. Now, like you got to make sure that you get them lined up properly and that nothing is going to go wrong because any deviation now of this line and the push is going to be messed up. I would assume that at the end, this vulture that you see Sinfry uh, running w with uh, the baler on the back, he's going to detach the baler and use that vulture to push the back of the telehandler in. Whether or not they win this round, it's going to be fun to see. I can tell you that much, Maddie. You're in for a <laughs> that treat. I, that, I can see. <laughs> that I can understand easily. I want to see when it comes. And that's why they took the telehandler as well. Uh, it's going to be, of course, helping out with the push as well. But I mean, I, I'm just worried that the Inhofeld, they're just getting those points all the time. Uh, they, they are f five and a half hundred. So they're basically 400 points away from Lindner. So when the time comes, Lord Baylor for Lindner as Oof. well. That's going to help a little bit. That's so good that's for them. Give some points. 415 points is the difference. And like you said, it. So if we calculate those bales, let's say that, let's say that there's going to be 20, 20 bales that's going to go inside. So that should be 200 from the bales. Then it should be about 250 at least from the combo points. I might be calculating it wrong. It's actually more than that. So there's a chance that they can close the gap. But still, I think that they, 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 they need to be delivering more. So we'll see. I mean, only three and a half minutes to go. So we don't have to wait for that for a long time. And uh, I mean, yeah, I just keep the camera here when it happens. We don't want to miss this when it actually goes on. <laughs> yeah. that's gonna be, I think that's going to be the biggest push we have seen this season. We have seen like some of these pushes, but I don't, I don't honestly remember when I have seen a queue of that long that's gonna go inside of a barn. So right. definitely, it's gonna be fun, and I really hope that they're gonna treat. succeed on the push as well. Uh, this is some, this is something special. This is even better than the pancakes we have been talking about. So just make sure <laughs> to watch this. I see someone in chat saying, like, um, talking about they really need to drop some grain, but that's that's useless to Lindner right now because if you push them into the bottom, a, a Bailtastic, meanwhile, for Diatka. So Lindner did not want that. They should have made sure that they countered that one. And here go. comes there the push there now. It's a Bailtastic, it a Bail go. press of a Bailing Four spree, oh! and it costs a Bail. And they're in the lead by five points. Oh, they have to continue you, working. They have to. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> That's that is amazing, but it's gonna be so close just five points of a difference and there's gonna be seven to ten bales uh, Okay, seven and ten bales for the both sides and uh, of course the multiplier is gonna be a problem I mean Ihan felt if they wouldn't have got that combo the situation would be completely different right. so two minutes to go Yeah, that 50 points that Deaka picked up for their Belltastic was really crucial for them, I think. Also, the fact that they are going to get another 90 points into the top here. So I don't think that it's going to work out for Lender. Although these two are going to fall off now. <laughs> so only 30 points. And he might be put, he is going to push that one into the bottom potentially. They are really being sure that they don't, they know the only way Lender can win right now is if they are able to get more combo points. Lender only yeah. have seven bales out there pressed. But you would have to assume that Lindner are going to try and go for yeah. another bail tastic it's at better. the very least. So this could be interesting. Yeah, oh, my goodness. Trying. But I mean, so many points. <sighs> what a tension here. Definitely something different. I, I love what I see here. It's just not about the grain. 
you know, I'm just collecting, I'm just pouring, putting on a silo, silo close, grain multiplier and so on. No, we gotta play something else. And the Lindner, they're just preparing for it, 50 seconds to go. There's nine bales available for Ehenfeld and then they had to, all the three guys just making sure that the, uh, they will get some bales inside so what's going to happen time. here but there's going to be more bales so they will try to get 10 bales inside that's what they're waiting for they they're going for 15 level of a combo yeah, yeah. this is a problem they've got the they've got the baler coming the in time. the baler will back up and try to unload a couple extra into the bottom and then yeah. the telehandler will push the rest but they are running out of time and they're kind of up against it because diaka yeah. have been able to just keep oh. scoring points they're just ready. I mean, these guys are in position. They are just you know, trying to handle the situation the best they can, trying to hold the structure <laughs> you know, as close as possible. Just eight, seven, six, five, and there we go. The push comes from the Lindner counter. at the same time as well. One, twelve hundred points for Ehenfeld, oh, and Lindner also <laughs> made the double digits as well. Oh, it, well, it backfired, but it was uh, entertaining nonetheless, and. I don't know if Lindner will attempt that again because, uh, yeah, unfortunately for them, uh, it did not work. I'm actually interested, Maddie, because they picked up, did Lindner, the Lord Baylor super drop. And all that does is move four of your press bales and score them immediately. Mm. So they missed out on four bales, as you see it showed in the shown into the top, that they mm. could have had... Uh, part of that first push so add one more to that and they would have been getting you know more combo points so it was interesting to me that they took the time to go pick up lord baylor because all it did was mess up uh their strategy in my opinion uh it backfired it definitely like i said was high risk it was fun for us to watch i loved your reaction seeing it <laughs> for the first time this modified version of it the people in chat have lost their minds as well um, but now, Maddie, what do you think? Do Lender go with this uh, crazy strategy again, or do they go back to something standard now? Mm, well, I mean, of course, it's hard to tell. But uh, one thing that I'm, that I'm pretty sure is the fact that yeah, they will definitely do a strategy which they have been practicing. So we don't know how many strategies they have prepared. This is one of those. And uh, I wouldn't mind seeing it again. But I mean, he have felt they, I mean, we didn't expect that they have such a similar strategy as well. So uh, I really love when we see something different happening. But I mean, uh, they can go for the same, but the, uh, I, I think that's already seen. So they saw that it doesn't work out. So right. maybe they have something else on their sleeves as well. And uh, I wouldn't mind seeing like a very traditional strategy go versus Ehenfeld as well. Uh, to see how that's going to work because Ehenfeld was leaning heavily on the uh, on the combo points as well. And if you go with a more more like a traditional strategy, then let's say, okay, it's not really traditional, but the grain strategy, for example, um, that can disrupt that kind of a strategy as well. And then that could put Lindner uh, or Ehenfeld like out of the tracks as well if they're going to go with the same. I think that Deaka were uh, very aware within about six or seven minutes into that round what was happening. Once they saw that Lindner was not matching them with the grain, they knew from last season what uh, Lindner were possibly up to. And so they kind of had to kind of change their strategy and focus on countering and getting combo points themselves as well. I think that first combo was almost unintentional even by them because Lindner was so focused on stacking up. But yeah, for Lindner's sake, they've won the heart of the fans and the casters now. Maybe they should go to something more traditional and try to win the game now uh, because it did backfire for them. And that strategy, I'm, I'm actually really surprised that they pulled it out this season because previously with Transport Company in play, you could bring in 14 bales at a time and then you only needed one more for the 15 combo, the second highest combo. So they would bring in, you know, two loads of bales and already have enough for the 30 push. Um, so it's a little bit tougher, I would say, to pull it off now without mm -hmm. that uh, loading, uh, that bail loader available. So uh, I don't expect to see it again, but uh, I've seen stranger things, that's for sure. We'll see how they, uh, they approach the second one. Remember, um, it's, it's, it is double elimination, so whoever goes out of this drops into that second chance bracket, and uh, then we'll be done with the first matchups of the day, and we've got a 
we've got four more to come after this one, no matter how it ends up. But mm. Maddie, like, I wish that the camera had been on on your face during that moment because <laughs> you, I knew I it still ex, it still excited me because I knew what I was in for. Um, but I don't think you had any idea of what was about to happen. <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe the production has the uh, the individual source recording on. If they do, then they have the footage <laughs> of it. So I mean, I do have my camera on all the time, but the yeah, production sees it. So, so they saw it. So it's just right. a matter of if they did record the sources. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, I'm, I'm just wondering about, you mentioned the uh, the, the Yatskos, kind of like the first combo, which you said that maybe it was a bit of a mistake. Uh, you know, that it wasn't supposed to happen. I, yeah, and I completely agree on that one because what I was expecting that the other guys could go with the usual strategy and how it felt to me is that when they kind of like understood at that point how Lindner is playing, that they're not countering. So they maybe understood at that point that yes, they are like stacking their, <clears throat> the bales as well. And um, I might be wrong, but I do have a feeling that the other maybe at that point by that accidental combo understood that you know, how Linter is playing, right. and then maybe they make up their minds that, okay, we can actually do this as well, because they are, like, stacking their own combos, so we can do the same as well. So I think that that was maybe a part of the, uh, part of the, uh, how the game went, that they understood Linter's strategy better. And while having that 3.0 multiplier at the, uh, at the upper, upper level of the barn as well, so they were able to catch, like, some single points away from here and there. And these guys, I mean, Linter, they are just enjoying, they are clapping their hands, yeah, they are laughing. Fun. Yeah, not very at all. And just like you said, the loser of this game, they're going to drop on the lower bracket. They're not going to go home. So we can see definitely these right. guys more later. And they're going to face Valtra, who's going to drop to the, to the, to the, to that lower bracket. So still plenty of, uh, plenty of games to come. And uh, we can still enjoy from all of these guys. And uh, yeah, the game is preparing. And suddenly, instead of going to the game, we're going to be coming to the cameras. Yeah, well, that's all right. Um, <laughs> you know, we like to have our own faces on screen too. Uh, but I, I, I'm, I'm interested because um, last season we, we, we saw combos happening a lot last season, and in fact, there was a standoff at one point, Maddie, last season, because a team was near a combo and the other team wanted to counter, and they, they were just one away from being able to get the counterpoints. And we had like a standoff of just both teams sitting there with a the bale at the bottom of the barn for probably like a minute and a half. It was like, you put the bale in. No, you put the bale in. No, trust me, go ahead. Uh, allow allow me, you go first. It was pretty funny to see that. Um, but we've not seen these combo points in play at all in season four because uh, Transport Company was removed. And it's become more about the individual skill and the combined skills as a team. And it's been more about the grain game and pressing a lot of bales and getting them delivered. So it's interesting to see Linder pull it out here at the world championships of season four. This time the Manitou is going to be banned by Diatka. And so is the Massey Ferguson. Uh, it, it's interesting to me that uh, Diatka would ban these because they won the first round but maybe they are, you know, very aware that even though they won, Lindner disrupted them in what they wanted to do, um, and they had to basically play Lindner's game against them to win in a way. Um, the John Deere is out now as well, so maybe both teams this time will pick the Lindner Lind track. It's the only triple stacker available now. Similar team. Uh, Captain pick phases there, same harvester, same baler, same team perk. And let's see what the players go with. Yeah, let's see. I think that the, I mean, of course, the uh, banning the telehandler is going to affect the gameplay. Um, but I'm pretty sure that Linter, I mean, if they have prepared this kind of a strategy for this game, they knew that they can do it only once, probably. So they must have a second strategy uh, already in place. And uh, let's see how that's going to execute. Because it, it, it's kind of like one plus one. We do this, and then they're going to ban the telehandler. So they knew that this is going to happen on the second game after they pulled that off. So they, they must have a strategy. And uh, <laughs> there was the new Holland for a while, picked for Sinfrey, um, which we, I don't think we have ever seen that being used on the game, actually. Um, this no, season. only only by me unintentionally when I mess up the picks when I'm playing on scrims, um, because yeah, that's that's what uh, non pros do. 
when they mm. are playing. I was so worried that I was going to do that at FarmCon when Astragon invited me to play with them in the, the show match against Trelleborg. I was like, please don't pick the wrong thing in front of all of these people. <laughs> Oh. Granted, I do it on stream, so what's the difference of in person or, or virtually doing it? So here we go. All right. Dayako, <laughs> if they win, they move on in the uh, top of the bracket. If Lindner lose, they'll go into the second chance bracket. If Lindner win this one, we'll have, uh, I believe, the first uh, game three of the day. Is that right, Maddie? So yeah. far, is it yeah. been clean sweeps? Yeah. It's been two zeros all the time so far. So if this is going to go for, for Lindner, then we have, yes, the first best of three that's actually going to go for the third game. But anyways, uh, they are starting to, once again, uh, the lovely first bail production is starting. And I mean, see, Lindner, they are, I mean, they're getting so close to the bridges already. Look at that, that the nose. Not take along. They will just take that away and they should be getting the first bail in a matter of seconds. We haven't yet seen that to come. There we go. Linder has the first bail. We see that on the on the on the point. So they should be approaching the drawbridges. It could be more than 140 points, by the way. Uh, no, it's going to be about 140 if he's going to swing that inside. Maybe 139 ish or 130. Missed yeah, it last like time. Let's see this time. Perfect. There you go. That's about what he would have had last time if he had not messed up the swing. Yeah, about the same, definitely, and. Uh, Let's see, we can see some of the players just wondering what's happening there. We can see uh, some player from Diatka just watching the other guy's monitor, so maybe they are wondering. I, I, I just noticed that also one of the players had uh, like tilted the monitor towards the other player a little bit, so we can see better what's going on on his Oof. screen. Yeah, that was interesting. JP with a bit of a mistake. These guys are just playing. We can see the full focus mode. JP is going to be late with the first bail. That's going to be one. No, Ooh, it's going to be less than 120, actually. It's going to be a one. I don't know. Let's see when he gets that final in. Oh, man. 38 points. That's almost two bails right there. So uh, a good start for Lindner and a must-win game for them to uh, stay in the top part of the bracket here. You can see the anguish on the face there of the players from mm. Deaka Ehrenfeld and Lindner straight back to it. Lindner are still, like, they've pressed four bales again and this is something we've not really been seeing other teams doing is pressing bales early on before uh, they go and collect the grain so it's nice to see that they already have some bales out there they are going to start collecting the grain now and this time they're not dumping it on the ground so they're about even with the amount of grain compared to their opponents at the moment as you see uh, Jeppy now I think they want to uh, get some early bales in. I mean, they have some bales. They can still like lift the multiplier, and if they're gonna be very early on the belt, uh, sorry, very early on at the silo with that grain, and time the bales right, they can get something like uh, 120 points out of those four bales, and they can increase the kind of the initial lead. Speed limit, which is lowered. Uh, not going to make much of a difference, to be honest. Of course, both teams will go and pick speed limit if they're going to pick something. That's what I'm expecting. And if one team is going to go for it, then the other team must go for it. But uh, it could be just both of the teams ignoring them completely as well. That is a chance as well. But I, w I really want to see yeah. what Linter wants to do here. Because, these, like you said, that the, uh, the bales pre impressed earlier. And, and you said that they are kind of like, you know, the team that can surprise us. They definitely did that on the first game, so let's see if they can offer the uh, the entertainment for the with the full value on the second game as well. Well, speed limit has been picked up by Deyatka, so uh, Lindner will need to answer in kind, or they're going to be uh, at a disadvantage as far as moving around the map. It's a negative 20% speed against them at the moment. They have picked it up in the meantime, so now both teams are going at the same speed and both teams delivering grain now at the same time as well and yeah still four bales to zero and in fact Lindner have more grain at the moment that's just because they were later to deliver it though so we're going to end up about even i would say on the multipliers mm. this time around um but yeah, it's, it's uh, pretty Diaka are already coming back in with more no that's them leaving um, so yeah, both teams now pretty even, Maddie. It is, it is. So let's see when and if 
surprise element comes in. I'm just wondering that there's got to be a reason why Lindner make those early bails, so they, they must have an idea what to do with them. Or maybe they just, you know, press them as they were doing something else and why not to do it at the same time as well if they were, like, uh, you know, moving equipment or something like that. But I want to see how this going to be played. We saw, that, by the way, the speed limit being picked by both of the teams, and there's still just a couple seconds of that remaining still. And uh, not going to cause much of a difference. Two point zero multipliers, grain is being collected. They should end up with the pretty much the same amounts of it. So this could be a very even game. And we only saw those four bales coming for Lindner. So they haven't done anything with them. They just have those four. So maybe maybe yeah. it's not a factor. Maybe they don't have a like mastermind strategy with those bales. Just have to wait and see, of course. But the uh, and you never know. I mean, the, the gamers are definitely usually masterminds. And this is a very bold. The ideal sight. just sitting up there. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's like watching. You, you I'm watching all over the field. the field. Yeah, just keep on working, guys. I'll be watching you. The big black figure on top of that hill. That's interesting, actually, that Lender were able to get that um, ideal off of the pod at the beginning, but they've elected to use the ideal they reserved in a John Deere instead of double ideals. Um, I'm wondering, you know, what what the purpose behind that is. Is Lender now have gone and given themselves a 2.1 advantage, and they're not going to leave the cart there and deliver any more grain. And Jeppy, meanwhile, did not answer back. And so this is a moment if Linder can get those bales in. I don't think the bales have been moved in yet, though, because they're still out on the field. But going back to what you were saying about the four bales they pressed, I think even if they they don't have any intentions with them now, it's a smart move by Linder to make bales in, in time that could have otherwise been wasted because they're not behind in the multiplier. So they were able to press four bales and still keep up with the grain. So why not go ahead and press some if you don't have anything else to do at that moment? As now it we will be. see Diatka start to press some. Yeah, it could be also a bait, in a way, to press some. And then, okay, the other teams, they cannot see the bale count as, as we can see. it, But it could be like a, a bit of a bait that we will make some bales. And if they notice that we are pressing the bales, they might change the strategy. Crazy tool and direct delivery. And now also, by the way, Ehenfeld, they also have four bales. So they have been pressing some as well. So both teams, they can, well, they can choose what they want to do. Of course, I mean, I always love the crazy tool when the guys are just going with such, such, such a fast motion. Me too. But as the scores are <laughs> what they are, uh, maybe the direct delivery wouldn't be a bad idea. Yeah, we'll see. I, I personally think that if you're ready to use it, especially if you have two bailers ready to use it, that crazy tool is the one to go for when it comes to picking between these two. Direct delivery just it moves so slowly and... Diaka definitely won't pick direct delivery right now because they're bringing both of their combines in to the silo. Linder, meanwhile, have a full cart and one harvester there. Apollo is now running on foot and will probably collect the other combine from his teammate. That indeed is what has happened. Xerxerus now is on foot with the runner perk and will uh, presumably head for a tractor. And we're going to start to get into those stages now when teams need to be focusing on uh, pressing bales and bringing them into the barn. Yeah, the time is running close. I mean, six and a half minutes and there's still plenty of grain to be delivered. So yeah, the grain game is definitely going to go a longer time. Once again, it's not going to change. Now we can see finally some bales on the belt as well. Uh, so f that's the first bale that's going to go inside after, after a long, long time after the first bales. And yeah, the second floor for Ehen fell 2.5. It's going to lower down to 2.4. They're going to try to raise that up. So 25 points from that bail. And uh, things are definitely happening here for Lindner. Uh, we can see Ehen fell there just unloading the grain. And now it's Lindner's time to kind of like, you know, return back the favor as JP at the same time just loading those loading those bales on the belt as well. They are not so clean as they could be. And one of them Ooh, is going to drop yeah. off. The first one, the second one seems that it actually might go in, but yeah, they're not as straight as many people would have hoped for, especially we'll be some bonus to have though. his temperature switches in the right position all the time. He did get 24 points there, though, um, for that mm -hmm. first bail that went in. And Lindner, 
need to get more of this grain delivered in before they score more with extra points. There's another one at 24 points. So still a good moment here for Ehrenfeld. And there's another one in now at 24 and one in at 23. So several bales scored and now one in at 22, I believe. And now it's back to even. So a good bit of play there by Deyaka as they are able to pick up several bales with extra points and they have moved into the lead now. Mm. Yeah, 2.1 for Linear and that's the, those are the final, final multipliers we're gonna see. They're not gonna change anymore. So that's gonna be like, once again, two points more from one bale. We have seen this quite many times. I, I don't think that we have seen it to make much of a difference in the end. Um, especially when we have like 40 points apart and about the same amount of bail. So felt definitely they have an advantage here. So Lindner, they are kind of like falling short a little bit on everything. They are having less bails, they're having less points. Okay, they have a better multiplier, but can they? I mean, closing that gap with the same amount of bails uh, would require that they, right. they are able to, uh, let's say, deliver a couple more bails. And uh, maybe they are in the lead by them. one now. Yeah, they are now getting and them on the And the super belt, drop so. could make a difference here. Super drop is coming up in just a second. This could this could swing this one, to be honest. It looks like it's bail withering. So mm. it's for one bail uh, for Lindner. And it looks like Deyatka are going to get to it. And it's one bail for them as well. So that destroys one bail for Lindner. So mm. remember that if it comes down to... Uh, 21 points or less at the end that could have been the crucial moment right there this one's yeah, going to be close yeah definitely it sees that it's going to be a close series now you have felt have taken the lead they do have the same amount of bells available of course, they took the bail withering as well. But I, I, I think that in the end, Ihan felt they are just looking like more set for this strategy. Uh, I mean, Lindner has been playing it well. Not going to say anything bad about that one. But I mean, Ihan felt they are just constantly now scoring points. They are making sure that the gap stays like it is. I think the, uh, how they are working around the belt, it looks like more efficient. So, I mean, I'm not going to call it. But if I would need to name a team that would be getting all the bails inside, I would say that it's going to be Ehenfeld instead of Lindner because Lindner is, uh, I think they are running a bit wild with the bales currently. Yeah, you, you might be right about that. It's going to be interesting the two and a half minutes. It could come down to a mistake as well. Um, both teams right now have plenty of time to get all of their bales in. The only bad news I would say for Lindner at the moment is that they are actually behind in points and... Uh, they're staying about one behind in bales as well. And I think that moment where Ehenfeld were able to score, what was it, four or five bales with extra points is going to make up the difference here for them unless mm. they make a mistake. And there's nearly the first mistake is one falling off. He's been able to recover that, but will it stay on at that angle? That was actually very nicely done by Falway. And both of these will go in. Linder briefly has gone into the lead. That's going to switch back here in just a moment. In fact, we're dead even now with a minute 40 to go. So buckle up, folks. Yeah, I mean, we are even. And there was a two bail difference on the bail counts. And, and as the multiplier difference is going to be two more points for Linder from each bail, it basically means that if they deliver 10 bails, it's going to be... Uh, Lindner gets the same amount of points from 9 as Ehenfeld gets from, from 10. So in a way, by delivering all of those bales, it's going to mean that Lindner can close one bail difference. Uh, but then Ehenfeld still has like one more bail more. So it's going to come down to the wire, uh, delivering all the bales, getting them all on the second floor, not making mistakes. So this is going to be like, like you said earlier, Kevin, it's going to be like a very tight series. And of course, both sides are doing a great job by stacking them up. That's a little bit complicated, uh, but he's going to get that on the middle. And I think part of those are actually going to go inside. Uh, same applies also for Cero Cero stacking. Uh, those are seeming to go inside. And yes, these are going to go inside as well. So they are going to 509. And Lindner is going to be running out of bales, but also Ian felt they need to find a way of putting all those bales now on the belt on time. Still seven of them remaining. And uh, I mean, it seems reasonable to be honest this i mean they close. are just, 
very calmly putting it in. But it's got to go close, just like you said. It's got to be getting very close. And that two bail difference, when we look at the points right now, I think okay, the bails aren't in at the barn, though. Side. Yeah, I, I don't know. What's They've only going got on? two yeah, of their five at the barn. Oh, those are going to fall down from Ooh, Linder. That so that's, that's, that could be huge. And they have to show it on the first floor. It's going to be 640. They don't have the time. Ihenfeld, uh, they don't have the bales anymore. And in wow. the end, even though it seemed that it's not going to be the case, it is going to be Linder who's going to win the second game. Wow. And uh, we do have our first uh, rubber match, the third of the, the best of uh, three here today at the season four world championships and 673 to 614 one extra bail delivered one less into the top and two extra into the bottom and yeah i was i was wondering how that was going to shape up because that moment where dayaka scored extra points right around the like six five to six minute mark put them into a nice little lead but Lindner just kept plugging away and and chipping away at that score and were able to pull it out in the end. So very nicely done by Lindner. And yeah, maybe, uh, you know, like I said, they won the heart of the fans, but they've won a game now with a, a more <laughs> normal strategy that we're used to in season four. Um, and I would assume that uh, they're going to stick to more of the normal strategies going forward now. Uh, and how do Diaka now respond, do you think, Maddie, going into this third one? I don't know. It was a little bit strange. I, 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 I might have missed something, but uh, based on my calculation, I'm not sure what happened there in the end. Like, did they just, did Linda just produce the bales uh, so with such a fast pace at the end that we kind of, like, you know, lost the count in a way? Because of, to me, it seems that they had the same amount of bales all the time and still had the gap of about 40 points to Ehenfeld. So did they get a combo that we missed or something? I don't know. Uh, because th that no. 60 point of a difference is not something that I was actually forecasting to happen. And of course, my math can be wrong. But I mean, based on the amount of bales available, it was not supposed to it be It was the undelivered bales. Yeah. Yeah, like, uh, Ehenfeld had the bales to win, but they were out in the field. They didn't get them in in time. And, it, you know, it doesn't really do you any good to press bales if you can't get them all in. Mm -hmm. So you've got to make sure that you're getting them in, even if they would have, you know, brought them in and put them into the bottom, they would have been in a better position. So, uh, yeah, you've got to make sure you're not leaving them out there. They do you no good just sitting on the floor. They've got to be in the barn. Um, so I think that's what it came down to. I thought it, you're right though. If you were looking at the bail count and the, the points gap there for a while, you didn't see really any way for Lindner to win, but Lindner were able to get their bails in, which is the most important thing. Um, and pulled it out at the end. So here we go. Let's see who, who moves on into the top of the bracket and who drops into the second decision bracket. I'm not going to lie. I was really hoping to have my lunch break now. <laughs> <laughs> but that wasn't meant to be as we uh, <laughs> close the series. So it's going to have to wait for one more game because after this one, it's going to be Alex who's going to make the comeback. And of course, it's going to be Alex and Kermit on the next game. But okay, let's not worry about that one. Just my stomach is like reminding me from it <laughs> that, you know, please eat something <laughs> at some point. But it's going to happen after this one. So no worries. Anyways, uh, the picks are coming in or the bands are coming in first. And then we have the picks and the... Uh, Let's see if we are going to be set for the more traditional game. The telehandlers are not going to be banned by Ehenfeld this time. So if Linder wants Ooh. to go with the strategy <laughs> They're of like, the first I game, dare you, Linder. <laughs> it's doable. I dare you, Linder. Go yeah. to that strategy from the first game. Yeah. I wouldn't mind like skipping my lunch because of that if I actually see Linder doing it for the second time. And, and while you said it on the first game that there should be a video of me like shouting, <laughs> that I'm just wondering, like, because you know, Alex, the uh, you know, when he gets excited, his tone goes pretty high. So I'm just wondering, like, how right. high it would have gone there. <laughs> You're right. Oh man, I remember. In fact, um, when the strategy, when Linder pulled it out in season three for the first time, I believe it was myself and Alex and Lars, community manager at Giants. And 
when it first happened, we were like, okay, um, do these guys know they're dumping grain on the ground? Of course, we had never seen it before. We were like, what the heck are these guys doing? Have they lost their minds? And then we started to see them stack those bales up, and we were like, wait a minute. They're intentionally dumping the grain and just pressing as many bales as possible, and they're going to stack them up and go for combo points. And, yeah, um, you might be able to go back in s to Season 3 and uh, find that clip. And, uh, yeah, Alex definitely... We all lost our minds that day, for sure, when we saw it the first time. Um, so, yeah, the telehandlers are in play, and, in fact, Linder has gone for it here. But are they going to go for it? here <laughs> this is the real question i don't know if they should i mean there's a reason why they do have <laughs> a telehandler so um, i, 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 I is... do have a feeling that they have heard us they have heard us that please do the first game strategy that's what i'm expecting at i mean <laughs> i will settle well, down nothing so... less than that strategy it's interesting to me that Deaka have again decided to only go with one stacker. I think that's what cost them in that last game is they were only able to bring in extra bales on one tractor and then they had to bring them in on the back of the baler for the others. Whereas Lindner now have a telehandler and the Massey Ferguson with a stacker on it. So they can bring in more bales at a time. And that's what won them that last round. Zerzerus is using the telehandler's speediness to get the ideal combine reserved off the pod for Lindner. And it looks like uh, Lindner also winning the battle for the Krona Big Pack Baylor. And this could be another pretty high score for first bail points for Lindner. Yeah, it's, I, I think the setup is definitely made for it. So it's definitely doable. So let's see... Uh... I mean, they are close, so it comes down to how fast they can get the first bail. But yeah, I mean, for 140 points, it's possible. Now it's going to be disengaging, so yeah, this should be actually... I mean, if he's going to swing that in, it's going to be more than 140 for sure. That's going to be 143, maybe even, let's see. And he's not going to swing it. He knows that he has a great first bail anyways. So that's 139, I think, or 8 now. Uh, or maybe even seven. Yep, seven it is as he's reversing it in. So he knew that he has a good first good bail and he didn't want to risk it because there's so much on the line. So swinging that in, yeah, it might have been like a four more points from that. But I think it's more important to get that 137 than risk it to get 142 or 110. Yeah, 15 points, so Anfeld have done a better job. They're not behind as, as much at the beginning as well, um, and that's a good sign for them. But they need to make sure that they're getting their bails in earlier this time as well. Uh, that's what ended up costing them. A little bit of a literal nail-biting going on there, it looks like, from uh, one of the team members of Deaka. It's great to have them back in the studio, have, an, have a LAN event, be able to see the players' faces again. It definitely adds to the production value. Shout out to our team in Germany who's running the production. We've seen some of our video guys, Marco and Michael on screen so far. We know Jenny and Klaus and Niels and Jan and so many other people are working behind the scenes to make things work as well. So. Thanks to the entire team for their efforts. They make it easy for us casters to just show up, turn our cameras on, our lights on, and do what we do best. Just start talking, right, Maddie? I mean, almost. I mean, you tell your stories about <laughs> cycling to the office, so it doesn't really seem that easy sometimes. But yeah, I completely get <laughs> yeah. you. I completely get you. I mean, for me, this is easy. I mean, okay, easy is not the right word, but I mean that the time schedule is so much more different. I mean, you have to wake up like two o'clock in the morning and, uh, you know, the, 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 the broadcast for me starts at 11 in the morning. So that's almost like midday. So it's, it's like very easy for me. I can sleep late still on Saturday, on Sunday. And then, I mean, when I come to the studio, it's easy. Speed limit and British race, those are the drops. You so don't have to go it, for yeah. it. <laughs> and uh, of course, I mean, just as a reminder, so we do have uh, some discussions about the pancakes on the, um, the chat. So just as a reminder, tonight, this evening, there's going to be a separate pancake stream on my channel. 
with the FSL uh, kind of like a perks included on that one a little bit. So, so uh, just as a reminder, because people are missing pancakes, so I'm trying to keep the amount of pancake jokes minimal here, because then we can do more about those tomorrow after the stream. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Yeah, trust me, we haven't forgotten about the pancakes. Uh, we just uh, have a lot of action to call this week. And uh, now, thanks to Ginny and uh, our channel being verified and everything on, on Twitch, we do now have the prediction poll, and you can predict the winner in each matchup, each round, and you can win your pancakes right there. So um, all the pancakes you've been looking for are available in chat. You just have to pick correctly for each matchup who you think is going to win. Yeah, Pancake definitely has been, uh, I would say, the star of the season so far. <laughs> we have been talking about I think a lot about might Pancakes. have something to say about that. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, yeah, but I mean, I'm pretty sure that those guys will eat some pancakes as well, so <laughs> they can just, uh, oh, I those... mean, if you can't eat them, I'm sure those them. guys could put away a lot of pancakes, to be honest. Yeah, easily. They're young, they have the nice young metabolism, and uh, yeah, you know, it, it does you good the morning after, basically, is what I'm saying. Yeah. So you need those carbs, see... that, that carb load. <laughs> Yeah, I want to see the FSL season 24, like in 20 years, and then we'll see how well the pancakes have been uh, treating Trillipop players. <laughs> oh, man, I hope we make it that far. We'll, we'll see. It, it is it's still, I mean, we're four seasons in, but the the FSL is still rather young in, in the world <laughs> of esports. I mean, the entire industry of esports isn't really that old. Um, yeah. at least in its current state, but for the FSL, yeah, pretty new onto the scene, and it'll be interesting to see next season and beyond how things continue to change and evolve. Yeah, I'm just, um, I mean, we have Noble Chess, of course, like, you know, as a, as a partner here, so in 20 years, I, I guess they need to be making, like, a rocking chess, if, they, if we got a pistol here. Yeah, Jeppy now coming in for the, uh, well, he's going to leave it, as a matter of fact, but we are about at that point now for the grain to start to be delivered. Lindner are ahead in the total amount of grain, and that is likely because they're running the two ideal combines right now. Hmm. They had both ideals earlier, but they were using the John Deere instead. We're 30 seconds away from the eighth minute drops, which is the first moment where something, uh, you know, can really shift in the game depending on what the drop is. True. Yeah, I mean, just 15 points apart. So that's that's not much, to be honest. Uh, less than one bail. And Linder has been starting to press the bails as well. Ehenfeld is now starting to press the bails as well. I think Ehenfeld has been collecting just a bit more of grain. But I don't think it's going to be like a huge factor because I, I think both teams will be just uh, coming up with the same time amount. And there we go. Silo closed. And that is, I think, uh, we haven't seen Silo closed on the 8-minute mark for a long time. And we can see immediately Lindner's going to go and set up the uh, the grain delivery. And they will probably go and pick up Silo closed as we can see the X-ray figures coming in. Gepi is going to be, of course, having a much more pressure to do so. Because they, Linder has already been unloading, but 2.4 and Linder do have seven bales. So if they now manage to somehow deliver some of those, that might give them a slight advantage towards the remains of this uh, third game of the series. Yeah, that's a good that's a good moment for Linder. It was a good reaction by Aenfeld to make sure that they were able to go and close the silo, so it didn't get any worse for them. Lindner now do need to go ahead and bring some bales in and score them. They have uh, picked up Silo Closed as well in the meantime, so they have about 60 seconds, a uh, little bit over a minute, to go and uh, and get these scored. So they're, I would imagine that Sinfry is going to stop the baler here in a second and bring these in. He might pick some up, up off the back. In fact, Zerzerus is just going to take the telehandler in now and score these. So a chance here for Lindner 
Copter to score at least a couple bales with some extra points. They'd be getting 24 points per bale into the top right now. Yeah, but they don't seem to be going for it. I mean, it's just uh, 24 seconds until they until Ihenfeld can start delivering the grain. And I, I oh, there we go. It's gonna be Cerceros. Oh, he's gonna oh, miss the he other went one. Oh, for the toss. He's missed one though. <sighs> But still, he gets one inside, so that is something. But I mean, they did, uh, you know, just leave some bales on the fields, and they didn't start heading towards the barns. So Zerzeros just went and picked two of them, and uh, yeah, yeah, they don't have the time to really use the multiplier. I'm not sure for why those he. Bales if Ian Felt's gonna go and unload. I'm not sure why he tossed it either. Like he could have set those onto the belt, and they still would have gone in. He would have got 48 points instead of 24. And now um, they are delivering their grain at the same time, both teams. So they're still going to get some extra points here, Linder, for the other ones that they've brought in. But yeah, missed opportunity there. You got to maximize every moment in these close matchups. He just wanted to have his five seconds of fame. <laughs> okay, <laughs> he has done that before. But I mean, still, like, he wants to go with the style. Because I mean, I'm free, again. Yeah, there we go. Second try. He has been practicing, and that's gonna be a toss, and that's gonna be. <laughs> it's gonna land on the oh, belt. It's only but one the other one's again. gonna fall down as well. But I mean, still, that's an interesting toss. It's gonna go all the way up to the belt, but it's not gonna go inside. But yeah. I, I'm not gonna not call quite it. Quite the uh, speed there. Yeah, not the speed that he was needing for. But I mean, I I would definitely give him some style points out of that one. And at least he's trying. So, um, I mean, and still got two of the bales inside as well. So, I mean, yes, it didn't look like, you know, uh, like the most perfect toss ever, but it was still a decent, decent amount of points. And there we go, more points coming from the, from the belt as well. Oh, so now Lindner is, is leading news. by 115 points. So this is bad news for Dayatka because they at this point of the last game, we're also behind 2.1 to 1.9, but they were the team that scored the bales with extra points early on. They were getting, I think, 24. They got a couple in. They got a couple in at 23, one or two in at 22, and one in at 21. And they were ahead by a significant margin and then had the disadvantage in the multiplier. Now they are behind by a significant margin and at a disadvantage in the multiplier. And then to make matters even worse, Linder have picked up the bail points for just a free bail there, basically. And mm. it is going to be hard for Dayaka Anfeld to get back into this one now with scoring two less points per bail compared to Linder. I'm just not sure it's going to be possible. And there's a mistake as well because he oops uh, for Ehenfeld. Uh, we don't know what happened yet, but something definitely did. But we can see other players more or less on the on the pictures at least two of them. But yeah, the gap is now. I mean, it's basically six bales with the current multipliers or seven bales. So that is the difference what we are seeing for the moment. And uh, there isn't that many bales for Ehenfeld that they can actually come up with from that situation. Three minutes to go. We can see Zero Zero City wants to go for the toss for the second time or for the third time actually. Uh, let's see if he gets it right this time. There's going to be oh, that's going to be a well. Oh, I mean, yeah, both of them will go inside. He's it was slapping. close. It, it, <laughs> it wasn't as close as Trelleborg. Uh, toss. I mean, when they have been doing the toss, they will just, you know, nicely slide in and they will just disappear. But I mean, still a great effort from Cezarus. And they are, I mean, it, we can clearly see that he's enjoying from it. So yeah, he's smiling. He's making the tosses. You know, he's living the life, the farming simulator life, the FSL <laughs> esports life. I mean, you are staying in Germany uh, in a hotel at the venue. You know, you're enjoying uh, the, the nice. Um, hospitality of giant software and then you're doing trailer box tosses so i mean you gotta enjoy from it i've stayed in the hotel and it is it is very nice and very convenient to the office it's it's like a block away it's very close it's very nice and uh yeah when i was there in july uh ahead of farm con we stayed there for a few days myself and dj goham and yeah, very nice little area, very walkable all around. Lots of cool uh, shops and restaurants around where the office is. So you're definitely right. You got to enjoy these moments. And I think that, you know, most of these teams also enjoy each other's company, too. It's nice to see them together. We got to see a couple of them 
together at FarmCon, but having the full rosters of, you know, eight different teams out for an event, this is the way it's supposed to be, right? These LAN events are really what make esports shine. Being able to see them at an event in person, see their reactions live, it just adds that little bit of extra something special. And it does look like uh, after losing the first game, going with the uh, Lindner load-up strategy, that Lindner are going to be moving on at the top of the bracket, and Dejatka Ehenfeld are going to fall into the second chance bracket. So it's uh, 205 points. Both, both of the first two rounds were really close, but Lindner just have executed pretty flawlessly so far in this third round. Yeah, I mean, to me, it seems that this is the uh, the beginning of the end. Okay, it's only 40 seconds to go, so it's pretty close to the end. But I, I, what, I, what, what I'm <laughs> seeing is that Linder is enjoying the game. When you look at the faces of Ehenfeld, they are... Uh, you don't see that they have a solution, to be honest. So it's that they know that they're going to lose this one. And having about the same amount of points, uh, Bales as well, not the points. You can see the headphones are not even on his head anymore. So they yeah, are they're just like, what's the point? letting it go. So they Linder gotta definitely will later. claim this one. And even though they lost the first game, they'd lost it with a style. And then, you know, with a tr more traditional gameplay. So Linder is definitely looking very strong. Uh, I'm, I'm very happy to see that. And these guys, they are just enjoying it. I mean, I said that the guys are living <laughs> the, the farming simulator esports life, but the figures on the game, they are living the uh, the farming life. They are enjoying it. They have collected the crop. They have sold it with a huge amount of money. They have won millions of dollars, and they are just jumping on top of the tractors. Yeah. So uh, it'll be... Um... Lindner against New Holland in Group B now, the two winners of the games there. And then Voltra and Dejatka Ehenfeld will be facing off down in the uh, second chance bracket. And, uh, of course, we saw Group A <laughs> earlier on as well. And uh, Trelleborg knocked off Astragon. Bednar knocked off My Insanity. So that'll be Trelleborg against Bednar and my insanity against astragon and all eight teams at this point are still alive and we'll start to see uh, some of these teams being knocked out now as we progress we've got uh, through three matchups now we've got five more to go today so we're not even quite halfway through so uh, we're going to take a break here in a minute make sure you get up and stretch i know maddie's going to go get some lunch uh, yeah. I'm still five hours or so away from lunchtime, so I'm kind of jealous of that. Uh, what, what's for lunch, do you think, Copter? What, uh, you, you got an idea where you're going to have? I mean, yeah, the area where I'm having my studio, uh, there's two places nearby. I mean, there's a, a very excellent like underground burger joint, so I think I'm going to go there. And, uh, and then there's a very good Chinese oh, restaurant as well, but I think go. I want to choose the burger joint. I can take the pictures, and uh, I will put it on the chat maybe later, so... Let's see. So I'll All see right, you guys cool. after two matches. It's going to be Kermit and Alex show. That's going to be uh, taking you through the next two matches. See you soon.
All right, we're back, and we are going to have another interview here now with the uh, captain of Team Lindner. Congratulations for winning. Uh, great start. Uh, a rough start. I, think. Uh, I guess so they're giving them kind of like uh, props, even though they lost the first round for the bail train. They're basically saying that it worked out pretty well for them, but uh, that the the combos and the multipliers didn't hit at the right time, that they kind of had it. They thought they would get it in the first round, but it wasn't enough in the end. Yeah, basically they're still talking about that first round, the, the bell train and not being able to pull it off. Uh, a normal strategy in the second round, uh, and then you came back. How were you feeling about that? Were you tense and nervous? He said, yeah, we're a bit nervous in the second round. But it kind of started off really strong for us in the second round, being able to get the Harvester and Baylor. We played our normal tactic, and special things happened for us, and Yeah, we had a little, they had the special celebration, um, and uh, it was cool to show that to the to the fans. It was an amazing game. Great comeback. And, you know, Stevens asked him, how did the third game go? Was it, Did it go well? The third match was the smoothest of all of them, uh, smoother than the second for us. We are quicker with the grain. It worked out well for us. Uh, had the trick with the telehander through the bridge, which was cool. Uh, and now Steven's like, next match he'll be playing New Holland. Will be a tough match. He said it will be tough, but we'll do our best to win. So uh, thanks to Steven and Homer, our German casters, and to Niels for translating in our ears so that we can get out what's being said to the English viewers. And I believe I have the man, myth, the legend, uh, virtual farmer back with me. Alex? Uh, Hello, I doing? am back. Oh, not bad, so, thank you. When you um. saw this moment right here and Linder started dumping grain... Was your reaction the same of, as mine? Because Maddie was talking as it was going on, and I didn't want to interrupt him. And I'm just sitting there like, are they really going to do this right now? And there we see the jump through the bridge that they were talking about. But what was your thought process like seeing that Linder were going to do the Linder load-up strategy without Transport Company in play? This is the first time we've seen this I was since, what, like... Seventh or sixth or seventh tournament of last season. It's been over a year well, since we've seen this. Having said that, I have a feeling Lindner have done it this year in one or two tournaments. They've they've tried it on. They've seen if they could get away with it, and it's never quite worked for them this season without Transport Company. So they had, it's it's not the first time this season they've done it. Um, it's the most successful they've been with it this season. Uh. Really, I but must it, have missed yeah, the I mean, moments you, when they did it. I don't remember. I, I, oh, it was it was, it was much earlier in the season. There was there was just a couple of times where they they did it, and they didn't do it to this extent either. They they only did it with like fourteen, fifteen bales and tried to get. They didn't go for the bale possible, uh, or impossible bale. Sorry. So, uh, yeah, I, I was very surprised to see them do it because it's it not paid off for them at all this year. And, uh, and it, it came so close. And you kind of get the feeling that they've been working on it. But it is the hardest thing to pull off. Um, because but as you they are go further you, into the tournament, you expect them to not use it. it I do it. Oh, yeah. Like, and because, because I mean, the, when they unveiled it last season, it worked well. And then they went up against Trelleborg in the final in that same tournament. Yeah. 
and Trelleborg sat there and knew exactly how to counter it and were not fooled by it. So, yeah, you can't expect them, especially without Transport Company, to, to be able to pull it off. Well, the, the, the biggest problem with it is you telegraph exactly what you're going to do to your opponents. Because right. if you don't deliver any grain, then, then it's obvious that you're going for as much of those multipliers as you can. Uh, so, yeah, there's... there's it, it's it's not a tactic that works unless you can hide that you're doing it, and if you can hide that you're doing yeah, which it, is you hard can to still do, deliver right? grain and everything. Then yeah. So, Felden is saying but he thinks did... ironically they tried it against the same opponent before, which very well may be the case. The thing that yeah, I, but I you have might to say be about right, it Felden. is that they didn't win the first round, and like as I was explaining it to Copter, who had never seen it really before, wasn't used to what was about to happen, it's a very high-risk strategy, and it didn't pay off for them. Mm -hmm. A little bit of more timing to go their way, and it could have, though. But even though they lost that first round, I almost feel like it was a disruption in its own way because they forced Deaka to think about it, and Deaka in that first round were having to play against Lidner's strategy instead of playing their own. And yeah. it didn't work out in that first round. But then in the second round, you saw right away Deak could come and ban both telehandlers. Lindner weren't bothered by that, as we see now the celebration that they were talking about, that they had uh, planned for the fans that they showed off. So, yeah, in a way, like, they didn't win the first round, but I think it threw Anfeld off for the next two rounds because then all of a sudden they're thinking in the ban phase, like, okay, we're getting rid of the telehandlers. But then in the third round, they were back in again. And it just, I think, threw them off a little bit. So I, I know you love your disruptions. I think it was a disruption in its own way. As we have a look at the bracket I, I now, agree. Trelleborg against Bednar is going to be our next game coming up. We're in uh, game 3A there. So this is the top of the bracket. This is the uh, winner's bracket. And then we have Astragon against My Insanity. One of those teams will be the first to drop out of the World Championships this weekend. The other will move on and face the loser of this one. So Alex Tre Trelleborg against Bednar now is coming up. Uh, Bednar upset my insanity earlier. Do you think they can do it against Trelleborg? Uh, Bednar playing a very strong game against my insanity, creating lots of bails, scoring po lots of points, winning despite being uh, at a 2.2 uh, to 1.8 uh, deficit wow. in the multiplier in one game, which, as I said, only one team has done so far, and that is the board. Looking out right now. Back onto the stage, come Trollable. So it's <laughs> it is a, a a case of Bednar are very much playing a Trelleborg strategy. They're they're very much doing the press as many bales as we can and score points from it um, rather than doing what everybody else seems to have been doing most of the day and, and going for a grain uh, strategy and trying to get that multiplier. Um, I think going up straight against Trelleborg, Bednar, who are now approaching onto the stage, um, they have a, a, a chance of beating uh, Trelleborg. They have a chance of doing a, a, an upset here. Um, it it's not always wise though to play Trelleborg at their own strategy. Uh, the teams that have beaten Trelleborg, most notably New Holland, have beaten them because they've disrupted Trelleborg strategy. So because right. um, nobody plays Trelleborg strategy better than Trelleborg does. Of course, I mean um, they're the number one team in the standings for a reason. They've only not won a single tournament this season, which is very impressive. They're even stronger in, in their dominance this season. Um, and we've got uh, the lineup, J.K., Wuller, and Beatmaster are the three in for Trelleborg. I'm sure that we'll see Martin and potentially Paul uh, at some point this weekend as well. Is this the same three that played earlier? Alex, do you remember? Uh, yes, I believe this is the... Yeah, Beatmaster, uh, JK, and, and we were, were played earlier. So, yes, this is the same lineup. 
So we've got uh, Chasse out there for uh, Bednar, uh, Giants partner. And Bednar, the team from the Czech Republic, up against Trelleborg here. Uh, they're posing for the camera, it looks like there. Laughing and having a good time, but it's about to be all business from these two teams now. Here we go. Okay, so uh, one of these teams uh, will be moving on with out a loss into uh, a really good position basically remember you can't afford to lose one match this weekend but basically this is going to be the winner of this game is first in group a and then they get to kind of sit back and wait for tomorrow um, the loser of this one drops into game five which will be played tomorrow but their backs will be uh, up against the wall, of course, because you'll have to play for the right to carry on for the chance to finish second in Group A into the semifinals. So there is, uh, because as we go on further into this day, and of course tomorrow, Alex, it becomes more and more uh, pressure and more at stake. Absolutely. It, it, it gets harder and harder the, the further into this, uh, this you go. Um, whittling it down from eight teams today to four tomorrow going into that quarterfinal and uh, oh no into that semi-final um, it's uh, yeah it's gonna be pretty big right yeah there's Let's a lot at stake I mean it curious. we're talking about you know of course um, prize money at stake quite a bit of it this weekend um, being that it is the season final uh, as you continue to go on your prize money is going to go up pretty significantly so uh, our winners of the season four championship will walk away with 20,000 euros in, in the prize pool second place runner up gets 8,000 the third and fourth place teams get 4,000 each and uh, fifth through eighth place get a thousand each so um, just making it here to today means that you're getting uh, some prize money for your team as both teams now are into the player pick phase and both team captains have gone with the runner perk and the john deere 6120 m we had both telehandlers banned and a couple of the larger tractors banned in the band phase um and a pretty similar setup here um trelleborg have gone with two stackers though and bednar opting just for one and we saw this backfire for Deaka Ehrenfeld in the last round. Having only one stacker, they were not able to bring enough of their bales in at the end, and it cost them in that second round. Yeah, getting getting that second stacker uh, tractor can be really useful, um, especially if you are if you're able to get uh, the right balers, and that's that's the only downside to it. You grab two of the big tractors and you can run the chrome baler um, as one of your balers and you're not restricted so much. And right. so we'll see who goes for, for what here. Willa is in the John Deere. I'm really intrigued to see what balers huh. I get. I think if Trollable gets two of the class bay uh, of the case balers, um, they're, they're going to be in a really good position here. Trelleborg actually grabbed two combines off the pod there. And so uh, it looks like Bednar have got, had to go for uh, the Massey combine. Um, so it's interesting, an interesting start already that they went for a couple of uh, combines, although they already had the ideal. So trying to throw Bednar off right away. And uh, JK... Having a little bit of trouble. I don't know if that was intentional. He got stuck behind his teammate there. JK will be headed to the bar now to deliver. This is going to be uh, about 130, depending on no, the No, he missed. And uh, he misses it. And oh, look at that I can't reaction. believe it. He's not happy. Oh, and now this he's on top love. of the bail. Oh no! There we go. A one nineteen and a oh, one eighteen. One that's, point that's difference. That's awful for for Trelleborg. Benar had to like that start, but now we've seen we've seen Trelleborg make mistakes in the first bail in the past. 
and we know how good they are Red, throughout Red the no rest of the round. So, Bednar need to score an extra five percent of a bail in order to even oh, think God. that. <laughs> 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 Uh, I think they might be able to do it, given their track record. As, um, <laughs> they just might be able might, to pull it off. It we that. will see. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, <laughs> oh. Okay, so um, we're I back think, to yeah. normal business now. <laughs> oh, man. Um... I uh, yeah I think I think then the two combines that um, the Trelleborg must have grabbed they certainly grabbed the John Deere, um, but the fact that they're not using a second ideal says to me that the ideal combine was not available on any of the pods, um, and that leaves uh, either the, the case uh, axle flow or the New Holland CR10. Um, that they must have grabbed as well and have just left up I think they grabbed the New Holland, those, yeah. Yeah, because both of those have a... Uh, well, actually, the New Holland has a slightly larger grain tank and is slightly faster, so I'm surprised that they are not... Uh, they've not gone for that. Uh, the only difference is that it has a slightly smaller head compared to the John Deere. So, um, yeah, I am slightly surprised they went for the John Deere over to New Holland if they grabbed the New Holland. Because there it is, in fact. Yeah, so they've left the New Holland for some reason, which is a bit odd. Yeah, they've they've opted to uh, go with that, uh, with the John Deere instead. But we saw that in the last round, too. Um, so there might be something about it that that teams are preferring um maybe it's the, the slightly only faster difference, work speed right uh it has a, it's a one kilometer per hour faster work speed however its discharge rate is significantly faster uh it is it has a seven and a hundred and eighty liter per second discharge while you're operating it versus a 600 liter per second discharge for the uh for the new holland so you can empty the John Deere quicker, which quite often can be a, a great help, especially if you're emptying as you're going along. It means that that, that John Deere, you can... Um... No, actually, I take it back. Yeah, yeah, I was John like, to correct you, that's the Massey that's 780. That's the Massey. Yeah. The John Deere is significantly worse than the New Holland in every way. <laughs> Other than work speed. So, yeah, I don't know why right. they've gone for the, the John Deere. No, in fact, work speed I, uh, is worse as well. Yeah, I, I, I tend to uh, kind of think that uh, I, I'm not too worried about Trelleborg here. I, I do question, yeah. you know, looking at the stats, why you would go for that one over another, but I feel like they have a reason. Um, they always seem to, don't they? Uh, and uh, my, my, now my, we're into... I, I think the main reason might be because of it just its position if it was positioned in a place where they could very easily and very quickly get into the prop and get that first bail that would be the reason for it. otherwise you've got to drive the new holland all the way over or if they got the new holland right. after they got the, the john deere you know the john Deere's already in there it's already creating straw it's you, you wouldn't go and switch over like that because of that so right it's actually interesting as well i remember when i was at uh, farmcon and i was talking to the guys from trelleborg and this was before they set the 151st bail record and jk who you see now was telling me that it had to be like a perfect storm of the right combine spawning in the right place for that 150 to be possible so it's off we don't often think about like where things spawn being a factor in that first bail, but it does have a huge impact on, you know, how big of a score you're able to achieve. It's got to be the right time and the right place. And then, of course, you still have to execute it on the back end as well and make sure that you're swinging it in properly without any mistakes. Yeah. 
and then and yeah i think i think and we've seen and we've seen that a lot actually position of combines quite often and and in fact position of balers as well because uh, as you said it's not just the position of the combine if you've got the baler in the right place as well you can connect up to the baler be right behind the combine and go through and you can get that 150 point bail right so it, it, it really is everything lining up and if you're if you're in there and you're already harvesting with a combine you you don't stop you don't go and waste those moments to switch combines you go with what you've got because the advantage you get from switching is is never going to outweigh the advantage from just continuing on Vintel is stuck and can't jump up here pressing pressing. there you go both drops so far, the 12th minute and 8th minute, have spawned at the barn area there. Vintel having a tough time trying to jump out of the moat. There was actually, as well, going back to our uh, previous topic about the spawn points and such, there was actually a patch a couple of months ago to the FSL client as well. It used to be that when you reserved a harvester, that it would spawn on the uh, bright side of the small field. And now when you when you reserve it, it instead, as Wooler, is he going to make it? Just in time. Oh, just. That could have been uh, bad. But yet, yeah, the, the combine now spawns next to the baler, where it spawns, on the big field near the silo. Um, so a little bit of a switch up there. So if you want to get a high first bale score, it has to come down to a combine on the pod. You can't rely on the one you're reserving anymore. And then doing a first bail that way, that makes that also much more disruptive. You end up with uh, all of that causing, uh, meaning that if you've got a perfectly positioned combine and bailer to get that 150 first bail, your opponents don't because you've chosen them off the pods and, uh, and, and they right. then don't have that perfect position. Right, it makes it makes that rush at the beginning even more important as Beatmaster oh! has gone flying and man, Trelleborg <laughs> he's, he's waving there. A little a little cheeky wave to the people. Uh, at least he's laughing about it. Um Trelleborg though already making you know, some uncharacteristic mistakes, but remember as well, we've seen some other teams struggle and some questions about like you know, they're not as comfortable here. At, at this tournament they're not at their home setups like they've been all season they've got uh, to use the equipment in front of them the space is different there's more distractions around them so you, you're going to expect uh that teams will you know have a moment or two where things like that can happen uh good news for Trelleborg is right now they're ahead by 21 points so uh, they've nearly made up that they they have actually made up that uh, that little five percent difference or whatever that they whatever it was you said earlier. Uh, Bednar now though bringing some bales in, and we've this is crunch time now under five minutes. Trelleborg has fourteen outstanding bales. Bednar have eleven outstanding now. It's a one point game where. So we're back to that one point gap. They're bringing in three more bales off the field. And Trelleborg, a little bit behind at the moment, but uh, as always, they have a massive number of bales. Look at that, 18 bales already uh, to, uh, to eight that um that bednar have uh, that will close that current gap in no time and i think at this point bednar in a little bit of trouble uh trelleborg press bales like maniacs at this stage and, uh, <laughs> and, and bednar needs to at least match that uh lord, lord baylor, baylor two for two bales, bales. Both teams. i'm not i'm not sure that Lord Baylor is all that worth it. Like, because all it does is score two bales you've already pressed. Bale points is more effective because it's bonus points off of something you've not done already. Beatmaster is going to go for it, probably more so to keep Bednar from getting it, 
more than like really wanting it for Trelleborg. But like now he's wasted time that he could have been pressing even more bales and bringing them in uh, to go score to right away. So Trelleborg in the lead again uh, now, and it is extending even further, 459 to 418. And right now, unless there's a mistake, it looks hard, even though the score isn't that big of a difference, it looks difficult for Bednar to be able to get back in this. And remember as well, even if Bednar were able to go ahead in the bail count, they can only bring in bales on the back of their bailers on two of their tractors. They can bring in three on the front of the John Deere, but they only have the one stacker. So every time the stacker goes out on the field, that's time wasted that they could be stacking bales onto the belt. Considering where Beastmaster, uh, Beatmaster was, uh, I think that, that getting Lord Baylor there was worth it because he was right at the edge of the field. He had a short distance to run, grab the bales and get them back. That's opposed to either Wooler having to go out and grab those two bales, drive all the way into the field and all the way back, or him having to take them all the way in on the baler and uh, and drive all the way back out to get two more. So from a, a time thing, I think it's actually time saving. For but how do you know two which two it's going to score as well? It could very well just it do, it score doesn't two matter that you've which... already brought in. Wait, they, uh, as long as it doesn't score two that are sitting there in front of the uh, in front of the barn, then yes. But then that that I would say is a risk that's probably worth taking. Right. Depending on how many you have sitting outside the barn. Trelleborg briefly there was only ahead by one point. It's it's extended now, with a minute and a half to go. Uh, it's pretty darn close. But going bail for bail right now, Bednar are just going to run out of points. It's going to take one of these bales dropping off of the belt. In fact, maybe a couple dropping off of the belt for Trelleborg in the crucial moments. But uh, that would be very surprising if we were to see that. And Bednar then also having to go and disrupt a potential counter for Trelleborg. So a nice little bit of disruption in a way. Bednar having to waste... 10 points by putting one into the bottom to stop the combo from from happening and it does look like with 50 seconds to go now Trelleborg pulling further ahead and it's going to be I, I don't see really an avenue for Bednar to get into this and in fact they have three extra bales but they only have four at the barn right now and this is the problem with only having one stacker your your balers are having to go back out there and press them on the back you can't bring any that fall onto the ground in now because the stacker can't leave the barn area. And it's it's amazing. I've I've been watching the bale counts, and they've been evening up every so often. But it's not been because uh, Bednar's been delivering bales into the top. It's been because uh, Trelleborg have been pressing more bales, which is incredible. Oh, there for Look a second that. they were behind only by one. Ooh. I mean... That was closer than yeah, I expected. Yeah, like, if, if those had not yeah, been... Put, they're giving like, them a thumbs up as well. Like, Trelleborg, I think, that was were close. semi-comfortable winners there. Like, And, in fact, it got a lot closer yeah. than even I expected, and I think that's the reaction that Trelleborg are having. There, for just a moment, with only two seconds left, they were only ahead by one point, Trelleborg. And then we those last couple did, of bales on the belt went in. We did not see that in any tournament, uh, any game in the last tournament for Trelleborg. Trelleborg were 10 bales ahead of every team at last tournament. Bednar got within a bale of Trelleborg there. That is, that is Bednar coming along and an absolutely playing Trelleborg at their own game and almost outplaying Trelleborg at their own game. We we have not seen that. And that is such a good play from 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 Bednar there. Really strong. Yeah, Bednar have to be and they, I mean Bednar played a good round against My Insanity as well who, you know, coming in were the third seed. Now My Insanity are in the second chance bracket and up against it. And Bednar have to be, you know, pretty confident that they were able to sweep my insanity and now coming into this one they they really put 
Trelleborg kind of on the brink there. But again, Alex, I, I think Bednar could have won that round if they had two stackers. Like, I'm, I yeah. really think that that's proving to be crucial because they weren't able to bring all of their bales in. I didn't catch how many were undelivered in the end, but with only that one stacker, especially when you get under two minutes, he can't go back out into the field and bring more in. He has no. to be stacking them onto the belt. So then all of a sudden you're talking about two bailers that have to go back and forth, and you can't, you can't leave bales on the ground. You have to go press. So you spend time to press a couple, and then you stop the baler and you bring it back in, and then you, you deliver them that way. So you, it's taking extra time to press them and then bring them back in. And so without that extra stacker, I think it's going to be tough, really, and as these matches are really close, to be able to pull it off late in a round. If you're using uh, only one stacker, you need to be scoring your bales earlier in a round because when the time gets short, it's a lot tougher to all of a sudden score a lot at the end. And we often see it come down to the last couple of minutes in these really close fought contests. You got to be ready to score your points uh, in these close games, or you're not going to come out on top more often than not, in my opinion. Yeah, you need to. I, I, I think you're right. Getting that, they've been able to bring in one extra bale every time they brought in a bale. They would have right. scored multiple more than Trelleborg and Wayne. Right. Um, and even using right. a smaller baler that they'd have had to have done with another stacker, you know, that's bringing four bales in instead of three. If you can do it with the case baler and bring in five bales every time instead of three, that is a big advantage. Right. And that makes a big difference. So, yeah, I think you're right. right. I think if, if they're looking to get just that little bit more, they they want to be grabbing a second, uh, a second stacker at this point. Yeah, I mean, I, it's not that you can't win with a different strategy. I just think that against certain teams, as you get deeper into the tournament, we're talking about the, the best eight teams of the season that have made it here today. They're all still alive at this point. We've not had anyone yet eliminated because we haven't had any matchups shown on the broadcast yet today from the, from that second chance bracket. So you've got to maximize every moment because the competition is so close. And I mean, Bednar have to be happy with how they performed, but they very well could have won that. And I think the, the reaction of Trelleborg showed that as well. Yeah. Uh, as we see both telehandlers being banned. I mean, Bednar coming in, they do have one runner up finish this season. So they lost to Trelleborg in one of the finals this season. And they coming in, they were sixth place. Uh, and they were at one point right around third place and fourth place. And they, they kind of started to drop off as the season continued to go on. Um, but now they're kind of showing, you know, they're returning to form, basically, and showing, you know, what they were really performing at earlier on in the season. So what do they do here? Do they do, do they employ the same strategy or do they try to switch it up? Um, they've got the John Deere, both teams going with that and the runner perk. Will they elect this time to go for a second stacker or will they stick to the two big tractors? If, if I was, if I was Bednar, I think the only thing I would change is add that, that second stacker the the massey ferguson is there they're not going to grab though. it it's got plenty of power and they're not going to they're not I mean, doing they came, it. they came within one bail of uh of beating or of at least equalizing with trelleborg on bales delivered that is no well, mean if feat this season yeah and if they're doing right. that with two big tractors they can easily deliver more bales than trelleborg uh with a stacker and that's the thing. That's that's what's going to be really interesting in this second game. Can they do? I the think same they can still do it here and match Trelleborg. They can still do it here, but they need to bring the bales in earlier. They need to find a way. They yeah. need to find some time to bring at least four to eight bales in early, even if they're not going to score them right away. If they can find the time and not waste time elsewhere, 
and get those bales in so that they're not wasting time later in the round, then they very well could pull it off. We're 15 minutes away from finding out if uh, Trelleborg will be our first team into tomorrow's semifinals Ooh. or if Bednar will force a third game of the best of three here. Bednar in a better position for first bail. They're slightly further along and their bailer has got in there first. That is uh, pretty good start for, for Bednar. Nope, I take it back. It was the other way around. Trelleborg are in the better position. <laughs> JK oh, this time executes it perfectly. Oh man, All right. no, Trelle okay. Trelleborg, better position for first bail. Absolutely perfectly executed. Uh, and uh, I love those screens yeah. under the at each uh, station there for the teams. I love that. Um, I hope that I can make one of these LAN events next season because I've been there. I got to see yeah. the show match at FarmCon, which was really cool, but there wasn't really in it anything at stake except, you know, it was for fun. I mean, it, to tell you how much there was at stake for the teams, Astragon let me play on their team, okay? So that tells you... <laughs> How, that tells you how important that match was to them. Well, uh, I'd, 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 I'd really like to see team. the studio because the thing is, I heard so many things about the studio and how wonderful it was before uh, before the world went to hell. And um, and, and and right, you've and never Swords been to uh, you've you know, been to a LAN event before, but I, never at the studio. Yeah, and they're in the studio. That's, I've, I, I've, I've seen I've the studio. I streamed from there. the old studio. I streamed the the Lord. Um, so yeah, I uh, I haven't I haven't yet seen the studio, so um, I, uh, I I'm looking I've forward to that it, at some point. But not in action. I've been in it. I've seen it. I've not seen it, you know, in its full glory during a production. So yeah, hopefully uh, we can get out there one day soon. Who knows what uh, next season will look like. I'm just glad that we've been also able this season to figure out, you know, how to get the English casters on camera. And I think it's working mm -hmm. rather nicely. Um, we've got vMix running now uh, in both the U.S. office and uh, the German office, which is really nice. And, you know, we talk about it all the time. I said it earlier with Copter, the FSL is still really young in the terms of the world of eSports. So... Who knows what it'll look like as the years continue to go by. And a long-term goal, of course, we would love to see it grow and become more than just uh, what it is now as far as teams and and where the circuits take place. And Who knows what the future holds, that's for sure. Looks like Trelleborg are first to drop their grain at the 11 and a half minute mark. That will give them an advantage but I think it'll be short-lived because Bednar are heading up there now. There we go. Bednar delivering their grain. And this should even things back up. Both teams with a full grain cut. Uh, Will are heading towards probably speed limit, I think. Yes. With two seconds, he has grabbed it. That means Bednar are not going to get the power up from the 12 minute mark. That will cost them. Beatmaster now filling up that Fent Ideal, which is a huge 16,000 litre capacity, I think, which is 2,000 more. It might actually be 17,000 litres. Just show you. Yeah, 17,100 litres on that, that uh, ideal. Uh, that is uh, just under 3,000 litres more than uh, the next biggest one, which is the New Holland, which is why I was asking the question earlier why uh, the New Holland wasn't being used. But even Bednar seem to have gone for uh, the John Deere over the New Holland. Yeah, a lot of teams opting for that John Deere today as their second. In fact, in the last round, 
um, Lindner had reserved an ideal and grabbed the ideal off of a pod and they left the ideal just sitting up on the hill and instead opted to use the John Deere and an ideal. I mean, remember, like, if you, um, if you have two ideals, you'll collect more grain than you can put into the grain cart. So I think that might be part of the factor there. I mean, it's kind of, it's nice to have those, um, but you can only take so much grain in the cart before you have to, you know, leave some in the harvesters anyways. It's even, I think, too much for combining the ideal and the John Deere, to be honest. So um, we've also not really seen, we've seen it uh, in the last round, the, the, the grain chain where they bring the harvesters in and park them up at the grain cart for the last push of grain. But we're not seeing teams do that as much as uh, JK is on foot and headed for something. And he is going for his tractor that he left up on the hill earlier on. And should I say cutting through, trying to give a clear path, I think, up to the end there. Uh, maybe to, yeah, turn himself around and then head back so that he can go and drop off the grain in a moment. With Hyper doing the same, both te both uh, harvesters working their way up to this top end of the field so that they have to travel the least amount of distance at the eight minute mark to actually uh, position that. And we've got Bail Multiplier again, along with Crazy Tool. Uh, now, if somebody who is See, that's the thing. There's a bailer heading down there to pick up a possible crazy tool. Which you kind of don't want. Nice use of the roof there by uh, Bednar. Beatmaster now emptying the grain because there is no grain multiplier. So trying to get all of the harvesters filling into this so that he can then get that. And Ventil has gone for the bale multiplier instead of Crazy Tool. Which makes sense because there's, he's not out there baling. Uh, but can they get a bale into the top? Yeah, Trelleborg didn't get anything there, so they need to maximize this opportunity and get some bales in. We were talking about it earlier, like before this round started. If they can find a way to get bales in early without having that second stacker, maybe this round will go in their favor. They definitely need to get bales in now because with the bale multiplier, they're going to get a significant amount of points. And here come a couple on the front now from Hyper from Bednar. And uh, meanwhile, both teams are delivering grain. Great. So depending on where the regular multiplier ends up, it's gonna be against oh. them. But the bale multiplier will be adding extra points and 27 points per bale. And he's stacking up another one that should get in as well. So three bales, three bales at 27 in points. And, and it's, fact, gonna it's gonna it be out. higher. So it's going to yeah, be now go. 30, 30 points. points. So, I mean, that they have just really good scored 84 points right there. And that is a huge moment for Bednar and a huge missed opportunity for Trelleborg. And that, and that, is, that is the advantage of first bail gone. Just like that. Great and play there up. from Bednar. Wow. I mean, definitely what they needed. It, it, they could have done with even more, obviously. But look, now Hyper's bringing some in now. And this is what they need to do. Like, for now, he can afford to go out into the field and get any they've left on the ground. But he's only got about three more minutes where he can do that. So they need to bring as many in right now as they can. And because the multiplier is even, they can go ahead and start scoring them. And that is flawless stacking there 
by Bednar as well. I mean, right down the middle with all three. And Trelleborg now, though, have gone into the lead. So they've been scoring bales, meanwhile, as well. I mean, it now, could come down to the super now, drop, but this one is looking even closer. Now, the worrying thing the for Bednar is that Trelleborg are running two case balers. That is, that is Ooh, not yeah. good for them. It's interesting that uh, teams haven't been running under pressure as much this weekend as well. There's no, been a lot of I'm, teams opting to leave it out. I said, I'm, the, the only reason I can see for that is the amount of points it costs. Oh, beautiful toss there by Hunter. Nice save. And well, under Lord pressure only, counts, only costs one point. Only costs one uh, point oh, now, so... Oh, hang on. My stat sheet may be out of date. Because in mine, it's just <laughs> two points. Yeah, it used to be two. It is now one, I believe, at the last uh, Okay, change. I am... In which case, I am surprised that they're not... They're, they're taking Archimedes over. Under Lord pressure. Baylor's been picked up by Bednar. That'll help them with delivering bales late in the round. It's already scored and a couple for them. they're 100 points ahead. Oh, and it's, but it's that combo. Yes, a bail tastic for Bednar. A bail tastic. Oh, and that for one Bednar. fell off. Just bad execution there by Trelleborg. They had it, and they had a bail fall off, and it messed up the whole thing. And uh, Bednar, with three minutes to go, may like look at that that difference in the bail count. And we know Trelleborg are good at getting them in. They do have two stackers as well. But this is exactly what we were saying Bednar needed to do. They needed to score a lot more bales earlier on. Because now, Hyper, presumably, this is his last time going out into the field. He's going to have to stick around the barn here soon and make sure he's stacking. But it is a nice little lead for them now. So it could come down to who gets all of their bales delivered now. This, it, this has been, uh, whatever way this, this game goes... This has been a very impressive start to these finals for Bednar. It really has. 100%, I agree. They're, they're, their game is so strong right now. And Hyper now loading up these bales onto the uh, onto the conveyor. While Wooler is... is uncharacteristically unstable as he turns able to recover Actually, in the end yes but but just sort of there's there's that little bit of uh you can see that little bit of stress getting into oh there. no and Shose has oh this no. is not what you need oh no well that could be that could be it now for That's bednar they could not afford a mistake because that is now so You've now yeah, he always hit the, the advertising signs. board on the way in. The the drive into the moat was intentional in case you're new to the FSL. That is the quickest way out with bottleneck in play to get back out to the field. But clipping the advertising board was not intentional. And now this Baylor could be lost. And even if he is able to recover, he may not be able to get out and press a couple more bales and bring them back in. And if that ends up being no, the difference, yeah, this is, this is going from bad to worse. It is not, that is not what Bednar needed. Disastrous. They were just moving s so smoothly until that moment. And now they're and, behind by five points. Trelleborg oh, into man, the lead. Bednar. Baylor down at this point. That is horrible. Yeah, that, I mean, they're back into the lead now, Bednar, but you're talking about now, like, not being, a, they're only, they can bring in two at a time. And they yeah. have, still three out there somewhere that they can't bring in so if bednar end up losing this again it's going to be because they've not been able to bring enough bales in but also because they ended up in the moat with one of their balers 20, and it uh, there's seconds. three on the belt now oh. but now trelleborg are going to match there's it only and three that's on the it. belt for trelleborg that's last but that's all seconds, they need last two bales no that's, that's more than enough that's it uh, Trelleborg have done it. And, uh... <laughs> phew, I, they <laughs> didn't... I don't think they realized. The last moment. 
They knew oh. that was their last bails, but they didn't know what had happened to Bednar, and I think they expected to lose. No. And if Bednar, if that, if that bailer had not ended up flipping over, they would have needed to only bring one more, two more in, and they would have been coming out on top, and we would have been going to the third of the best of three. So, oh, man, that was such, like, both of those rounds were really good for yeah. Bednar, and Look I that. think... They, one they would have won it. Bails. One bailer's worth they of bails is all they needed. That would have done it. Yeah, well, no, yeah. 40 points would have Six, still left points. them... Uh, but but that, yeah, that, three that bailer bails, right. three bails. Okay. So that's 60 points worth of bails missed out on because that bailer got stuck in there. And that's enough right. to win that, that match. Well, wow. well, Bednar that is, that is should not be. Bednar should be uh, pretty um, confident though with how they played Trelleborg there. They've had every right to force the third round, and they're not done yet. They have dropped into the losers bracket. They will still have a chance to move on uh, into the semifinals, depending on how they do down there. And uh, yeah, they should not, you know, really. Uh, be down on themselves right now. They played a really yeah. strong game against my insanity earlier and two pretty good rounds against Trelleborg, but you can't make those kind of crucial errors in, in the clutch uh, when it matters the most uh, against Trelleborg, especially. Against Trelleborg, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's, oh, that was, I, I, as I said, uh, just before that happened, in fact, so Caster's curse kicking in. Uh, this is the best I've seen. Uh, so it's your fault. Uh, right, we'll be back in three minutes. We will see you then.
All right, Kermit and Alex back with you. We're going to have another interview. Uh, this time it is going to be uh, with the captain of uh, Trelleborg, Wooler. Congratulations. How was it? It was fine, but could have gone better for us. Bednar's uh, on top at the moment and did really well. Well done. First match you had some problems. What happened? Uh, Steven asked him. Hey, we don't think there was really too many problems. Won't be any problems. Uh, congratulations on winning your group. Were you nervous or was there proper communication? Or no problems. Okay, asking if there's problems with communication. So no, not problems with communication. It's just some some small problems that kind of added up. But we still made it and pulled it out in the end. And we're, uh, But you're prepared for tomorrow? Mentally and we're going to analyze the replay and prepare perfectly for tomorrow, basically. You've had a great season and a great start in the championship. Yeah, our plan went well today. So what do you have to say to the other teams? Well, they should try to beat us. And we'll we'll see how it uh, turns out. They've done a good job, and we'll see tomorrow if they can if they can find a weakness in us and see how that goes. So Trelleborg, uh, rightfully so, I think, still confident uh, as the the weekend is progressing. They're the first team into the semifinals tomorrow, confirmed by winning t the first two matches in their group. And we're going to have a look at the replays now. This is where JK messed up the drive by bailing and was able to eventually get it in. And Kermit here with Alex back again with you guys. Alex, we did see uh, a little bit of a shaky start for Trelleborg. And I think really um, Bednar surprised them in a way and took them to the brink a bit. Um, and you see here um that nearly a mistake made there that ended up being made in the second round but i think bednar played two really good rounds it's just they got to clean up the mistakes yeah I, I would agree with that i think there are a few little mistakes that bednar are making just to, that will just um they need to tighten up um <clears throat> i agree with you that I, I i think they need to have that second stacker um having having Bales come in on front forks as well as uh, with a bailer um, can make all the difference. And, Either a second uh, stacker and, and or not back. crashing your bailer into the moat. <laughs> well, that too. I mean, the, I mean that's the that's the really telling thing. Both games, they had little mistakes that meant they they either delivered one less bail than uh, Trelleborg in the first game, which would almost have won it. I think they needed two bails to win in that first game. Uh, so two bales they were missing in the first game and three bales they were missing in the second. Both of them, I think that they could have uh, easily got those extra bales. They are producing as many, if not more, bales than Trelleborg, which no other team has done this season. Yeah, and so, there was the yeah, moment Bednar, they got the bale -tastic. Actually, they did. And I, I, think they, I think they are in... With an, a, a real shout of winning this tournament this weekend, uh, if if they yeah, can get the bales in, if they if they can sort these little errors out, absolutely. Yeah, and of course they've they've dropped into the second chance bracket, and um, they will have to uh, wait until tomorrow, really, to know their fate, whether they're going to be second in Group A or not. Those uh, fifth matches in each group are taking place tomorrow. Um, those will be how we start tomorrow's broadcast off. So now Bednar, unfortunately, has to sit and wait and think about it a little bit. That's good in a way because now they can go away and presumably practice, analyze the replays, see what they can do better, maybe ways they can slightly change their strategy. But you're right, they have played well. And in that second round, they went from picking up that Bale-tastic to then crashing into the moat. As we see it there, Trelleborg, the first team to confirm their entry into the semifinal. 
And Bednar now will await the winner of Astragon and My Insanity in the second chance bracket. That matchup will take place today. And then the winner of that one will move on to face Bednar tomorrow for one of the final spots in the semifinals. And we're about to have Astragon and My Insanity come out here in just a moment. So this will be now, Alex, uh, our first matchup where elimination is at stake. The loser of this matchup will be going out and will not be moving on to tomorrow's action. So my insanity earlier, um, getting swept by Bednar. And I would say that, you know, we've seen my insanity be a very strong team this season. They've not been able to get over that precipice and, and beat the top two teams that finished above them in the standings, always seeming to go out to the likes of uh, Trelleborg and New Holland. There, I got it right on the first attempt. Um, but getting swept by Benner earlier, I, do you think that was necessarily like uh, my insanity not bringing their A game or Bednar bringing their A game? What do you think that was earlier? And who do you I, think does my insanity bounce on... <clears throat> back and show themselves here? Based on Bednar's uh, performance against Trelleborg uh, just now, I think it was probably uh, uh, Bednar. Uh, but here we okay. come with Astrogon walking onto stage, taking uh, place on the blue side for the first time this weekend. Uh, they played uh, red for their decider match yesterday. Uh, against Cortiva, and they were they were red for their first match today, where they lost to Trelleborg. So uh, now they're going to be playing to uh, to stay in this tournament and possibly face face Bednar first thing tomorrow. This would be a huge upset if uh, Astragon were able to advance over Mind Sanity here, because we of course were live uh, just briefly yesterday with the eighth place decision match where Astragon were able to move on over Cortiva. We had to settle that before we could get to this action today, and here comes my insanity now. But my insanity, third in the standings, Astragon, the eighth place, that final seed to make it in, and they were, of course, they, they made it here, which is the most important thing, but they had to face Trelleborg this morning. They, they lost in two straight games, and now they've gone from losing to the first place team to now facing uh probably they didn't expect to face my insanity here and now they're facing the third place team with elimination at stake so um how do you think uh astragon what do they have to do to cause the first real big upset of the weekend astragon actually had a fairly good game against Trelleborg. I mean, it wasn't uh, an utter defeat uh, and, and didn't cause uh, and, and and wasn't, you know, a hammering that they got from Trelleborg. So I think they, they have a good chance here of beating my insanity. They have a, the, the, you know, that, that ability is there. Um, my insanity, I think, do need to um, up their game a little bit. Um, I, I, it was a bit of a surprise. While while it was a close match between them and Bednar, uh, I I do think that that it was uh, a, a lot of Bednar being really good, but also some little mistakes from my insanity. So uh, I'm looking for them to have a bit of a tighter game than they had uh, when they lost to Bednar earlier. Yep, I mean it's it's really this is. This is not uh, maybe the most anticipated matchup. Of course, we didn't know even that these two teams would face off against each other coming in because this is now like uh, really our first matchup into the uh, losers bracket that we're going to see. But there is a lot at stake here. This is the uh, the the highest pressure match we've seen so far. So it could come down to which team handles that pressure better because now you're looking at uh, lose and your weekend is done. You're not going to advance the amount of prize money you get. You won't have a chance to win the Season 4 World Championship. And for the first time, uh, we're into that, you know, double elimination bracket. And I'm interested to see, like, we just saw Bednar kind of crack under the pressure. They had a chance to force that third round against Trelleborg and, and had a mistake crashing into the moat and having their Baylor unrecoverable. 
So if if a team makes that kind of mistake here now when it matters most, uh, it could really be costly. You can't afford those types of moments. And of course, both these teams, because they've they've lost one match, they uh, they they have the hardest route now to make it into the finals. They've got to win this match, uh, and then they've got to win the match against Bednar uh, tomorrow in order to to uh, right. to actually advance to the the semi-finals so yeah this is this is absolutely the hardest way to get into the finals <laughs> right uh, overall. definitely the most pressure for sure trelleborg now are gonna kick their feet back a little bit and review some replays i'm sure they'll also have an eye on the rest of the matchups today um, so that they can potentially see you know who their competition is gonna be tomorrow and have an idea of how they've been playing so far um the only difference between the two teams are the Baylors that they reserved Astragon have gone with the Corona big pack and my insanity have gone with the case Baylor so far the player pick phase is exactly the same and now it looks like my insanity gonna go with the telehandler and Astragon meanwhile going with the John Deere so um, a little bit of a different setup there, and that telehandler in play, of course, means that the potential for some tosses into the top of the barn is in play. Uh, maybe some jumping of the moat without the uh, bridges down is in play. And Astragon yesterday, when they won against Cortiva, Bauer Matza was the one that uh, they interviewed as the captain of that game, and he said that they changed their strategy on Wednesday. So, just a couple oh, of days ago... It's a race ago, for the ideal. It's going they've to... They've changed the strategy. My insanity. My insanity Good, get but... the ideal and... Uh, oh, get and the, the Baylor. Uh, the oh, Holland my. Baylor. Good start for my insanity, Alex. Very good start. Pipping their opponents to uh, the point. And, uh, and they've got that, that case Baylor, of course, as well. Uh, this is going to be a fairly good first bail, especially seeing as Astragon are stuck right at the top, grabbing that bailer. That's uh, that's not a good start from them. Jan is heading towards the bridge and heading for this first bail. He's it's nearly fourteen minutes. This is going to be a good bail if he can do it, um, but he is going to take the safe way of doing it and back it in for a hundred and forty-two smart move. points. Especially Absolutely. given yeah. given where Astragon are, why risk giving Astragon a chance to catch that advantage? Just make sure it goes in. 142 is a very respectable first bail, especially given the fact that they knew, grabbing both of those things off of the pod vent, that Astragon were going to be significantly behind. So why risk it for a couple of extra points? And here comes Matza now. And he had a problem yesterday with the same tractor of getting it lined up properly. It looks like he's going to be just about okay here. But yeah, 107 to 142. Uh, what's your math, points. Alex? What's your percentage, points. though? Come on. <laughs> well, I know 35 uh, points. Is, 35 points is a bail in three quarters. So a thank 175 you, percent uh, catch up to do. I'm not great at math, but I could at least do the uh, addition and subtraction there to, to get to 35, so I'm <laughs> glad you were able to. I, it wasn't the number I needed. I wanted the percentile. <laughs> oh, I love yeah, it. One, one and three quarter bales they need to deliver above what uh, my insanity. You heard it and my insanity have two ideal combines. So, yeah, they are they're the grain game my insanity is really strong at the moment as well. So my insanity and Astragon and Trelleborg were the three teams that were at FarmCon for the show matches. So uh, just only a couple of players were there for my insanity. I believe it was these two you see on screen now, if I remember correctly. Um, it was, and in fact, one member of Astragon played with my insanity during the show matches. But it was cool to see these guys in person at FarmCon. Like, we're getting to see them on screen today, all the teams at the studio in Germany. I'm going to look there at my insanity. The, 
the focus on their faces at the moment. Uh, everything's at stake now. As we see bridges lowered and bail drops spawning right near the silo for our 12th minute drop. I'm, I'm not uh, sure either of those are worth the teams rushing out of their way for. Jan is near the silo already, though, so he could, on his way out, go ahead and grab one, but they're not really the most important. They do already have a bail pressed, so bail drop would at least be effective for them at the moment. It would not mean anything for Astragon at this time. Uh, and that's, no, that's that's the other team sitting just the other side of the river. And here goes. He is going to go for bail drop. Oh, he Why is not? going for it. Why not? You're on the way out. You've already got a bail pressed, and now you've got it at the barn, and you don't have to worry about bringing it in later. You never know. One bail could be the difference at the end. We've we've definitely seen that. We've seen it go recently to all the way down to the fourth tiebreaker, which is insane as well. Um, or the fifth tie was it the fourth tiebreaker or the fifth tiebreaker we had that game? I was yeah, it was it was fairly ridiculous what it went down. Was it the first bail score or was it the amount of grain? I think it was the first bail, wasn't it? The first bail, yeah. So the tiebreakers, obviously the score is the first deciding factor, but then the tiebreakers after the score, if it's even, if you're uh, wondering, it goes to bales put into the top of the barn. And if that's even, it goes to the total amount of bales delivered. And if that's even, then it goes to first bale. And if your first bale is even, which doesn't happen a lot, uh, then it goes to the amount of grain delivered. And then if that's even, it goes to uh, who got the first claim off of a pod. Imagine if it ever gets to that point, Alex. How insane yes. that would be. That would be, <laughs> yeah. That, that, I mean, <clears throat> the thing is that it would only... The, the only way you could get grain delivered to be identical is if you both emptied the same full uh, overloader. You know? Right. Uh, the same number of times. I can't. I can't see any other way. You know, with the variation in combines and things, to, to get to that. Um, which, as we right. no team just unloads the, the a full overload for a couple of times. Anyway. But uh, yeah, to have the same first bail. Um, that would be, imagine yeah, that even yeah i mean we've seen it happen before yeah. like teams like neck and neck but man you've got to be spot on and especially I, I feel like that would be even harder now with the change of where the like reserved combine spawns mm. because we've seen it it's now coming down to who wins the battle for the closest bailer and combine that they're going to be the ones as long as they don't mess up the delivery with the first bail advantage so it would be really hard i think even to get the uh, same first bail now at this point and, and invariably what you end up with is uh whoever does get that that, first, that best place combine and that best place bailer it blocks the other team getting it. so unless there are two bailers and combines within a good distance you, you tend to end up with uh, a team having to go out of their way then to replace whichever piece of kit they're missing. Silo, Silo closed, closed and, and crazy, crazy tool. tool. That's a Presumably, difficult choice. Yeah, Jan I think... is going to be wasting time. Yeah, you don't want to pick it up too early and then your opponent have it last longer, especially at this point. I feel like you want to go for silo closed here because if you were to pick up crazy yeah. tool and your opponent picks up silo closed it kind of defeats the purpose in fact uh matza has already gone for crazy tool or uh, silo closed rather and now my Ooh. insanity have answered in kind i hadn't realized that uh my insanity had started emptying the uh emptying their grain so they have a 2.6 multiplier that isn't gonna change for the next 83 seconds. And they have nine bales, so they need to get some of those in and score them. They've got 10 out there now, and the nice thing is is they have the telehandler, 
So PB can pick up three here if he has time to do so and get them in rather quickly. And you see off the screen there headed into the barn is one of his teammates. It is uh, Jan with the baler with a few bales on the back, that case baler coming in. I'm... And so this is a oh. huge moment. Could be six bales scored. This one, though, is on its side. It's going to be tricky. He's got to get this perfect. I, I think that actually well helps because it's, it's thinner. So it's easier to pick up. You're right. He just Very needs nicely to get done this and... on here because Major Mellon is sitting there waiting for this to end. Uh, but looks like lots of points could be scored by my 13 seconds is all that's left, though. The, the 10 seconds. It's not going to be scored at 26 points, I don't think. The belt is going too slow, no. and Major Mellon is ready to start flipping it back. But Gets a great, why is he waiting it for? It will speed he's, up. He's in the wrong. There we go. Yeah, it will speed up. It's going to be 24, maybe. Two, 20, I think 24. one went in at 25. One into the uh, bottom, too, it looked like, and now 22. 22. Whew. So, I mean, it's still a good moment for my insanity, but played well enough by Astragon that they are able to uh, limit the damage. And I think that... My Insanity forced Matza to go ahead and grab that silo closed when he did because they were delivering grain. It could have been worse if he hadn't been able to grab that and it got up to, say, 3.0. They would have been scoring a lot of bales with a lot of extra points. And now the uh, multiplier is actually in the favor of Astragon, and they're flipping even more grain back in now. Both teams delivering grain off our screen. And right now... It is a 2.4 to 1.6. The belt is moving slowly, but it looks like uh, they now both teams delivering grain again. Astragon just about out of grain, though, and they were able to score one with extra points. And it's actually going to end up being a 2.1 to 1.9 for my insanity and the rest of the way here. Astragon into the lead, 30 seconds away from the super drop. Oh. And for basically four extra points now he needs to put that middle difference. bail on first i think or three extra points is the difference yes. so extra points the rest of the way for my insanity they're gonna get 21 points uh and 19 and that's two i still can't do math <laughs> i was wondering how you got the three points i'll be honest because it's 8.30 a.m., I've been up for four hours and I haven't had enough coffee. That's my excuse. <laughs> Bottom boost has been picked up by my insanity, and so uh, that means they can get their 21 points per bale for the next 40 seconds for bales put into the bottom. So PB can just run in with the telehandler here and not have to worry about putting them on the belt. Can he do it? Can he get across here? How many seconds? 18 seconds left. To score points with this. Yep, he is going to score a good 42 points in with bottom boost. If he can grab another bale quickly, he can get one in. Five seconds. He's taking it slow, though. No, nope, he's not going to try it. It's gone. What's... <laughs> he very nearly did. Yeah, wasted opportunity, really. That, but that's the thing with bottom boosts is if your stacker's not at the belt, or at the barn, I mean, already, then you're not going to be able to really utilize it as effectively. And PB was, unfortunately, out in the field. And so, still, though, I find it hard to find a way now with a, a, a trailing by about 100 points for Astrogon to get back into this. The bail count is even. They're getting two less points per bale. And with two and a half to go, it's going to take a calamity by my insanity to oh, be able also, to flip this back in Astragon's favor. Also, Astragon Those uh, are wonky. have... Uh, ooh, Goodbye. One of their balers only carries two bales. They've got the John Deere baler, and that is going to be hampering them as well. My insanity can bring in six bales every time, while uh, Astragon can only bring in five.
yeah, my insanity looking pretty comfortable at the moment. Minute 50 to go. Anything really can happen, but PB just continuously stacking these bales up onto the belt. And as you said, there comes the case baler and bringing three in at a time on the back of it. So we were talking about how Bednar needed to have a second stacker to match Trelleborg, but both teams here have opted for only one stacker. And so the difference then comes down to what Baylor do you have? And my insanity reserved that case Baylor early on and Astragon went for the Corona that they reserved, which also will bring three in on the back. But then it comes down to which one do you get off the pod? And so when it's in this crucial moment, especially if you're trailing and you can't bring as many bales in, you're going to have a hard time getting back into the lead before it's all said and done. And you, you can definitely insulate yourself against getting a, a baler that only brings in two bales by having a, a second stack attractor that you can put on the front and bring four bales in instead. So right. it is. It is a slightly odd thing to me that the um, uh, that teams aren't going for a second stacking tractor. And BB going, BB for, going the for a toss. Oh, nicely done. You don't get style points uh, on the scoreboard, but you might win some viewers' hearts by doing those types of things. And now he's going to go for a telescopic. Uh, I don't know. You can't oh, really call it. Oh, he has toss. blocked. <laughs> there we go. Win goes to my insanity. Fist bumps all around still for Astragon, and uh, they now are one game away from being the first team eliminated. They do have a chance still to stay alive. But uh, the eighth place team here, Alex, could be our first team eliminated if they do not win this next round. Yep, they have. Oh, look at that! It's my insanity, give uh, delivering two more bales than their opponents as well. So uh, yeah, yeah. In that moment where they scored a bunch of extra points with the silo close coming into play, um, that gave them a nice little uh, significant lead. That was uh, part of the difference as well, and the first bale as well. Like uh, you know, it's just. All those little moments, they started disrupting them from the get-go by beating them to the Combine and the Baylor. You have to win at least one of those battles or you're going to be pretty far behind in the first bail number these days, no matter how you execute it, yeah. unless your opponent makes a massive mistake if they're ahead of you. Um, so for Astragon, they have to start focusing on that moment. Right away, they need to clean it up. We saw them actually yesterday in the decision match um, they had a couple of weak first bail performances, but in, in the deciding match, they had their strongest first bail. So now with their backs against the wall again, can they, can they, you know, repeat that? They have to win those battles at the pods to start with, or they're going to find it hard again. Do they go with the same strategy as well? Do both teams go with only one stacker or do they switch it up? It's going to be interesting to see what they decide to go with, because if you have something up your sleeve, and your Astragon right now, uh, now is probably the time to pull that ace out and use Ab it. Absolutely. Because if you don't, if I you don't, you might thing. be out and head home. You know. I'm gonna when we uh, when we go in, I'm gonna I'm gonna check my stat sheets again because I I want to see how powerful those stacker tractors are. Um, right. Because they, if they can. If they can run those those three bale balers, uh, then absolutely, I think that that they should be going with that. Um, because the most powerful yeah, one that is only two points is one hundred and seventy five horsepower. So uh, you could run and it's the two... John Deere. Yeah, so you I could run the John Deere or the, the case. The case is two hundred. So you probably could, but you would be, you know, sacrificing a bit of speed um, because you're going to be 25 for horsepower short. That, we do see teams run that case 
with uh, with those with those smaller tractors. Uh, the ones yeah. that are three points have more than enough horsepower, um, but you're going to sacrifice a little bit of speed and but power if you go with thing. one of the two people, point ones. People, people do take the Massey Ferguson and the Vulture. We see the Massey uh, 7726 picked all the time, and right. that Vulture T234. Uh, if both of those get banned here by Astragon, uh, then that is the reason that both teams are going for the high power tractors, because to to yeah there we go. Yeah, the mass so is out now. The reason for the reason for banning those tractors is that only leaves the JCB, which uh, teams have told us in the past is a little bit unstable and a little bit unwieldy. As the uh, is the only front loader tractor that will actually run the three bale balers right. like the case so that is why teams aren't picking a second front loader tractor when the Vultra and the massey get banned in the uh in the trelleborg match the the, the trelleborg versus bednar match i am surprised that bednar weren't picking the massey because trelleborg yeah were, it was available it wasn't banned yeah right but yeah, in this situation, the only one open to them is that that JCB. I have to say, like when I, you know, um, hopefully next year I'll get back to doing the scrim streams. But when I've played within the client during those streams and other times, the thing that I struggle with the most, and I think the thing that takes probably the most practice and and you have to have a strong memory of each time you practice and of the stat sheets, is knowing what you can pick to maximize your chance for winning in any given situation. So like being aware, okay, this is banned. Therefore we should pick this is one of the toughest things I find as a player that, you know, I would consider myself still a novice, obviously at actually playing the farming simulator league. It's helpful. Of course, that we're casters and we're able to kind of talk these things out now, but it's a lot tougher in the moment to say okay they've banned this therefore we should go with this and we see pb with the runner perk heading for the new holland combine and major Mella needs to win this battle this time and this time he does and so my insanity does not get the extra case baylor and instead they've gone for the new holland so a little bit of disruption there they did get the new holland combine however so they're the closest to that part of the field so let's see where Astragon are. This is going to be a lot closer, Alex, in the first bail. Matza has a further distance to go with his bailer, but it should still be pretty close if both teams execute it properly. I think, based on, based on what we've just said and, and the fact that quite often we see that Vultra and that Massey get banned, I think the reason we see a lot of teams go for the high-powered tractors is because it's not possible to ban all four high-powered tractors easily. If you're banning all four high-powered tractors, then you would revert back to one, of, you know, back to the, the front loader tractor. Um, but uh, there's so many oh, things you have oh. to miss. Oh, he managed to do that. Just he nearly there's, missed. There's so he many... recovered it then. Uh, there's so many things that you, um, so many other things you'd have to worry about if you were banned, if all four of those were being banned. Now, we've never seen that happen. So I think teams practice and play with this this setup of having two higher power tractors because of that. And the team we see most effectively not playing with it is the one team who are able to adapt more than anybody else, and that's Trelleborg. So Trelleborg will consistently play with that Massey Ferguson or with that Vultra and then will fall back on the high power tracks if they have to. So 
So uh, Kermit's having a small technical difficulty, so you've got just me for the moment. And so, yeah, as I was saying, um, I, I, lots of teams will, will try and get into a standard, uh, stranded strategy so that they can, um, so that they can uh, know what they're doing and so they can be disrupted as little as possible. Uh, the only other team that we've seen uh, be able to uh, alter their gameplay uh, enough is the uh, uh, is New Holland. New Holland have gone through and done it before as well. So um, yeah, uh, they're really really good at it. I think uh, at, at doing that. So uh, I think I'd like to see that from people. I think I'd like to see a little bit more of uh of that flexibility from teams quite often my insanity getting stuck on their note in fact yan picking up silo closed for my insanity and matsy is now yeah waiting until yan is almost on the uh the drop um but of course yan has not started dropping the grain yet so both teams uh, have closed the silo. It means both teams are going to have to leave the overloader here and bring the combines over to finish things off. So uh, we will see how they go. I'm back. I just blue Matt's screened seen. there, and luckily it came yeah. back quickly. <laughs> oh, man. Brand new PC uh, as well, so that's not a good That's, that's always a little bit worrying. Yeah. Oh, yeah, as I was saying, I, I think... I think I know the reason why teams tend to go with the the high power tractors. It's I, yeah, I think I, it's I, I heard that bit, and I think you're now. right. It is, it is a good point. Um, and I actually like the, because you bring that point up now, and um, like if I'm going up against Trelleborg, I'm banning those same tractors that we just saw banned. Yeah, I'm forcing I'm forcing them but... to to use the bigger tractors. But you ban that, and suddenly Trelleborg have access to the telehandler. Right. <laughs> True. Good point. Yeah, it's like, uh, pick so your poison. It's, right? <laughs> yeah. And, it, and that is the reason why, if I, was, if I was a team, the two strategies I would work with are telehandler and, uh, and having a second, um, uh, having a right. second stacker, and I wouldn't use them together. I would, I would have one strategy which, right, this is what I play if I have the Telehandler available. It's this setup. And this is what I play if I have the, uh, the Stacker available. It's this setup. And if you, if by some miracle both of those things don't get banned, which does happen from time to time, you yeah, go with both of them and you have your a massive hybrid setup that is more powerful than anything else. In fact, at that point, I think I'd be very tempted to uh, uh, to to play unstoppable because if you got the telehandler, you just lift the bales right up to the top. Yeah, it is. It is. It is tough. You're right. Like it, either one of those is going to be in play, and it's hard to really disrupt Trelleborg either way you go. Um, same with New Holland. You know, the teams at the top of the table, they're up there for a reason. And so I think coming into this weekend, we fully expect that uh, that will continue on into the Season 4 World Championship here. But you never know, as the week continues to play out, what exactly is going to happen. I mean, right now we're shaping up, if Astragon don't turn this around, to see the final team that made it into the weekend be the first team to go out. Our top eight teams made it in, and Astragon had to beat Cortiva yesterday to decide the final team because there was two teams sharing eighth place coming into there the weekend is. as we have Grey Multiplier and Crazy Tool popping up in the eighth minute drops. Uh, 61,000 liters of grain for uh, Mainz, uh, no, for uh, Astragon, but 67,000 liters we had for uh, my insanity 
Uh, my insanity just have massive amount more grain, and uh, and as a result, I'm gonna end up with a huge extra uh, multiplier on here. It is gonna be so difficult for Ashcon to come back from this, as we're seeing the grain just continue to go down. Both teams now getting the harvesters emptying again. Uh, Ashagon somehow have ended up with less grain despite the fact they had more, uh, despite the fact they had two ideals. Uh, the reason for that is the New Holland of the Russell match is sitting there. So three combines worth of grain to two combines worth of grain. And my insanity ended up with the point one advantage in the uh, multiplier as well on the grain multiplier oh. drop so that point so, one yeah. could make a difference here Two point they are three. now out of grain yeah but that's Astragon not gonna be enough out as to get well. it down Oof, man yeah, that is not no, good news 2.3 and you can look at their faces. It's a little bit of a grimace there in the middle by Major Melon. Um, and they know now that it's going to be tough for them. In fact, like, what do you do with six minutes to go? Do you go ahead and you're you're probably going to cost yourself if you try to get more grain. you got to focus on the well, bales grain, probably the grain more multiplier so. But... Is, the grain multiplier is gone as well. So it's it's the amount to equalize it out is, is one and a half times uh what it was to get it here in the first place so it's a it's a huge amount of grain that they would have to deliver to do it and, and a lot uh, of time wasted so time. yeah they're gonna have they, they need the super drop to go in their favor maybe they can get multiplier switch and be able to utilize it that's you know maybe one thing they can count on or maybe they get enough bail points in the super drop to make a difference but anything else lord baylor is not going to do them any good Bale withering would have to be a significant margin, I think, uh, or significant amount of bales destroyed to help them. And of course, if my insanity gets the super drop anyways, then it doesn't even matter. Um, so if I'm Astragon, I think that I am getting ready for about 55 seconds from now and hoping that I get the super drop and hoping I get it in the favor of their team or it's going to be really tough to see them getting back into this because now it is a six point difference in each bale the rest of the way and that is just bad the, news the, the trouble is that as it gets closer if it hits the four minute mark and the score line is like this with astragon in the lead then the, the super drop is going to be in my insanity's favor for whatever it is. And now my insanity got a head that's actually caused it to, to be the opposite. For, now it's going to be in Astragon's favor. But it's still so close. There's one point between them. And here comes the super drop. What's it going to be? It looks like it's bottom boost, and that does not bottom help boost. Astragon at all. 73 seconds for uh, Astragon. 45 sec. Oh, it's going to be. It's going to be bottom get it. boost for Astragon. So but close. I don't think that's the right drop. That's not really the right drop to help them. I mean, no. because they're still going to score no. 17 points for every bail they put into the bottom as, as it is in their favor. So. Really, no, all it's done best, is save though, you some time. It's, yeah, it stopped my insanity from suddenly scoring a ridiculous amount of points. Right, you have to it's get it, but in the sake of giving you a chance, Bottom Boost and Lord yeah. Baylor were the ones you didn't want to see pop up there. Um, and and you can see that Astrogon are just not doing anything with it. Yeah. They, I mean, they, they might, weren't ready to Baromax utilize might it. Might put these in the bottom, but yeah, there's, there's. Then they're not making a big thing about. Uh, Fifteen about seconds They'll to go. Probably score three bales with it. They they have scored a few there. Um, yeah. But yeah, just just not really able to utilize it, and it wasn't the right drop. They are ahead now. 
by five points, but that's not going to last for very long, as PB has, he's, one of those is going to make it, one's going to fall off. And so back into the lead, my insanity go with 215 remaining. And I they have five extra bales right now compared to Astragon. I just, unless we see a mistake uh, of my insanity ending up, you know, with their baler or their stacker for some reason unrecoverable, I don't see a route uh, for Astragon to win here. No, I don't. Astrogod have had the hardest route to get here, and unfortunately it looks like they are going to be ending their journey at this point. Minute and 40 seconds left on the clock, and they are six point down for every bail delivered. Even bail numbers and uh, 60 points behind. Uh, yeah, that is... That is not a good place to be. Yeah, and I mean, you're right. They had the they had the toughest route to get here. They had to play the the decision match yesterday. They did beat Cortiva in that to move on to today. So just by doing that, they've been able to get themselves some more prize money and make it uh, into the world championships. And I have to say, I have to give Astragon a lot of credit because although they were the lowest seed coming into this championship, they are still fantastic ambassadors for the farming simulator league yesterday you saw it when they beat cortiva and they had the interview with bauer matza they weren't talking just about themselves they were thanking the danish community and they were thanking sga sim game alliance the stream team here on twitch also uh the team from north america that participated in the farming simulator league this season and uh these these guys are you know very welcoming very uh eager to help others learn how to play the Farming Simulator League, and they've been training with SGA and other newcomers for over a year now, and it's just great to see how helpful this community is at getting other people involved, because as it continues to go on, there'll be more and more chances for other teams to get involved, and who knows what the future holds, so it's great to see everyone, you know, kind of spreading the love of the Farming Simulator League here, so... Unfortunately for Astragon, they're going to be our first team eliminated as we see my insanity. They lost earlier against Bednar, but they move on and uh, they will now uh, be taking on. Uh, who was it? I can't, I can't keep up now. They're taking on Bednar Bed again. Bednar. Yeah, you're right. Because Bednar lost Bednar. to Kilibur. It's, it's be a tomorrow. rematch. Yeah. It's a rematch for the right so, uh, to go yeah. into uh, the semifinal. It's, it's yeah. my insanity versus Bednar is going to open things up tomorrow <laughs> as it did today. Wow. Oh, no, it didn't quite. It was a second match today. But yeah, there, there is going to be a rematch between those two tomorrow. Yep. Bednar lost to Trelleborg. My insanity lost to Bednar. And uh, now they'll face each other tomorrow to kick things off and the loser of that one is out the winner will be the runners up of group a and will move on to the semifinals. we still have a few more matches to come today we're gonna have the uh the winners in group b new holland taking on lindner that'll be coming up next and then whoever loses that one goes on to face Voltra for the right to move on to uh, Game 5 in Group B. So the Game 5s in each group are going to kick things off tomorrow. We're going to have a look at the groups here in just a moment. There you have it. So Trelleborg are through. They got through with two straight wins, and it will be the rematch, as Alex was just mentioning, my insanity against Bednar tomorrow to kick things off in Game 5 of Group A. So, I mean, we've had we've had some things, you know, some storylines that have played out. Bednar, even though they lost to Trelleborg, have looked rather strong, you know, take away some mistakes against Trelleborg. Maybe they're the first team to solidify their spot in the semifinal. You don't know. My Insanity, upset by Bednar, but able to bounce back against our lowest seed uh, this weekend, Astragon. Uh, good showing, though, by Astragon to get to this point. And, uh, again, congratulations to those guys, Gigi and 
And thanks to those guys for being such great ambassadors of the FSL. We'll be right back in just a moment. And welcome back. It's going to be time for the interview once again. So my insanity on the uh, on the boot for the interview. So let's see what he has to say. Okay, they had some problems on the first half versus Betna. Betna is a very strong team this season. They had a problem next part. But it was a close match. Still. Yeah, how are the matches versus Astrogon? The matches will be chill for them. Good start for the matches. Yeah, they got all the equipment they wanted. Yeah, the first bell was good as well. Yeah, they're always a little bit behind versus Betna. What are your plans for the rest of the tournament? Okay, happy to be on the semi-finals, planning to win versus Bedna tomorrow. So they are looking to get to the final, of course.
Okay. They will they will focus on the remaining matches and uh, try to analyze the situation before tomorrow. They go through all the matches on the evening. That's like a their style of doing it. Thank you and good luck. Now we're gonna have a look on the replays. Thank you, thank you, uh, uh, audio production. Thank you also to our German commentators as well from the interview. And there we go. We will have the replays. And as far as I know, I should be having one certain Mister from UK on the line as well. Hello there, Matty. How are you doing? <laughs> did you have, did you there, have a nice I... burger? I saw the picture of your burger. Oh yeah, I tried to put it on it's the chat as well, looking. but the uh, the link was deleted. But the, uh, yeah, it was a good burger. So now my, my stomach is full. I mean, every time when I come to the studio, it's like <laughs> breakfast time when I leave. But I don't usually do like a quite heavy breakfast. It's not something that I do. And then I just usually stop at the gas station, buy something on the way. But because four matches in a row and the maximum break is three minutes. I mean, I had still had my sandwich that I bought on the morning and I have eaten like three bites out of it. So I just thought that instead of like eating that couple, three, four hours old sandwich, I maybe need to get something proper to eat. <laughs> Which made sense. It was actually because I was listening to you saying, oh, I'm going to go for lunch just as I was tucking into mine during my last break. So <laughs> it's all good. Yeah, I mean, the problem is that because um, I'm, I'm not doing this from home, so I don't have my kitchen, so I cannot just go and quick, quickly grab something. I, I actually need to go and, you know, buy something from the restaurant or something nearby. But anyway, let's focus on the game. My stomach is full. And yes. I'm, I mean, yeah. So uh, it's going to be definitely fun. We still have two matches remaining. That was... And uh, what, do you, what do you think about the last two matches? I was watching them from the side. So do you have any anything special you want to point out here? It was it was quite close in, in a lot of places. I think there were some unnecessary errors from uh, actually from both sides at various times, uh, and we can see some of these here. Uh, I think uh, that Main Santiago are getting up their game a little bit uh, when they they face off against Bretnar again uh, tomorrow. Um, but all in all, uh, it was uh, some fairly solid play. Otherwise. Um, I think at times they they definitely outplayed Astragon here. Um, mm. They were they were on top of uh, the multiplier. They were they were just basically scoring points at times when when they were uh, when they had the advantage to. And in that last game, the way they did the the grain was was incredible. The two ideal combines for Astragon, and the way they countered that was they went and filled up a third combine and made sure they had tons more grain than their opponents. Um, and it paid off, you know, to have six points for every bale made a massive difference. So um, our next game is New Holland versus Lindner. Uh, mm, this is going to be two. Uh, it is it, it, two pretty strong teams. Um, New Holland, I think, going into this one are probably the favourites. Um, but uh, we shall see how things pan out. Uh, if New Holland win this game, the first that they could meet Trelleborg uh, tomorrow would be in the final. Mm. So do you think that we might so, see yeah. some kind of a strategy that they don't want to win because of that? <laughs> no, I think I think I think whichever team I think both teams really want to win this because that means they avoid Trelleborg is the way to the final. That is the easier route to the final if they do. And here come New Holland out with their manager. Yeah, I love the glasses. I mean, he was I like love, watching love, us. Uh, he has the brilliant. notebooks and everything. Yeah, I love, I love that. They, they, they know what they're doing. They have a strategy. Look at that. <laughs> What's that? That is planned. That is I, planned. I he wanted to show that. us that. Yeah, there's the plan A and the plan B. That's. But I mean, these guys—they know what they're doing. If anybody could translate that for me in the chat, that'd be awesome. <laughs> I think I'm gonna need sure a screen capture out of that. So somebody clip win. that. <laughs> somebody clip it. And then we have the um, other team. So we do have Lindner, and these guys—they came up out. with the uh, with the combo strategy on the previous stages. So uh, interesting to see how they're going to go with the usual strategy or do they want to try the uh, uh, the same thing which they tried on the previous game also versus oh, New are, Holland. Are we going to see the Lintner push again? Do we think they'll yeah. try that first game to try and throw New Holland off or 
Or do we think they'll just play a strong standard game, which is exactly what they did last time? I mean, they they came back to, to get to this point uh, playing two really strong games for uh, for the, the, their last two games in the last match um, after after really trying to, to push their luck with the first game. Yeah, I mean, of course, they want to secure the place on the on the next stages of the tournament. So maybe they want to just try to win it, no matter the cost or no matter the means. But we saw kind of like the Delinda push, even though it was very entertaining. It didn't didn't work versus uh, Diatska, unfortunately. I mean, again, like four. I mean, they still got more than thousand points from that game. That was quite surprising that they still lost it. But yeah, you know, what the opponents are as tough as New Holland here, it just might mean that yeah, whatever special tricks you have, it just might not be enough because the uh, the opposing team always has their tricks on their sleeve as well. And it's an easy one to counter because you telegraph it the whole way through the game. So mm. as if the team's sitting there waiting for you to score that massive match point, uh, very easily see it coming. Uh, and mm. I think New Holland are a good enough team to see it coming and be prepared to counter it. So I, I think it would probably not be a good choice um, mm. against them to go with it. But we'll see what gets banned. We'll see what gets picked. And uh, and where we go from there. Well, one thing I, I, I'm going to say, meanwhile, we have the bands and picks. So there was a question on the chat that do I speak German? I don't. I don't speak German. So how the whole interview process goes is that we do have a people on site who are doing the translation and kind of like a whispering to our ears. And then we're going to try to give that to the audience as well. So it's, uh, you know, it's, it's not the uh, the most perfect process because uh, there's a lot of like, a, you know, a, a, like a broken telephone line on the middle, like a couple guys in between. But at least we are still getting it. So we, there's the German interview. Then there's an English translation, and then I'll try to repeat everything that I can from that translation as well as at the same time as I'm listening to it. And the same applies for Kermit as well. As far as I know, Kermit is not either speaking German. So the bands have been the little John Deere. That is a little bit of a disruption coming in from Lintner. Uh, both telehandlers have been banned, and one of the big tracks is. So I think we're going to see the Lintner Lintrack used uh, mm -hmm. probably by both teams. Um, and uh, well, beyond that, uh, I think that certainly New Holland should be grabbing a second front loader tractor. I'd be surprised if, well, no, I think Lintner probably won't based on what we've seen before. Yeah, there we go. So bottleneck once again. We haven't seen Zisterous. anything else than bottleneck being used. And then we have the player picks coming up. Uh, Lindner, just like you said, Alex, is going to be at least chosen by Zezerus and also by Tita. So yeah, you were completely right on that, Alex. Alex. Oh, I thought Lindner were going to go for that uh, that fence for a while. Um, yeah, that would be a weird choice right now. Um, I, I see no reason to actually pick that fence. And both New Holland and Lynn are going for big tractors. I I don't understand it. Take the Massey Ferguson. And, well, the, what the speed on that Voltra and that... Uh, I, I can only think that's a speed thing. So, uh, the big Voltra, that goes at 65 kmh. The big Deutz goes at 70, which is why the Fent got banned. Uh, mm. That's versus the Massey that goes at 55 and the Vulture that goes at 55. So, yes, I think they're going for the big tractors because of the speed thing. But when you're bringing in nearly twice as many bales every turn uh, with a front load, that speed doesn't seem to be so important to me mm. well let's see what's the strategy i mean of course well, if you're going to go for the fast tractors then i guess you want to in a way like you know beat some challenges on the pads maybe build your strategy on top of that and of course you want to get a first good bail as well so let's see i mean these guys are pretty well set up for a first bail i mean still 20 seconds for the fun 140 point first bail 
And uh, I mean, they should be getting beh away behind that combat. Oh, that's a bit slow, actually. I think they lost a couple seconds there. As they had, well, they were really struggling, but uh, I think there was a bit of a, maybe a misunderstanding from which side he's going to be leaving behind the, uh, the combine. And uh, let's see, he's just going to reverse that in. It's going to be like 135 like ish or something like that. And 34, okay, I missed that with one point. Uh, That's my fault. Oh, almost Nine. spot. <laughs> yeah, and then we have Hayden from the New Holland side. So he's going to be definitely slower. So this is looking good for Lindner. Um, this is quite surprising, to be honest. I mean, I was expecting that New Holland's going to go for for a very fast first fail as well. But, the, uh, yeah, I mean, these guys, they're not blinking. So I guess they're still fine with whatever they are doing with the strategy with the first fail as well. <laughs> if you're, uh, if you're such, is, is just delivering more bails than your uh, opponents. Then, uh, first bail being 30 points behind. Uh, or a hundred and fifty percent um is uh yeah oh alex you gotta hear this That's one actually i mean jo nice. joss was actually trying to uh, figure out what was on the paper on the uh, on the new holland uh right. like, tactical sheet and uh, it's on the chat it says Cre Crepes. <laughs> <laughs> so they don't. I mean, it, it makes sense. I mean, we talk about the pancakes. If you go to Fr if you go to France, it, it's crepes. So they are definitely feeling to get some pancakes or whatever yeah. they want to do. Maybe uh, maybe they can find some from 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 Erlang as well. But the, I mean, they are just. I mean, this season of Farming Simulator League, it's been all about the pancakes, and I think it's going to continue to do so FSL as is, as is, the guys is, are still wandering here on the fields, like riding the. Uh, so uh, building the strategy, just the small things of just like the, the Streamlabs is going to be advertising uh, about the pancake cooking stream that's going to happen later this evening. So meanwhile, I had the break. I did prepare all the stream layouts and everything for it. So it's going to happen like two hours after the main broadcast is going to end. And then we're going to have a cooking stream on my channel. So I hope everybody who's have been enjoying the pancake jokes Please. and talking about the pancakes during this season. Please come there and chat. It's more, more, more like... A, of course, a cooking session, but it's also like, you know, uh, ask me anything kind of thing. So we can just discuss whatever you want to do. So uh, while cooking, I do have a, probably a lot of time to talk as well. Yes. Go go check out Copter's uh, live stream later, where he will be cooking some FSL pancakes. Will you be there, Alex? Uh, I will try to be there. Definitely try to be there. Yeah, I mean, I'll promise Alex that next time we're gonna, when Thanks. we're gonna meet, okay? It's not the next time, it's the first time because you were not at the farm con and I was not at the Twitch con. Yeah, because so, I couldn't make it to farm con. Yeah, I'll promise that I'll cook you in person pancakes as well. Oh, fantastic. Well, we'll have to, we'll have to talk them into allowing us to do it in the studio. Set up a mm -hmm. cooking show in the FSL studio and do FSL pancakes. Yeah, that was the original plan that we're going to have <laughs> the land, all the people at the same place. And then I think Jenny actually promised to make pancakes for us. But the, uh, I, I guess we need to do it the other way around. So we're going to make next time the pancakes with Jenny as well. But okay, let's go back to the game. Enough about pancakes. And uh, yeah, well, <laughs> about 11 minutes to go. We can see no bales being pressed. The grain situation is about equal, 5k for difference. The multipliers are the same as well. So we haven't like, you know, lost any huge strategic um, bits and pieces from, from wherever. Uh, of course, the first bales, we saw them, 30 points of a difference. So that is exactly one and a half bales. And Jenny is waiting to, for me to make a pancake joke, so let me think about that. Why did the pancake uh -huh. cross the road? <laughs> to see his flatmate. I don't know. Yeah, so you went for the pancake jokes. It's going to be your time to shine with those. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think we I, I think we got, did all of them last time already, so it's very hard to come up with the, with the new ones. Pretty much. Especially the ones uh, that I want to save for, for tomorrow or for later later time. But, the, uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, most of the pancake jokes, they are kind of like repeating the same team. And, and, and some of that I found, they were just completely stupid to be honest but the uh, i guess that's part of a joke um meanwhile uh, on the game 
Uh, nothing has really changed. I mean, there's no bales. The grain situation is the same. I think they're just collecting the grain and waiting for the, uh, the eight-minute drops. I think happened? the teams are, are you're quite careful okay. at the moment. They are careful because they, are, they know the importance of this game. Both teams know that they have a strong opponent on the other side. So they're not doing anything crazy or anything that is like, you know, breaking the pattern out of the norm. They just want to make sure that they get the base game done well without mistakes, and then they'll see if there's an opportunity that's going to arise at some point. And Hyde now uh, running to go and grab his vehicle while Bales are being pressed constantly by Lintner. And uh, they have these are their first three Bales beyond the first Bale. Yeah, New Holland are, are lagging behind on the uh, on the grain here, which is not great. Yeah, just a couple of seconds. Up the grain, and this is this is why New Holland are lagging. Two ideal combines uh, that they've got. They need to. Um, do something about that. We've got bail drop and bridges raised. Apollo getting into uh, position, trying to load up as much of this grain, ready for the drop. Well, the drops happen, so now they're they're unloading and trying to get rid of this. And you can see here, New Holland, get yeah, setting up to do the same. Can lit the actually deliver bales while they have this advantage i mean they have nine ready to go uh, looks but like now we not. can see that it's uh, a new holland actually unloading at the same time so uh, i mean they might have something on the belt we do have well we actually don't have a player who's like right next to the barn as far as i can see for the moment so probably there's no bales on the belt uh which means that they well, they didn't have time to use that advantage. We can see that already as it's 2.1 now. And now both teams are just unloading it. Linder has more grain to deliver. But also New Holland, they have been, you know, gathering some more. So these are not the final drops of grain as as Linder is just uh, unloading it now. But then there's still going to be like 30, 33k on, on New Holland's side. And at least Linder is going to be now focusing more on, you know, just delivering and pressing the bales. Because, I mean, the grain game is over for them. Um, I don't think it's gonna change that much the situation because now we can see New Holland. Uh, they are just pouring into the silo as well. It's gonna be pretty even, 2.0, I guess. Yeah, that's gonna be the end result. No, they're gonna be just falling a little bit shy. No, there we go. <laughs> they had like a 100 or 200 liters, which they just dropped there, which didn't go with the full, uh, first try. And uh, yeah, 2.0, uh, 2 that's the end of it. So, I mean, it's the same. for both teams so now it's all about just how you do it the amount of bales is pretty even but Lindner has been already putting a couple bales in so I mean well, while we still have five and a half minutes Lindner has a slight lead yeah Lindner, Lindner putting out a good uh, 89 point lead here uh, New Holland need to do what they've been doing really really well and uh, and just Bring in tons of bales. Only team we've seen that's matched Trelleborg. Well, no, actually, until today, only team we've seen match Trelleborg for a number of bales sort of dropped in. And so New Holland now we're expecting to, to really up their bale game. And Tita is, uh, is not putting that other bale in. He's just leaving that there. And he's going to go out and grab some more. 255 to 204 and one bale advantage to New Holland at the moment. So uh, things are beginning to open up a little bit here in this game. Well, I mean, I guess I need to go with one pancake joke. <laughs> There's no coming around of this one. Um, so, well, mine my, my went down about as well as I expected. Yeah, one pancake that I know he tried to make as a caster, but he was too flat.
<laughs> Just silence. <laughs> I mean, I hate when you cannot see the audience. But anyways, <laughs> four minutes weed. to go. <laughs> yeah, 50 points of a difference. I'll try to, I just try to turn the hole. This guy can do another Ooh, direction. However, there's a problem. Somebody is swimming. Uh, that bottom is boost on the super drop. But that's that's that Baylor is blocking the safer route. That is yeah. that is awful. That's gonna that's... cost them a lot of time. If they can't get yeah. that Baylor off there, that's that's oh. hideous. So Lindner now trying to, lose a lot of to get that Baylor in. Yeah. While well, there's more uh, gap which New Holland's had. desperately trying to put Bales in the bottom for some reason. This is New Holland's opportunity to score lots of points and they don't seem to be taking it. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, they... Oh, they've they probably... got bottom boost. That's why they're sticking them in the bottom. They've got bottom boost. Mm. They've got yeah, easy that was a point drop scoring. On four minute mark. And... Uh, they've still got seven seconds. Two more bales. Can they get them in? Five, four. No, he's gone for three and it's not going to happen. Um, it has evened things up a little bit, but uh, not as much as yeah, it could see. have. Yeah, and here we oh, go. That, that, that's the mistake. Trying yeah. to avoid that wall. Yeah, it's. But I mean, they, they did get the bailer out of the way. So that is. Uh, and But I mean, de definitely, they, did, they lost a lot of has... important time there. So that was definitely, um, uh, I mean, they lost the time. So New Holland, they were, I, I think, like a 40 points behind or something like that. So they are now pretty much even. Uh, Lidna, they still have a lot of bales, uh, of course, because they haven't been able to deliver them because the time was like used to uh, rescuing that one baler. Uh, but they still have the time for it. So in a way, I mean, it could be that Lidna can still recover from that small mistake, if I if I may call it so. So let's see. I mean, Zerzerus is back on it as well so this is gonna be I, I think it's gonna go be very tight series in the end uh, it comes down to the fact how many bales they can deliver uh, we have seen some series where not all the bales haven't made their way to the barn so uh let's see if this is one gonna be one of those but yeah i i think new holland right. yes they have more points but i mean they're gonna run out of bales so it comes down to the clock i i'm a little confused uh why you holland are using the fent baler it only brings three bales uh two bales back at a time and uh with their setup they need a baler that brings back three at a time so why are they using that when it would seem that the, the case baler is available because lintner own are using the new holland baler and the uh, and their Combo. own case bailers. So, oh, a bail tastic from Lindner. Yeah, that's uh, I, I was just watching his two on top, and then he just took the next two, and instead of like putting them uh, on the belt, he just turned on the on the first floor, and that was definitely uh, seventy points from that whole situation. Okay, that was like the other bail with ten points, and then the uh, the combo bail was sixty points. So, and that probably uh, made enough scoreline that they're gonna win the series as we only have 30 something seconds remaining one bail is gonna drop but the gap is 100 points new holland they have well now they only have six bales so they're catching up but if both teams will just put all the bales in that they need to look at that it's not even a telehandler but zerzers wants to uh, you know show the trick still that's gonna be good because that's gonna have that's the time impressive. to go inside but they're gonna be uh, definitely winning this one uh they are just doing a great job even after the mistake with the uh with the bailer that they made on the safer route and uh, i mean yeah Amazing. combo maybe could save but you don't have the bales for it that that was a really good game for lintner despite the fact that that bailer got stuck and you they know it you can see they know it uh yeah new holland's having a bit of a shocker there um i i don't quite know hmm. How yeah, that went. I mean, yeah, and if England's that. gonna win the next one, then we can see New Holland actually facing Trelleborg before the grand finals. Uh, I mean, the final game. So, of course, they still would have to make yeah. their way. But I mean, if if New Holland's gonna lose this one, then uh, there's definitely a quite spicy day tomorrow, uh, straight from the start. That's um, 
yeah, that's that's not good for New Holland there. That was uh, plenty of opportunities for them to go into the lead and uh, and just uh, a few silly mistakes. And especially when Lintner made that big of a mistake uh, of of blocking off that that bridge. They, they definitely didn't capitalize on that. And they had a lot of mucking around as well when they got that bottom boost of, of not getting bales into it. So, um, yeah, I think they um, I, 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 th- I think they need to, to just sort of close up these uh, these little mistakes and things and, uh, and, and see if they can send this three games. Mm. Well, there we go. Definitely a team meeting there. I think this time the paper is not saying crepes, it's saying something else. And I mean, I would love to be the, I would love to be on site interviewing the players because I, I have so many questions about that unicorn pen that the coach is having. <laughs> so, uh, um, but it is what it is. And, uh, we can see the amazing uh, camera work from the from the giant software at the studio. Uh, of course, these guys they are pretty happy. Uh, I mean. I, I mean, we know that Linder can be a very strong team. Uh, I would be lying if I would say that Linder would have been my favorite to win the previous one, but they are showing that they definitely have what it takes. And uh, I think they are enjoying the moment quite a bit because they are kind of like, you know, maybe a little bit like betting against the odds here, but still in a way, uh, you know, doing it with a style and not with the uh, and, and with the skill, not really with the uh, with any kind of a, like a good luck or anything like that and they even made the mistake and they recovered from that so uh that kind of tells how strong they actually are with the current strategy i will say congratulations to uh everybody who or the four people who predicted uh lindner would win the last game uh they won themselves an awful lot of pancakes because it was something yeah it was 550 pancakes on lindner and 3.9 uh th- sorry 3900 on uh on new holland so uh yeah they did they did well the predictions uh set up today has been really good um seeing everybody uh predicting who they think is going to win and uh that's, <laughs> that was quite uh quite a win there for uh for a few people yeah that was definitely something and Joss comes up with a new term. So the uh, the coach of New Holland doesn't have a pencil. He has a pencil. Uh... Okay. Um, enough pancake stuff. Uh, we're going to talk about that later. <laughs> we are already on the ban phase. And I, I think we both need to uh, gather ourselves with Alex. <laughs> because when we read something funny from the chat, I think I d- we're both just, like, uh, trying to find the words <laughs> after it. Uh, I think... I. I, I really think if New Holland are going to win this uh, and uh, and are going to improve their game, they should get a second front loader tractor. We've we've been mm. saying it for the last few games. Um, it it cost them there because they did not have a baler that could carry three bales back, and uh, and and as a result, it it yeah, it really cost them. Yeah, and we can see that Lindner has joined the baiting club as well. It took a while until they picked the ideal instead of the Rostelmarsh. But yeah, they will take the ideal in the end. So no surprises there. Uh, we can see telehandlers being banned by New Holland. So Lindner cannot go with the same telehandler strategy, which we have seen before. Um, I mean, a bit of a shame because I think Cesaros was doing a great job with the tosses at some point as well. But yeah, it is what it is. We can see Lindner, Lind tracks being chosen by both sides. Uh, Deutsch Far seems to be coming on the both sides as well. And then we'll see what's going to be the last one. Still, one perk is missing, but it's not going to be picked actually. So both players, Haydn and Sinfrey, who's going to go over the Deutsch Far, they don't pick a perk at all. So here we go again, going with the big tractors. This is all going to be down to now what Baylor's people get. Ah, the coach needs to leave while the game starts. Yes, you can't be I didn't notice that earlier. Um, but the, uh, anyways, I think it's I think it's fair 
more or less so that the other team is kind of like you know playing as a three member team that there's no fourth player who's like you know giving advice or anything like I, that I, during the games i, I, I think, think that's definitely fair i th i think the chat has guessed exactly who i put my prediction on last game <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> by the fact that how excited i must have been when i mentioned that a minute ago <laughs> But okay, so the second second match is going to start, and uh, we know that Lindner, they won the first one. Uh, they had a good first bail as well. I mean, New Holland, right. they they were never really like, you know, you... at the same speed. They lost the first bail. They were never, ever catching up on Lindner. I, even if when they made a mistake, or they were catching up, but they didn't, like, pass them. So I want to see how this is going to go. Because he seemed for a little bit, uh, maybe forgetting. No, he was just like reversing to the bailer. So he's going to go for it. Haydn is already here with the first bail. So they, uh, this is going to be a like super damn good first bail. It's going to go inside with a reverse. It's going to be still more than 100, 141 maybe. 42, okay, 42. even better. But that's a great start for New Holland. Exactly what they needed at this point. Now, interesting. you know I said a minute ago, it all to be dependent on what bailers people get. New Holland have got both the case bailers. But it doesn't matter because Lindner have got both the chrome bailers. So mm. right now, the bail game is very even. So long as Hayden gets rid of that fent bailer. Oops. If he continues on... Oh! That's not good. Um, as long as he uh, as long as he dumps that Fent Baylor and switches to a case, then then that should be good. It will then be down to which team can uh, can produce the most bales. What we have as harvesters, New Holland also have both of the ideal combines as well, so they have larger capacity uh, in their combines too. It's a big gap. That's 45 points. Oh, wow. 2.25 yeah. bales with my math. And uh, that's a huge, huge yes. difference there. So New Holland, they got a... I mean, that's... Is that even... That's the best first bale today, if I'm not completely mistaken. Have we seen better than 142? No, I, I don't think, think I so. think Trelleborg had a 146. Ah, okay. Yeah, I mean, which, uh, yeah, I probably missed that game. Well, I didn't miss the game, but I did miss the first bail because I was getting my food. Yeah. But anyway, a huge, huge difference there, as we can see. So this is something that Lindner needs to catch up. We'll see. I mean, the previous game was quite straightforward. Both teams just executing the strategy. No special tricks there. Um, there wasn't like the silo close didn't happen. You know, there wasn't so many disruptive drops either. And talking about that, we have silo close coming right now. Yes. But as mentioned earlier, on the 12 minute drops, uh, people haven't really gone for the uh, for the silo close, or if they have, it hasn't been making a much of an impact because the grain delivery is so late uh, on all of these matches. So we'll see if that's going to be a case. We can see Haydn. I mean, there's, there's a chance to do some first bails at the start. I mean, the first bails, but early bails. So if New Holland now pours some of that in, and presses the bales and picks drops and they can maybe uh, take advantage of the multiplier and even extend the lead but as they don't have the bales coming in that will be definitely a problem we can see tita going for it so new holland they might be executing that strategy oh so look at that both sides at the same time so yeah uh, it's gonna be 80 seconds of time the 2.7 is the multiplier so if new holland wants to take advantage of the situation now is the time when we should be seeing the bail counter to start increasing but that's not the case. So I'm um, just wondering, like, you know, they disrupt the uh, and take some time away from the opponents as they are, you know, going for the silos. They need to go back to the fields and go back to the silos and so on. But yeah, they are not really using that to gain any points at this stage. It, my expectation now is New Holland will take time and refill this overloader, give themselves a big, big advantage in the grain and then score a lot of points from that point of view. Uh, Linder already know this. They've gone up. They've grabbed the case combine. They are going to do the three combine setup to try and, and kit. Um, to be honest, it could work very, very well for them. So, uh, yeah, they're, they're just going to keep piling combines in there now 
and, uh, and try and get as big a score as they can. They actually have three people harvesting now. Which is uh, an interesting, uh, uh, an interesting choice to make because now New Holland uh, can go and uh, go and press a whole load of bales. Yeah, but I mean, you know, they know what's the situation. They know that, of course, they have one point three. They know about the multiplier, but they also know that New Holland is most probably like you know just collecting grain at the moment. So they're gonna have you know a a standard amount of grain so i think that the uh, if linda wants to somehow come back from this situation they at least need to tie the uh, the multiplier and for that they need more grain than new holland so i guess that's the uh, that's what i would do i might be wrong but that's how it seems to me and let's see i mean you know new holland is going to be just preparing all these loads and uh, there's there's a 10k difference, and that, that on the grain, I mean, between New Holland and Lindner, and that 10k is not enough for Lindner to come back from 1.3. They need a, a let's say a grain multiplier that's going to be working as their advantage, for example. Then the whole situation can actually go upside down if that's going to happen. And I I expect New Holland to close that gap as well. I don't think Lindner are going to end up with a 10,000 liter advantage. Yeah, but I mean, they, okay, advantage, but I mean, it's, it's already 2.7. Uh, uh, but I, d I don't think, it, it's, it may not be enough to close the gap now. It's, it's, yeah, it's, I, I it's don't not expect enough. there to be that much. Yeah. Um, even, I mean, even when Yeah. it happens. Yeah. I mean, getting three combines out is a, is a very good way to go about it and, and to, to get extra grain in when you don't have uh, when you haven't emptied your your overloader, um, but yeah, Lindner are now sort of switching around. They're getting that that extra combine in, and there we go. So they've got uh, eleven, just over eleven thousand available. Bridges raised and bale drop. Neither of these are particularly enticing for either team. So uh, yeah. Unfortunately, I was really hoping to see grain multiplier, but that's not the case here. So, um, yeah, this is going to be hard for Leitner. I mean, we can see now New Holland is unloading it. They're going to well stop the belt, as we can see. Bridges they raised. Unload more. Bridges raised going to be picked. And now it's going to be time for Leitner to go and start unloading at the same time. We can see New Holland, they were pressing the bales. There we go, that's the unloading operation. And at the same time, we can see New Holland also starting to unload. But Leitner, they, can, they cannot like they fully need recover from bales. that multiplier, but they can definitely you know, get something out of it. So it's going to be better than 1.3 for them. It's going to be maybe something like 1.8, 1.7. I don't bales. know what the actual situation. And that's going to be a lot of points for New Holland. Tita needs to get these on here, though. At the moment, that multiplier is going down constantly and not as many points have been scored as could have been. However, they are well over 100 points ahead now. And Lintner still have grain to deliver, but they're, they're not delivering it yet. And so do New Holland. New Holland are delivering more grain, getting it up to... 2.6 2.7 for those for that second bale um this is a massive amount of points that new holland are scoring while they have the multiplier uh that's mm. really really good for them and this is actually pretty there good we for go. them now i mean with the multiplier they still have 12k so they can bring it about close to two points i think they can actually bring it to 2.0 maybe 1.9 let's see it's got to be very close uh 1.8 okay it's no uh, original it's, oh that's awful for lintner yeah I'm a, but that's the best they can do yeah. so they were closing the gap that's by the 0 0.5 after the 1.3 and uh but this wasn't any more grain. So now they have to catch up somehow almost 200 points with the 1.8 multiplier. And that's got to be hard. That's hard, if, if not impossible. Uh, mm. they, they just have... They, they only have a three bale advantage at the moment. Um, that is not enough to even just close the gap to keep it equal 
with uh, with that multiplayer, let alone uh, catch up 200 points. Uh, New Holland now just need to deliver bales. Uh, Tita can go out and get bales at his leisure. He is in no danger at the moment. He can he can collect bales up and bring them in to score points. Uh, he's got uh, over four, well, nearly five minutes to do that. Mm. Yeah, this is so hard for Lindner. I mean, four, four and a half minutes, and we still have the four minute drops coming in, but the uh, still Lindner, I mean, uh, they probably would need to do some of that their combo magic or something like that to uh, to recover from this. Of course, it's going to be hard. They have 15 bales, and of course, you know, setting the bales to a right direction, that's going to take a lot of time, so it seems that they don't have time for it because they will decide to just start putting them on the belt, going to be collecting that 18, 18 points per bale. We can see the fourth minute uh, drop is just about to come as well. The sixth sense has been activated. And uh, yeah, now, I mean, if both teams will just continue delivering bales, for sure, Lidl is going to lose this one. So now, um, I mean, if they want to win this one, they will have to come up with something special, multiplier switch, which is going to help eventually for a time being, but it's only four points per bale. So I don't think it's going to be like a game changer here. Uh, Linda do have 30 odd seconds of the switch though. So that is, that is going to help them to a certain extent. Uh, it's whether New Holland holds off putting any bales in until the multiplier switch is back. Because, of course, they are losing four points for every bale they score at the moment. Mm. And, yeah, it is definitely ooh, something. Have you all missed I don't timed know that? Mm. Yeah, those will still go in. This New Holland have so, mistimed that a little bit. Yeah, but I, I think they... Did they get five or seven bales in with the multiplier? So it's either 20 or 28 points, which they gain from that. Yeah. So it's evidently not enough. Yeah, it, it isn't going to change much in the grand scheme of things. Uh, New Holland actually have more bales than Lintner now. So, um, yeah, that is that in the grand scheme of things. If every bale is scored, is is not going to change much. That's that's true. So we're going to be focusing already on the next game. <laughs> Any pancake yeah. tricks, Alex? Anything you come in mind? You want to you want to uh, try a second time to bring the 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 mother of all pancake jokes to the broadcast? I don't know. I I, I like making pancake jokes, but I, I I worry that all too often they fall flat. Hmm. <laughs> I see what she did there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, uh, quite many of the pancake shows they somehow include the flat in some some level. Um, but yeah, I think yeah. I, I mean, uh, last time when we had it on the broadcast, I think we just you know we were like flooded with the pancake jokes, also on the chat as well. So I think uh, I don't know, just need to come up with some new, uh, or maybe uh, use the ones that I have been saving for. But that might be tomorrow then. So let's wait for it. Well, it's it's um, it's finding it's finding um, some way to to flip them and come up with something that's a little bit different. Yeah, I tried that with my previous joke. <laughs> and, uh, all I got was just silence. So <laughs> in, I mean, in Finland, you have to we be have careful, it, uh... otherwise you're just continually going to get panned. Yeah. Yeah, we have this this uh, meme in Finland called Tonlin Seteli. I, I I cannot really explain, but that's that's how I pretty much felt after telling the joke. Maybe yeah, uh, if there's somebody <laughs> Toksut, for example, on the chat, maybe he understands what I mean. But yeah, let's focus on the game. So 200 points, 50 seconds, and as we can see, the situation with the bail counts is still the same. So that's not gonna change. Um, I mean, even if New Holland would stop delivering bales as we speak, the, the bales available for Lindner are not going to be enough to uh, close the gap, unfortunately. So we can already uh, say that this is a done deal. Of course, the teams, they want to try everything they can, but yeah, you know, they know that it's also 
uh, not making much of a difference, but they maybe want to benchmark, you know, maybe they're taking the stats, so, you know, they want to see something and how this works out in the end, like what is our maximum, what is what we can actually get from this kind of a strategy, how the bales are, like, you know, are they enough, or, you know, can we find something that we haven't, like, really seen on this strategy earlier? So you got to play it all the way till the end that you maybe, uh, you know, maybe you'll learn something new on the way as well, uh, especially on the, on the gaming environment. So there we go. Players are happy. We can see New Holland. They are smiling. Oh, yeah, there we go. The fist bumps are coming in as well. So now the scoreline is 1-1, and we're going to be heading for the third game of the series. So, yeah, um, very impressive play there from New Holland. Um, I think that the master bit was that uh, was doing the, the silo closed at the point they did. Uh, it just allowed them to get all that extra grain. I mean, there was an extra 6,000 litres of grain there for New Holland. They delivered an extra six bales as well, uh, and all of those into the top, uh, which shows why New Holland is such a good team, because that is, uh, that's as many bales as Trelleborg were delivering earlier. So, uh, yeah, it's a really good match, really good game. Uh, we now go to a third game. <laughs> there are, yeah, <laughs> there's no better than previous ones. Virtual Farmer, stop battering us with this deadpan comedy. <laughs> yeah, I, I read it, but I didn't want to say anything. <laughs> I didn't want to say anything about it, but yeah, I mean, instead of like telling the pancakes, I'm just uh, pancake jokes. I'm just wondering why these guys they don't have pancakes like you know next to the computers. Where's all the all the food they need? I mean, it would be definitely fun to have the players, you know. They are, they, we are talking about the pancakes. We are, uh, you know, making jokes about the pancakes. Everybody wants to have pancakes, but there's still like this: there were no pancakes anywhere available for the time being. I mean, uh, people are writing on the chat. Yeah, I just had my pancakes. I had my morning pancakes, afternoon pancakes. I mean, Alex is having pancakes with his tea, but yeah, we never see that. So what I want to see is proof. Proof, proof of pancakes. Well, there, there will be, I, I'm going to have savory pancakes for breakfast tomorrow morning. So uh, pancakes, bit of maple syrup over the top and uh, a couple of uh, rashers of bacon. Absolutely fantastic. Bacon and pancakes. OK. I mean, oh, bacon, idea. bacon and pancakes. Fantastic. I, I did it for the FSL a couple of streams ago. Um, and uh, and yeah, absolutely fantastic. Mm. Well, worth, well worth trying. Um, we yeah, are just... waiting for a couple of players to join the game. Well, there we go. Here That's we the go. third game that is starting. So let's see uh, how this is going to go. So this is the final deciding match between New Holland and Lindner. And whoever's going to win this one, uh, they will be, of course, staying on the upper bracket. And the one that's going to uh, lose... They're going to draw on the lower bracket, and the losing team will be facing Trelleborg tomorrow. So uh, it's not maybe the uh, it's not maybe what the people want. So maybe uh, you know trying to stay on the upper bracket, kind of like winning the uh, the, the group of mm. their own. That's going to guarantee that he will have a let's say an easier opponent for tomorrow. And uh, yeah, we'll see. Oh, it's gonna go, but yeah, we, we can see a... they are following the same line. The telehandlers are banned already, yeah. at, at least Massive Ferguson, and the second one should be popping any second now. Yeah, they're gonna ban the other telehandler, and yes, yeah, it's not the greatest surprise. <laughs> Usually, when you see one. You will see the second shortly after. We did see a, a point earlier in the season where Trelleborg just weren't batting anything. Mm. And going for a a, a a disruptive way that way. Yeah, if Linda can kind of like um, re-execute the strategy which they did on the first game, uh, and you know, kind of like you know, follow that. Of course, that's that's wanting, 
but the um, I mean they gotta get the first bail right. So and, and we have seen quite big of a differences on the first bail. So um, I think Lidner they need to improve on that. I mean they lost thirty points. It wouldn't have made a difference on the game, but the first bail is definitely something that they, where they need to shine a little bit more. And after the first bail, just you know very strictly stick on your plan. And uh, of course, if there's got to be a, like more disruptive drops, I think they were a little bit late collecting that drop, to be honest. Um, so they didn't like mirror the strategy which New Holland was doing there at that moment. And that's what, when the difference happened with the, with the multipliers and with the grain and also with the, uh, with the amount of bales being pressed because they need to spend some more time on the fields before they can start doing the bales. So I think that's uh, that's one of those key moments that they have to like reconsider how they work in a similar situations in the future. And they're away, and it looks like New Holland are going for the New Holland Baylor, while Lindner are going for the Coon Baylor. I think they might have misidentified it as the case because. I think I saw New Holland going for the case bailer down the bottom as well. No, it's gone to Lindner. Mm. So that looks like a slight advantage there to uh, New Holland. Uh, sorry, to Lindner as far as the bailers go. Uh, because although they're doing the first bail, uh, bail with this one. That's good. Uh, yeah, I mean, they have been definitely listening to us. Less to press. They have been listening oh, yeah. us. They are making now the first bail, and that, this is looking very good. I mean, this should be like 140 something if they're going to get the swing inside, and if they're going to reverse, it's going to be still a very good bail. So let's see. He's going to try to swing that on. He's going to try to reverse that. It's going to be 139, maybe 40. 38, 38. Oh, yeah. 38. So that's very close, and that's a good, uh, good first bail. So uh, we can see they're, they're even smiling a little bit as we can see. There's like a smirking with the camera. And Hayden is coming now, and this is going to be one hundred twenty something. So there's, there's definitely a favor or, or or like a point advantage currently for Lindner. It's it's actually a pretty big one. It's going to be twenty eight points. Oh, sorry, eighteen points. Eighteen points. So less than a bail. Less than a bail. One point nine. Uh, zero point nine bail. Or ninety percent of a bail. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. I mean, uh, oh, we can just try to uh, somehow Eugene, calculate my, it. My kitchen, well. my kitchen is not clean enough to appear on a uh, on a live stream. <laughs> yeah, that's that's something that I have, I'm worried I have myself as well. <laughs> yeah, I I mean, I have my sons. They have been at home today, uh, partly on their own. And uh, I did prepare some food for them in the morning. And then they have been just, just like heating that up. And uh, they, I think they had lunch themselves. So I'm a bit worried in which shape I will find the kitchen when I get back home. Um, but yeah, that's why there's going to be like a couple hours between the broadcast yes. and the, and the yeah. cooking stream. <laughs> Give you a chance and to I have time to up. clean up. Uh, I need to go to the grocery store as well to buy some uh, Something, some, something, something that I can use for the cooking, and then, then we gotta be pretty much ready. And as, actually, during the break, when I was like two matches away, I got my burger. But then I also, also did prepare the stream layouts for my for my gaming laptop that I'm gonna be using in the kitchen. <laughs> Which is raised and herbicide. Looks like both teams are ignoring it, though. Uh, New Holland do have one advantage in that they have both of the ideal combines. So, yeah, they have... Uh, this is why they're sitting there with a lot more grain on the field at the moment. And Hayden has arrived first. He's going to drop off that first load of grain. And, uh, and then we'll be right back out there on the field. And this is once again interesting. Linter has been pressing a couple bales. So I think we saw them making, was it four bales at that one game when they didn't like really use them at the moment. But, you know, pressing a couple bales at the start, it, it, it's something that we, we don't see happening that often. So there's got to be a reason for it. Uh, or maybe the, it's just accidental. That's why we're here. Let's not press some, let's, let's press some bales. 
but the uh, they know the importance of the game they will start unloading it we can see that the multipliers they are not really uh, blinking at all at this moment they will stay about the same if if alex approves about the other size of the bars <laughs> yep i i think those are are two identical length bars because they the result of two identically empty full uh, overloaders <laughs> And then we can see New Holland just working on the fields. So the grain collection is happening as we speak. Uh, Tita is just following there. And uh, well, let's see yep. how this is going to so work in the end. He's going to just change the turns. And yeah. Empty. Yeah, and then restart. Does cost a few moments doing that. Has there been any like a natural development? I mean, farmers they probably would make a good pilot so who can like you know fuel the uh, the fighter jets on the air. There's <laughs> the similarities with this operation. Careful, uh, maybe careful positioning. Although in or all maybe, fairness, maybe I mean if imagine. You, uh... Let's go on. If you miss the trailer, then. Uh... The, uh, the grain doesn't tend to explode. Hmm. Yeah, I'm just wondering when the, while the guys are going like that. So maybe, what if the trailer would be like, a, you know, somebody's mouth and then, you know, from the combine there would be just pancakes coming out of it. <laughs> I mean, uh... it could be a thing, right? Just like we uh, had a discussion about the bomb <laughs> being a I just, head of I Alex. I don't know where to go with that. I honestly don't know where to go with that. <laughs> well, you don't have to. Luckily, I'm here. <laughs> okay, 18 points. Uh, We're closing on 8-minute drops. We can see that the grain... I mean, yes, New Holland has been collecting a little bit more of it. But there's uh, about about 10k of the difference. So we'll see if they're going to end up with the same, same counts. And if there's going to be some... Let's say like a grain multiplier, if that's going to come. Uh, or a silo closed. I mean, yeah, that 10k of difference is actually closing down all the time. So no, no, it's gonna matter. Both teams will have about the same amount of grain when the drops are coming in. So the uh, the options, what they can use with the drops with the grain, uh, the options are pretty much the same as well. And uh, that's about it. So 10 seconds, and then we know. It's gonna come down, I think, pretty much to. Uh, amount of bail so here we go lindner are surpassing at the moment in fact no they've got a roughly the same amount as uh, as new holland have of grain which is slightly surprising seeing as new holland have had that uh have, have got both the ideals now uh, immediately when the drops came we haven't seen the drops yet but immediately new holland started to unload so we know that there was no grain multiplier that we know um let's see what's actually in there but maybe we'll see that later but maybe nothing disruptive for the moment the other thing is that there would be some kind of like a silo close or something but new holland hasn't gone for it when they started to unload so that like hints there was Direct a, was delivery a bail and... drop and i think it was a bail drop the other Correct. one and uh, so bail drops and direct delivery neither of which are particularly useful to teams so either team mm. So nothing that special, and uh, none, I mean both of the teams they haven't really picked anything. They're just unloading it. They had about the same amount of grain before all this started, so they should be ending up with the 2.0 multiplier still. And uh, I mean after that, it's just about delivering the bales more or less, depending what's going to come from the super drop. But yeah, this seems to be one of those like very close series at the end where there's like the only gap what currently exists is from the first bail and that is 18 points and as soon as the linder is going to unload that 30 28 k of grain then yeah the 2.0 should apply and new holland uh, i don't think that they have the time to utilize the multiplier which they had the 2.4 for a time being they have a they have an opportunity now if they can get bales on this conveyor they can score it at 2.2 before let us restart their grain and they do have some bales on there uh, nope. it is no not quite 
and then they're out of grain so now it is just a straight race to the finish new holland mm. with uh they did have a one bell advantage they now have a 50 point advantage or a 42 point advantage sorry mm. and uh yeah if it's bail for bail at this point and new holland are going to take it uh if there are well if there's no bail tastics or multipliers or anything Oops. like that so um this is going to be close yeah, it's going to be close, but I mean, New Holland, those bales which they got inside, I mean, Lindner has been up putting some bales on the belt as well, so we'll see. I mean, it's going to be definitely close. And, and once again, we have been speaking quite a bit about the efficiency, but I, I, I'm not going to lie, that's going to be the case this time as well. So, but one thing that we haven't really seen lately are, I mean, we haven't seen that many mistakes happening today. Of course, people know that they are in the World Championships and you know, Grand Finals of those, so it's not really a time or a place to make mistakes. But we haven't seen those happening that much, at least on a level that they would have been like hugely affecting the end result. We saw Linda on the first game of this series making a mistake here on the bridge, but they still won it, so that's a, that's a good sign. But, yeah, you know, those mistakes that actually caused the game for the team, we haven't seen that, those. So, a little, a little bit ahead now on uh, by about 18 points. So, that is first bail difference. Uh, but New Holland have a five bail advantage. So, already mm. New Holland pulling ahead on those bails. And, uh, mm. and now uh, Tita is coming on here and loading these up. We're about to find out what the four minutes drop is. It's going to drop over here or at the other location. It is bottom boost. Now, this Ooh. could be huge for Lintner or, in fact, either team. Lintner are not going to get it. It's gone to Hayden, bottom boost for New Holland. there's going to be a combo coming up from the New Holland side at the same time as well. They have 5 out of 10 currently and uh, 6 out of 10. And if they can just put these on the first floor so, now, Tita, Tita is not really realizing it. Yes, it he's the he doesn't know it. He doesn't know that they have the bottom boost and now he's going to, now he's going to realize Fisherman. it. And that, that's the... Oh... No, he didn't get the combo. There was a bail coming from Linda at the same right. time. It was a great try. But still, he can just shove this inside, and that's going to be uh, helping quite a bit. Shove so it's going to be out of work soon. Seconds. Yeah, these three bales inside, and he has nothing to do for a while before the team is going to be delivering no. bales. Okay, then he'll go and pick it up himself. <laughs> oh. I don't understand why they, he didn't just swing around and stick those in the bottom. He could have gone straight out, grabbed more bales, and, uh, and, and scored more points. A little bit weird, because he's going to go out and do that anyway. There's got to be something on the playbook of the manager or the coach about this. <laughs> At least on the next game. Maybe it's a communication issue that, you know, they, for example, Tita didn't know that they have the bottom boost. Like somebody forgot to uh, give him the memo. Zerstrus now trying to load this up. 480 to 408. And yeah, Tita is out there picking up bales. So uh, mm. lost valuable seconds loading up that conveyor when he had bottom boost. They could have mm. got these bales in faster. And it's only a 12 points of a difference now, suddenly. And uh, we can see Linher actually might, the he, they will take anyway? the lead with these bales. They will take the lead, at least for the time being. So they will take the 18-point advantage back to them. But, of course, there's going to be more bales coming from New Holland. We can see the bail counts. They're going to be working on the New Holland's advantage. But, I mean, both teams just have to uh, put all the bales on the belt. And we might end up with a situation that New Holland, they might need to put something on the first floor. But look at that. That's four bales. Which he has there. And he's going to nicely just put two of them there. Then going to put the other two. And that is that is efficient. Put them into the lead, those bales. Easily. Uh, still 11 bales to six. New Holland need to score these bales to keep this lead. Yeah, no matter, no matter what's going to happen, it's going to be getting close. Um, but yeah, New Holland, I think they, they have a pretty good hold of the lead position. 
But let's see, the final minute is going to start. We have eight bales for both of the teams remaining. New Holland is leading by 90 points. Now we have a couple bales coming for Lindner. They need to put more of those. That looks a little bit problematic, what he's currently doing. The bale on that top, does. it's a bit on the side. It looks a little bit unstable, to be honest. And that could be that one bale that's going to be dropping off the belt. We can see at the same time, just the faster route is going to be used by Loiko. Tita put in the final belt and yes the top bale is gonna fall down from that belt so that's definitely a problem for Leibner because 25 seconds and if there's gonna be any more bales on that scene uh, it's gonna be he, he needs to do something with it but I, I don't yeah they will just put some of them on the first floor and there's no way that oh. Leibner is gonna be catching on New Holland anymore no that's that's not surmountable at this point Tita getting that bale in the bottom uh 750 to 718 in the final second new holland make it through in straight games and will now definitely not face trelleborg at best mm. until the final so uh yeah that is uh that is a crucial win for new holland that really mm. is yeah. and uh lindner now going into the uh, loser bracket um, we'll be playing the winner of the next game between uh, Dirk Enfield and Voltra um, to uh, to keep their grand final hopes alive. Uh, mm. 34 bales delivered by New Holland to 32 for Lintner. Um, almost identical amounts of grain, um, identical amounts with multipliers. Yeah, it's it's pretty much uh, it was pretty much a straight shot. Extra bales won that for uh, for New Orleans. Yeah, I mean the gap was in the end was like a forty eight points or something like that. So uh, I still still think that it was. Uh... I mean, it was very hard for Lindner to win that, but the gap could have been even more for New Holland. So, you know, in a way, uh, I think Lindner did a great job. But yeah, New Holland, they deserve the place to be on the next stages right away, kind of like win the group B and proceeding to the next stages. And now we just have to wait and see how much how much Lindner can find the pace for the next game. But I mean, just like you said, they're not yet out of the tournament, so they will just drop to the lower bracket and then we'll see how they will perform there and should they claim the place on the... Uh, on the grand final, uh, for example, tomorrow in a different match, they have to face, uh, well, of course, they have to win first the Group B's another game. But then if they're going to win that one, then they will be facing off with Trelleborg tomorrow. And uh, that's going to be one hard game. But anyways, uh, this is done. We went all the way to the three matches and uh, we still have one game to go. We do. And uh, you and Kermit are going to take that game. I'm going to take a, uh, a short break. Um, it's going to be a good game. You've you've got Dirk Enfield versus Voltra, um, two good teams who have uh, have fought really hard to get into these finals. Uh, so, so yeah, one of them is going to be going out at the end of the next match. Um, who who would your money be on? Um, I would love to say Voltra, but I'm going to go with the uh, with the Diatka. I, I think on balance, I would probably go the same. They've had a stronger back end of the season than Voltra have. So, uh, yeah, that, that would not surprise me to see uh, Diot go around that. But I'm going to leave you here for now. I will see you at the end and I will leave you in Kermit and Copter's hands. See you in a bit.
All right, we're back. Uh, Kermit here with you. Maddie's with me. We're going to do this interview really quickly first. It's nice that we have the players back in the studio so we can do these. Three tough matches for you, New Holland against Lindner. Congratulations on getting through. How was it for you? They uh, Lindner improved a lot, uh, their game, and it was really tough. Throughout the season, they've gotten better and better. And uh, they were ready for the world championship. We really couldn't afford any mistakes. In the first game, Linder started off better, getting the Harvester, beating us to the punch. It was impossible uh, for us to give up because they played really clean and, and did really good. What else to say? You can actually hear they're they're doing this in English as well. We didn't do any mistakes on game two or game three. We played our game and our tactics. This is how we win. There was a lot of pressure. We didn't know until the last minutes if we were going to win. It was really tough for us. I think the next matches will be great. And Thank you very much, basically. Congratulations. See you tomorrow. Yep. So New Holland are our second team uh, into the semifinals automatically by winning both of their matchups. And we're going to have a look at the highlights now. Copter, you're here with us still. Tell us how you felt in this first round. Linder came out and uh, I think surprised everyone by taking it. Oh, yeah, I, I mean, definitely they surprised us a little bit. I mean, they're... I mean, we have said it multiple times. They are kind of like the dark horse of, of the tournament. They have came up with the uh, multiple different kind of strategies. We saw them entertaining us on the early match today, and uh, they definitely did entertain us here as well. Um, yeah, I, I was, you know, in a way, I mean, there, there's no reason why they couldn't have win uh, one more game out of these three as well, either the second or the third. So, in a way, I mean, they, they have a lot of chances. I'm, I wouldn't be surprised that if they're going to challenge, you know, uh, maybe some of these teams later. We'll see how they will pro, how their games will go on the lower bracket uh, uh, tomorrow. So, then we'll see where they're going to end up and who they're going to be playing with. But, yeah, I, I think uh, no matter who's going to be the opponent, they have to be careful with this team. Right. And, and it's good to see New Holland actually giving Lindner credit because... I think you kind of saw it. They were a little bit surprised by how that first round went. And they did have to, like they said in the interview there, they had to they had to come back and bring their A game because they couldn't afford to make any mistakes. And both Linder and Bednar, really, so far today, um, they both have lost those second matchups against Trelleborg and New Holland, respectively. But like they've shown, they've made a really good showing of themselves and proved that, like, really, they're the team that you have to beat in that second chance bracket. They don't have to play that extra game down there. Like we're about to see uh, Deaka Anfeld and Vulture playing for the right to go up against Lindner in Group B tomorrow. So um, good showing by Lindner for sure. Good bounce back by New Holland and into the semifinals. And I think Alex really got the importance of New Holland turning this around. He got it absolutely right in the fact that if they're going to face Trelleborg in the World Championships now, New Holland, it's going to be in the final at the earliest. So if both teams make it to that point, we'll have a rematch of the past couple of tournament finals for the Season 4 World Championship. So that is a pretty big result in, in avoiding Trelleborg until that point, if you can make it that far. I just love, well, I don't love it, but, you know, it's it's funny how we think, talk about these, that, you know, you can make long, you can make, like, all the last stages of the tournament if you don't face Trelleborg earlier than that, so, <laughs> I mean, I mean, yeah. if, if any team has, like, the, like the scare factor, it's the Trelleborg, the Borg. 
Right, the Borg. Yeah, and I think I mean New Holland and Trelleborg both are are the favorite teams to beat. They they're the only teams to win tournaments this season. So um, yeah, you know they're they're definitely the favorites. And now it's kind of shaping up if they both win tomorrow in their semifinals that uh, they'll be facing off against each other. So we'll we'll see how it plays out. We still have this next match to go, and then we've still got the two second chance uh, finals basically to get into the semifinals and be runner up in each group well there we go it's the vulture players that they have their coach as well so it seems that they have taken a bit of a model from the uh, how new holland has been playing i don't think that we saw the coach on the first time when they came here they only had the three players so now the coach is there as well so they are now maybe knowing more information that you can actually take the coach all the way to the stage and i think it's really an important thing that the coaches are showing as well as as in 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 all the esports i think coaches are usually kind of left behind a little bit they're not so visible characters but they're very crucial and important part of the team so in a way i do enjoy that the, the coaches are also visible even though they just go there you know give a couple pointers you know final tap on the shoulder and that about it but there we go that is the uh Jatka, as they are coming in, the guys who I earlier claimed that they when they come to the stage, it's more like a, a football tournament scene. I mean, these guys are just athletic. Well, they do um, come, they do play for a uh, football team, uh, and it's the same name as the team name, Diaka Ehrenfeld, I believe. Uh, they're in the academy of this team, so this isn't just an esports team, but also uh, a football club as well. So uh, I think you're uh, you're spot on in that assessment, and that's exactly why. Uh, and they do kind of have that uh, swagger about them as you see them coming out, and uh, of course got the Nike sponsored uh, jersey coming out too. Uh, so looking fresh in it for sure. But now they're up against it, and they've got to perform. One of these teams moves on. And the others tournament ends right here. So earlier we saw Astragon become the first team eliminated. And one of these two teams will join them in elimination. So we've got the fourth seed from the regular season standings in Deaka Ehrenfeld taking on the seventh seed in Voltra. Um, so can Voltra cause the upset? We're about to find out. It is a best of three. When we get to the final tomorrow, by the way, guys, if you're not aware, it will be a best of five. So... Uh, imagine if that goes all the way to the fifth game. That'll be absolutely crazy to see. It's going to take three wins in the final to win the Season 4 championship. So, Copter, uh, how are you feeling about this? Do you, do you think Vulture can pull off the upset? I know you said that you were leaning towards Deaka, but maybe what does Vulture have to do to be able to pull off this upset? Yeah, I mean, when Alex asked the question, I said that, the uh, of course, in a way, I'm like, you know, uh, as a Vulture, as, as a Finnish company, in a way, I'm, of course, like cheering for them. But the, uh, so my heart is on, on the side of Vulture. I'm, I'm not going to lie on that one. But if you really think about the odds, I think the, the Yatka is, you know, they are looking stronger. But there's no reason. I mean, Vulture, they can, they still have what it takes to pull that off. So uh, I don't know if it's going to be an upset or not. But just saying that, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of like favoring the Yatka to proceed. But then both teams still have a chance. So it's not like Mission Impossible for Vultra. Right. And in fact, like um, Vultra, it's interesting because they have been able to get into the semifinal round twice. And that's where they went out in the regular season. So they were on 100 points. They don't have any instances where they made it to a Sunday event in the regular season and lost straight away. Uh, meanwhile, Deaka Ehrenfeld, they have made it into three semifinals and they have uh, one uh, quarterfinal knockout appearance as well and they finished with 180 points. We're into the captain pick phase now and pretty similar setups. The only difference being that Ehrenfeld have gone with the Case Baylor and Voltra have gone with the John Deere Baylor as well. Um Shout out to everybody in chat joining us today. We appreciate you all hanging out with us. This is our last match of today. We'll uh, have a little brief end segment where Virtual Farmer is going to rejoin us on the broadcast and we'll get you kind of set up for tomorrow's final event of Season 4. And, of course, we'll have six matches throughout the day tomorrow starting at 10 a.m. Central European time as well. Uh, okay, now, player pick phase. 
a little bit of a different uh, selections to begin with. And there is that JCB fast track. And we were talking about this earlier with the Voltra and the Massey band. It is the only stacker remaining that is powerful enough to pull the Baylors. And uh, so we are now seeing it. We Alex kind of talked about some teams are reluctant to pick this because it can be a little bit unwieldy. Um, but we are seeing Vulture go with it here. So they are going to have two stackers, whereas Anfeld only have one going with the Deutschfar and the Vulture going with the bigger tractors with the out, without the stackers on the front. All right, here we go. Copter, we're underway. The battles at the pod begins. Yeah, there we go. The usual battles because if all we winning the new Holland from there. Let's see what, what he's going to be, of course, taking as an alternative. And this is going to be the group Folvi and Gepi, who's going to go for the first bail. So they are just heading straight towards the, the barn. And this is actually looking pretty good for Ehenfeld. So they are just starting to press the, the first bail. I think Voltra, well, we don't see them for now, but they're going to be a little bit further. And I think they took a bit more time to find the utilities for it as well. And now when JP is going to be right away uh, engaging, there we go, away. That's going to be still 15 seconds. And then we can see Voltra's situation. That's going to be pretty, pretty far away. But that's going to be uh, taking some of, some of a time. But I mean, Diatka, uh, they should be getting uh, 140 something bail. Let's see, even if he's going to reverse that in, it should be like 140, maybe two or three depending from various things. Okay, 141, but still more than 140. So that's always good. So they will definitely start it with a bang. And now we can see Søren from Vulture's side gonna take the, uh, I mean, Kermit's lovely, safer route. We can see a bit of a sliding there <laughs> happening, actually, as we say it. But the, uh, they're gonna be losing a lot of points here. Well, not really losing, Ooh, they're just not gaining as too. much. But still, it's like 120, 118, okay. Um, so that's uh, that's a bit of a big of a difference. Uh, that's more than one bail. Yeah, that's a, a good start by Ehenfeld for sure. Uh, long way to go still in this first round, and you got to win two of, out of three to advance here. The loser will go out at this stage. It's been a good first day of the season four finals, and you know it, we still have a lot more to take shape. After today, we're only going to have two teams confirmed for the semifinal and still have two more to be confirmed tomorrow to kick things off. And then we'll get into the business end of the tournament this weekend where a lot is going to be at stake. As soon as you get into the semifinal, you're one matchup win away from making it to the final. So all of a sudden, the pressure is increased. The quality of your opponent, presumably, is increased as well. So uh, these two teams have a chance to stay alive here and there's definitely a lot at stake yeah i think the first day has been definitely good i'm i'm quite impressed actually about how well we have been keeping up with the schedule when you have eight teams uh you know offline on the same venue and and the, I, I i mentioned that earlier when the people are chasing you know mouse well they're not really changing mouses and keyboards i don't know if they are actually using their own or are they using the ones that's going to be provided by the studio but still you have to put your own settings and stuff like that so that is pretty well handled i was last week i was covering the uh csgo major in rio and uh i think there was a technical break of 90 minutes on the first day after the first game and oh um my. And the whole broadcast started, uh, it was like uh, four o'clock on the afternoon finish time. And there were so many technical breaks that the broadcast ended 5.30 in the morning. Oh so my goodness. <laughs> I'm definitely happy that the, uh, you know, things are going more smoothly on here because the, uh, every time when you have like a big stadium event or something, something like that, and then you have a new organizer, okay, this is not new organizer and so on, but you know, technical breaks can happen. So, I mean, I think things are running pretty smoothly on Farming Simulator all the time. I mean, we, very rarely we do have technical breaks. And if there's technical break, it's usually because of an internet connection or something like that. So, so uh, I'm right. really happy how well this event and actually all the online tournaments have been running this year. Yeah, and I'm actually really surprised with how smoothly things went this season with every tournament up until now taking place <laughs> online um, we had teams 
early on competing from places like South Africa that had some issues with their connection, Australia as well. We had them not able to compete a couple of times. But SGA, for example, out of North America, were able to, uh, even with a little bit of a difference in ping, compete. And they came within a shout. Uh, it would have taken, you know, an advancement last month and they would have been able to face off in that eighth place decision. They weren't able to pull it off in the end. Uh, but they gave a good showing of themselves in the first season of the Farming Simulator League. And it's becoming more of a worldwide thing. But yeah, it's definitely nice when we can have these events in our studio, especially because, uh, you know, the team there, they know the studio well. They know that uh, the connection is reliable, for example because I can speak from experience of being at TwitchCon in San Diego and trying to stream from that event. Um, you, it, it was a struggle. The internet was not great at the venue and uh, not something that you would hope to see from an event like TwitchCon that is uh, focused literally around live streaming, but it can happen, of course. It can happen. I mean, it's just, it's always hard for me to understand it, to be honest. I mean, I'm blessed with the good connections here. I mean, Finland is known to have probably the best connections in the world. We have like 5G coverage in the whole country and, you know, fibers everywhere. So it's really hard for me to imagine that. And of course, the mobile networks are very well equipped as well. So even if there's like a large event, you know, on a stadium or something like that, the, uh, everything is still working. But that's a different discussion. It's, it's all, but there's always like, a, you know, random things can happen and, uh, you know, being able to, I like to take precautions and, and be prepared for everything. That's that's like, you know, part of an organizing an event. So uh, definitely a huge thanks to the technical staff of, the, of Giant Software from being so uh, well prepared for almost everything that has came on the way. But anyways, back to the game. Eight minutes and 45 seconds to go. And we can see a couple bales have been pressed. A grain has been collected. Uh, there was nothing significant on the 12 minute drops. And now we are closing on the eight minute drops and uh, of course i mean i wouldn't mind i mean we have been having so many uh you know silo closed today but they haven't been really that impactful so i would like to see like a huge disruptive drop coming in that that you know that would change the gameplay for the rest the rest of the minutes for this at uh, this one single match and they are just about to come in 10 seconds yeah, I mean, this is the point where the round can start to take more of a shape if it is something extremely disruptive. Um, we did see in the uh, Astragon matchup where they were knocked out earlier um, that it can very much happen. Um, and if Silo Closed is picked up and you're able to deliver some grain quickly before your opponent can get it, which is what Vulture are attempting to do here, they are delivering grain and at the same time picking it up. And uh, Diaka does a little quick drive by. I didn't even see him hop out of the tractor there almost. <laughs> it was like the flash. It was so quick. Hopping out and back in. That was great work. But yeah, this is the moment. Now, Vulture, if they can get some bales in, they're going to score 23 points per bale. And they still have it lasting for just about another minute or so. So this is a moment that they need to take advantage of. Yeah, definitely. But yeah, there we go. So yeah, 2.3 multiplier. So that is something that they can definitely use. Let's see if they're going to be prepared for it. They had some bails. So they, in a way, they do have a chance of taking advantage of it. And 50 seconds should be plenty of time to go and deliver some bails. So now we just wait if they're going to go for it. We can see at Yatka, meanwhile, they're just going to press bales. I mean, there's nothing else they can do for the moment. Doesn't make sense to deliver them because they are kind of like having a, a low multiplier. They have one bale already. So, I mean, that's one bale, by the way. It kind of like, you know, tells the story that they had a plan that if they're going to pick the silo class, they had everything ready to go for the pawn and just like start unloading those with the belt. But they just, you know, didn't get the drop, unfortunately. And uh, now they have to wait for a while. But yeah, it's not going to be long. I mean, it's just 15 seconds and we haven't seen any bales on the belt. So maybe they are not going to go for it because we can see all the players right here as we speak on the fields. One just passed, one is in the front. Uh, so they're not going to go for it. But the Yatka at the same time, they will just, you know, start moving the, the bales towards the belt and they're going to be ready to start pouring it. Oh, they no. did it by the way. Oh, oh no! Fally. What is that? Just, I mean, he just literally Fally fall went fall down Fally. water. Oh no. 
That's not good. And unable as well, Voltra, to take advantage of that situation where they had the multiplier in their favor. And Volwi is in big trouble here. And the bales are under the water as well. They are recoverable. He's able to get the tractor pretty much unstuck. The bales are kind of in his way. Wow. Okay. That's not yeah, what you want to do when the ba your back's against the wall here. Yeah, I'm a bit of a tractor break dancing. And then, I mean, I just love how the, <laughs> how the weight is like, you know, flipping back to the tractor. <laughs> I would imagine that that is something <laughs> what the real farmers are just, you know, dreaming about. That, oh, I wish it would be that easy. <laughs> yeah, uh, I have no doubt. I've been at events where we have our bale sacking challenge uh, at the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo earlier this year. And uh, we saw real farmers with their kids there and the kids run up and want to play the bale sacking challenge and they're crashing crashing tractors into trailers while they're trying to stack and there was one dad in particular that was like all right get this all out of your system now son uh because if you do this at, at home that's about twenty thousand dollars worth of damage right there so we don't want that happening <laughs> that's 25k it's not much uh oh oh a little shaky almost made the again, same mistake Bali. That was close, but I mean, we can see the immediate results of that fall on the score. So we can see that they have eight more bales that they haven't delivered. Oh, nice so they counter been though. Delivering any of the bales? Yeah, the counter, uh, counter combo came from there. There was just one bale away for Walter getting a combo. But I mean, the Yatska, they need to start getting these bales on the belt. So they have been, of course, losing a lot of time on that accident. We can see bottom boost, and that's going to help on that. So this is if the Yatska can actually get this one, that's going to help quite a bit with the uh, recovering from that situation which they had on the, on the safer route. So they will need that. But I mean, they have the bales in a way. So, and, and that's why they don't have that many points because they haven't been just, you know, able to put those bales on the belt as they were just, you know, trying to uh, uh, mimic a fish. Looks like uh, Anfeld are gonna get this. It doesn't look like uh, Vulture are even attempting to go for it. Overrunning it that time was Jeppy. Uh, this could be helpful because it's gonna allow them to it very is. quickly catch up in the score line. Falwi has three on the front of the Lindner right now. So this is going to be 60 points. With the bottom boost, you get the same amount into the bottom while it's active as you would into the top. So the multiplier still comes into play here. And there is another three with 20 seconds that you should get in. And in fact, there's a fourth one sitting there that may be able to be pushed in along with these three. So then you're talking about 80 points right here. And this is going to be enough if he gets them in in time, he's got five seconds. He adjusts that one, and that puts Anfeld into the lead now. Um, now they've got to focus on their bail count because they're trailing by three bales. So that would be enough for Vulture to get back into the lead now. But definitely, Copter, an important moment for Anfeld to get that bottom boost super drop to get back into it. Mm. Yeah, they're now back on the game. They're a couple bales behind but i wouldn't keep that as a huge problem for the moment because there's still time to press some more of them so i mean when you look at the scores you look at the bale counts you look at what's happening it seems to be a quite close series maybe things are a little bit maybe uh i would say that on the diatka side things are not so organized as i would love to see they had one bale next to the bridge which fall when the uh fall we was flipping on on the safer route um, so in a way, they might need to do a bit more work around the area to get those bales inside. But still two minutes to go, so it's going to be a tough call. It's so close as the multiplier is the same. But there's that two point of difference. So Valtra has uh, 423 right. and then the 401. So there's, you know, that even those 22 points, you have to get a couple more, one bale more inside than the other one just to come up with that two point of difference. I give Valtra the advantage right now as well because they're in the lead and they did choose that JCB, so they have a second stacker. So they are bringing in extra bales with every trip out into the field and back to the barn. So Anfeld having that disadvantage of only one stacker, uh, they're going to find it hard to catch up here because they're only able to bring bales in on the back of their balers and they're not getting two extra in on the front of the the front loader of the tractors so yeah we've talked about this a couple of times today and we talked about why teams often 
kind of uh, ignore picking the JCB because not many teams really favor it. But Voltra showing here that it that it can be rather effective. And you see now, like Falwi is going to go collect that one that was uh, dropped near the entryway on the safer route. And I just don't see a way with 30 seconds to go for Ehrenfeld to get back into this because if they were able to get all eight of those bales out there, they could do it uh, just about. But I don't think they're going to get all of their bales delivered. Yeah, they're going to be running out of and time. And in fact, that they're going to have to put some in the bottom. It's going to pick that up and it's going to put that back on the belt. It's going to drive it actually all the way inside. At least that's the plan. Because well, he, he can't dropped quite away get up. and only a couple seconds. I think he actually had the time, but the uh, yeah, we'll see the reaction. Man. So we can see that the Vulture actually won it, at least based on the faces. It was definitely a close call, as we can see the uh, the shaky. He's a little hand. nervous. <laughs> These guys are a bit smiling as well. Uh, we don't see like a huge smile or celebrations. Maybe now the faces are turning a little bit like like. <laughs> well, what just right. happened? But the uh, okay, so it wasn't that close in the end. Yeah, I mean, it was it was a tough mo if without that bottom boost, I think Anfeld would have been even further behind because they probably would have been left with even more bales undelivered. Even with those three undelivered, if they it wouldn't have been quite enough to get them back into it. But again, showing kind of the importance if you're trailing at the end of a round and you only have one stacker. You're going to struggle, I think, to be able to match the amount of bales that you're getting in. And bales sitting out in the field or on the back of a baler or anywhere that, and uh, anywhere other than in the barn do not do you any good. You can press as many as you want, but you don't get any points until you put them into the barn. Yeah, true. I mean, and, of uh, course, that mistake didn't help. I mean, yes, we said that the uh, they kind of like had more bales because of that, but also they lost some time like pressing the bales as well. So uh, I, I guess right. that's the end result. If they would have been able to put those three bales inside, they would have been still some points away from Valtra. So it wasn't just about those three right. bales; they also lost on something else. But there wasn't like much of a, like strategical errors compared to the enemy or the opponent. So in a way, it was like a quite tight series, and I would say that that one mistake costed them quite heavily. Yeah, and uh, Anfeld even got the 30 bonus points for countering the bail tastic So take that away, and the, the score is a little bit further behind for them as well. So mm -hmm. for them, I mean, coming into this, they were the fourth seed. And Vulture, the seventh seed, have a chance now to stay alive if they win this next round. But for Anfeld, they are now up against it. They can't afford any slip-ups here. They need to start this next round very strong and have consistent play throughout and clean up some of those errors that they had. I'm interested to see if they're going to go with the same strategy now. Are they going to stick to the bigger tractors instead of that second stacker? Or will they switch things up and try to match what I would assume uh, Vulture are going to do again and get that second mm. stacker? It's starting to show how important it is especially in these closely fought contests in the world championships. I think when, when the strategies were that, or, or, the, or the score situation was that close and kind of like, you know, small things like that mistake here and then uh, that combo counter, I'm just, I think that these strategies and how the teams are playing, they're very close to each other. And uh, I mean, in a way, changing a strategy now, I would... I, w I would keep it myself as a mistake because, I mean, Ehenfeld, they know that if they, with very minor tweaks to that strategy, they could have won it. And Walter, they are feeling good that they won it with that strategy. So I don't really see that they want to take a risk of changing a strategy at this moment because it can go like worse as well. It doesn't mean that when you're saying strategy is going to be better. So when you know that your current strategy is this close to the opponent, I think you just want to find those final small bits and pieces and tweaks from that strategy to make that, you know, work very streamlined and then kind of like try to find the, uh, the required points using that strategy. That's, I think... Uh, would be the uh, would be the case right now, but of course we just have to wait and see. I mean, when we have the bands, as we can see, I mean, just just thinking out loud, all the telehandlers are, are available. 
Right. The telehandlers are available, but they have the disadvantage of they can't pull a baler behind them as well. So you still end up in that same situation. They're really fast, which is great to get bales out from the field into the barn quickly, especially early in a round. Um, and I don't want to count them out here. I would assume that Vulture are going to pick the Lender and the JCB again and have those two stackers. We'll kind of see how they go. Um, but the telehandlers are not a bad thing to pick because they're the same cost. They're only two points. It's not like they cost anything mm. extra. Um, and there is the JCB. And it looks like you're right. I think Ehrenfeld are going to stick to their strategy. It's gotten them this far, so uh, why not stick with it? So there will be an extra stacker for Valtra. So for Ehrenfeld, I think the way that they combat that is they make sure that they bring Vales in early if they can find the time to do so. You don't want to leave mm -hmm. them out there with two minutes to go. you got to get them in earlier so that you can mm -hmm. score them. Uh, only time will tell the next 15 minutes or so how this one's going to play out. Will we uh, have that third of the best of three, or will Valtra be moving on to tomorrow's final in the loser's bracket, the chance to get into the semifinal? Mm, true. Well, we're going to figure that out in a matter of seconds, well, a matter of minutes, as we do have the next match starting up. We can see that the, uh, the challenge is, I mean, nobody's going to be challenging uh, Valtra on this pad. We can see that also uh, Ehenfeld is going to find that ideal oh my. without any <laughs> major problems. I mean, of course, a bit of a damage on the back end, maybe that 25k <laughs> worth of damage. I mean, probably that's one of those things as well that you don't want to do with the real equipment that you're going to just crash with the tractor to the yeah. combine. <laughs> that would be quite quite nasty. I, I don't think that people would be appreciating it. And now we can see also that the teams are side by sides on the fields trying to get the first bail or not just trying, they're getting it. And Valtra actually, I think they are a bit, a bit closer. They have a fir first bail which is looking very strong. So let's see. He's going to swing that up as well. It seems to be coming out, but he's going to reverse it. But it's going to be still more than 140 points. It's going to be 142 maybe. 43, so even better. So that's a very nice. strong first bail for Valtra this time. Yeah, and a little bit, uh, it's going to be a closer margin this time as well if Jeppy doesn't mess this alignment up. Looks like he's good, 130. So uh, less than one bail. That's, you know, a, a decent spot to be in. You can make that up later on in the round. So now it's all about getting that straw out behind your harvester, getting the grain delivered as we see a, a first-person view of uh, smacking into the fence there, and that kind of slowed them down a little bit on the approach. <laughs> yeah, it looks pretty rough. I mean, uh, from the from the player's point of view, definitely, when you're like, crashing and you're just seeing the sky, it's just like, a, well, if you, if you mess up with the real vehicle, that's pretty much what you can see. Yeah, let's not talk about more about that, but the... Uh, it's definitely not the sight that you want to be witnessing. Maybe we should have like some animals here, like deers running or, or, or mooses or something like that. And then we can see from the first person view when, when the players are going to try to dodge them out as they're running from the forest. <laughs> yeah, I don't think anyone you know. wants that. Uh, although the, 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 there's only one animal that the fans are demanding to see, and that's the return of Big Pig. So you see the blimp uh, on the map here occasionally. We used to have one. Uh, called Big Pig, um, and we have had a lot of requests for that to return. Who knows what the future holds? Maybe Big Pig will make his return. I don't know for sure. Um, as we have a look, both teams now getting the grain unloaded into the Horse Titan, the grain cart at work, and uh, Jeppy all ready to go with the first load heading to the silo here, and I would expect that Voltra are ready to respond. I wouldn't mind having, let's say, some chickens around the, uh, for example, the silos, you know, just you know, lurking around the, uh, not really on a, on a position where you want to drive or you could be driving, but, you know, have some movement there. I think chicken is definitely an animal, which usually you can find it from any farm, at least in Finland, uh, even though if they're focusing on something else, but there's still like some always somewhere around. What but about anyways, a, uh, we can see the unloading starting from for, for Diatska, so we can see Jeppy, he's going to start unloading it. Uh, it's going to take the multiplier. They don't have, well, I don't know if they have the bales. We can see Valtra also at the same time just starting to unload. So this is going to be a pretty even situation in the end as soon as both teams have 
uh, you know, finish the unloading because the speed limit's being picked. So we have the 12 minute drops coming in and the speed limit will be chosen by both of the teams. So no major Hold on, differences though. You can't, here. You can't mention chickens and not allow me to respond. Imagine oh, yeah, this, have time. A, giant, a giant chicken that appears during a drop and eats the grain out of your opponent's grain cart. What do you think? <laughs> Just I mean, yeah, that's good. But even better would be that he would come and eat your pancakes <laughs> out of your plate. <laughs> no if you would have that. pancakes, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, like some some kind of like a natural disaster as it dropped, and then we have like a bunch of animals coming and just destroying your bales <laughs> by whatever means necessary. <laughs> okay, uh, I heard of maybe cows that's smashing part, right? into your harvester, and. Yeah. Uh, flipping it over 143 yeah. to 130 both teams picked up speed limits so they kind of canceled each other out with the 12th minute drop and both these teams really kind of just matching each other so far except for that first bail and 10 minutes to play out it's too early to tell how this one's going to take shape yeah i mean if you if you want to think about like new drops for the next season one thing that i have been wondering for some time that I imagine if there would be a job that when you go pick that up and it would like place some like uh, tree branches or something on the field and when they uh, when the combine or harvest is going to come it's going to like you know jam the blades <laughs> that you cannot collect grain for example. yeah it would be all. cool um if possible in the future i think it would be cool to see like maybe not a giant chicken that's me being a little bit goofy and outrageous <laughs> um but so some things that some more drops that disrupt your opponent like most of the, all of the drops really i mean silo close can disrupt your opponent but most of the time both teams are picking it up right but something that has a negative impact on the equipment of your opponent maybe um you know it just completely does something to break down a tractor or you know something else that it could really throw a team off you have to balance that in the right way though because the nice thing I do like about this season compared to the previous ones is that more often than not in season four, the games have come down to the execution of skill and not mm. the luck of, you know, a thing like a drop. Yeah. The super drops can still kind of have an effect on a game and kind of give you more of an advantage to get back. But I don't think that there's really been any game changing moments with drops or super drops that have made it to where a team that uh you know just got lucky ended up winning over a team that that executed better so um it would be cool to see more things like this in the future but of course you always have to think about the balance when you make these types of decisions mm, exactly the balance is the difficult one because we don't want to make the game just about you know random drops which are funny for us and unfair to the players that's that's the most problematic part maybe we should have just you know i mean there was the uh, the pancake or the waffle hut mod already for the ad, ad edition for the uh, for the farming simulator. So maybe we should have one of those waffle huts somewhere, like you know, lying on the map, and there would be, let's say, a giant employees like Jenny would be eating pancakes, and then that giant chicken, when you kind of pick that up, it actually goes there and eats <laughs> the pancake from Jenny's plate, just like she told on the chat uh, like, with a capital letter. No one will touch my pancakes, not even a giant chicken. Uh, we have our eighth minute drops out there, and uh, as of yet, neither team have picked them up. It looks like bail drop, and I think, was it uh, Bridges lowered? Only cut a quick glimpse of them. We're going back towards them now. Presumably, Jeppy's going to go pick one up. Yeah, uh, yeah it is bail drop and Bridges lowered. And still yeah. 13 seconds to collect one. Uh, yeah, he's going to go and pick it up. The bridge is lowered. Bridge is lowered by both teams. Going for it. Yeah. I mean, the bail doesn't have that much of an impact at this stage of the game. I, I think both teams right. are realizing it. It's going to be more like better to try to at least on some level to disrupt the enemy or the opponent. And there we go. The grain is going to be yeah, why, unloaded. Why have one bail dropped when you can just bring more in quickly by going over the drawbridges? Because now every bridge is available to use while this is active even with bottleneck in play so why bring why have one dropped automatically when you could bring in presumably you know three or four 
uh, at a time. Um, so both teams, like you said, are also delivering grain at this moment and pretty much matching each other. And uh, right now, a slight advantage for Valtra, but that's just because Ehrenfeld haven't delivered all of theirs. So um, it's going to come down to, I think, the execution and the amount of bales pressed here with six minutes to go. The multiplier looks likely to be even, and there it is now. Yeah, it's pretty even. I mean, it's 2.0, so that is very even. And as we have this five and a half something minutes remaining, then of course, it seems that once again, it's gonna come down to the final moments. Oh, Whee! this is something we don't see happening that often. Was there, was there like a, okay, it wasn't intentional, but I mean, that was it like, a, you know, just making a mistake, not understanding the speed. Yeah, that, that you know, Lindner pedal got jammed. has that potential. <laughs> that Lindner has that potential if you if you move too quickly with it. And you see, uh, this is why teams would prefer to have the John Deere for the triple stacker. It's a lot more stable. We might even see Anton. Uh, he's able to go over the drawbridge, but that Lindner is shaky over the safer route as well. It's definitely uh, one that you have to have a little bit more control in the way you're handling it. Mm. Well five minutes to go so it's it will be uh, the normal stacking battle we can see uh, uh Ehenfeld currently leading on the points with more bales on the Valtra side so if all the bales let's let's once again let's play the imaginary play that all the bales are going to go in and also with the with the multiplier to the second floor or with the bottom boost and all these bales they should be resulting to a quite similar point situation and Oof. there we can see a bit of a problem as well I mean that's uh I would say a lucky one at uh, these bales they are a bit sideways but that shouldn't be a problem so Valtra should be getting all those bales inside we can see Ehenfeld they're trying to catch up at the same time as well they're delivering all the bales they can five bales are heading right next to the belt we can see that they are starting to in a way like organize that team. oh and no one sir is gonna drop. oh that's <sighs> bad news he might get stuck here if he's not careful oh, he, he needs to detach here. that Oh, that is going to slow them down. And the super drop's about to appear. And he did the right thing there by detaching, I think, and leaving it. Mm -hmm. Bale withering for one bale in this close of a contest could win this. But will the teams <laughs> take the time to go get it? Now Linux is just going to come in. What is he doing? <laughs> he thought he could push oh. it, I think. But the angle actually turned it into a ramp. And now Surin is yeah. able to collect the bale. And, uh, yeah, just Vultra ha being slowed down now by this minor mistake. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, it's getting close. I mean, that one bail, it's going to make some difference. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's very close. It, it can actually make the difference. Now we can see it's 23 points the difference. And there's a couple of a bail of a difference. So that one bail away from Vultra, it could give Ehenfeld, I would say, a slight advantage definitely here. But it yeah, seems that they will not go for it. They will choose that yeah, it's not going to be that impactful. They didn't take the bail drop and they don't take the bail withering either. And now Ian fell. Let's see. The, I mean, the efficiency is once again the key. It has been. And just like you said it, Kermit, mean, you said that this season has been about the individual skill, how well you play the game. And uh, in general, like, you know, it's not about like, random stuff happening on the fields. And I think these games, when we have series that are so close to each other, just like this one, they are proving that point. Yeah, I think you're right, and I mean, I like that. I like that for sure, and I'm actually really surprised at how well Valtra have been playing. I think it's not that, you know, they, they got here on merit. All the teams have, um, but this could be, you know, our first really big upset of the day. Um, we could see the fourth place team going out if Valtra are able to hold this lead, and Ehrenfeld do have the bales, and the good thing is, unlike the last round at this stage, they have brought the bales in early. Without that second stacker, they've done the right thing. So now Fallwee can just sit there at the barn and make sure he's getting all of them into the top. And I do believe they have the bales here to close this gap. He just has to make sure he gets the stacking right and that all of these are going into the top. Hmm. Yeah, it's got to be getting close. I mean, only one and a half minutes remaining. There's a huge amount of bales available, though, for Ehenfeld. 
But I don't think that they can, you know, get all of those inside. That's the problem. They are 100 points behind. So in theory, if they would put all those, if both teams would put all the bales inside, Ihenfeld would oh, be winning. Oh, that's a little shaky. With, with, you know, oh, pretty good God. amount of points. I think those are gonna go actually inside. They are so nicely on the middle that I think that they will go. Yeah, that worked and out yes, well. They will. <laughs> Because they were like sideways, and they're like even laughing about it here. Uh, that's uh, actually a different team, but still they're laughing about something. But, but I, I would say that if all the bales gonna be delivered, then I think there's slight chance for Ihenfeld to come back. But yeah, it's gonna be very hard to get all of those bales inside. But we have seen these like last second miracles. That's oh, not gonna help one. the cause. Oh, yeah. It's fall down, and they are already putting the bales on the first floor, which is not a good sign. They know that they have way too many bales. They have more bales they can handle at the time and Vulture they are just you know very very like um, they have a they have a system here we can see that they are just you know putting them inside that is shaky on, on Ehenfeld's side but those still might go inside yeah and I think it's an it's another case they had the bales there but they're running low on time it is really close however um and there's yes. been an oops by Vulture somewhere off screen I don't know if that was intentional or not 723 to 690 I just don't think they're gonna have enough time here. No. That one's gonna go in 753 to 710, 753 to 730, and Vultra have done it. The seventh seed coming into the weekend. Stay alive, and they move on to the final of the, of the losers bracket and give, have given themselves a chance to move on to the semifinals. And the fourth seeded team Deyaka Ehenfeld are out. Wow. Yeah, that's true. I mean, it's definitely something that we didn't expect to happen. Um, well, but still, I mean, Vulture, they played a good game. They won 2-0. It was a clean, clean series from both of the teams in a way. Like, you know, some mistakes here and there. But still, in the end, I think Vulture, they just played very well. It wasn't like about luck. It wasn't about the drops. It wasn't about the random stuff. They just played it really well. They had a systematic yeah. play, which kind of gave the end result. And, uh, of course, it's a huge upset, just like you said, that we're going to be losing Kiatka at this point of, uh, of the tournament. But, you know, life is what it is. And... Uh, they have to go back to the drawing port. Hopefully, going to come back stronger next season once again. And uh, it's just 23 points. That's the difference. They have a couple more bales more delivered, but a couple more, a couple bales less to the to the second level of the barn. And that's one of those differences. Of course, the first bale was a thing as well. Right. They just ran short on time. And Alex, we were talking earlier about. The disadvantage you can put yourself in when you're crunched for time if you don't have a second stacker and i think we kind of saw that in a different way in this one as you rejoin us uh tell us what you feel about it because they had to push bales into the bottom and as maddie just said that was what really made the difference yeah absolutely that that second stacker really does make the difference uh when they have it and it's uh, and and not being able to get it on there, even 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 at the end, you know, how, as you said, having all those bales at the uh, there and being unable to get them on the uh, the actual um, on the actual conveyor, um, yeah, right. That's uh, that's huge. So uh, Voltra versus Lindner will be our, our second game tomorrow. Which is, right, uh, both of those teams still alive, and we have the interview right away here. And, uh, yeah, it was a pretty close match, is what the captain of Vulture is saying here. Wasn't our best play at, uh, at some points, uh, especially with the speed limit. Not our best, but we haven't practiced a lot against opponents directly. And we kind of struggle with the timing, uh, with the drops. It was okay in the end for us, though. It was enough. And Homer saying, "Yeah, you, I mean, you still won two zero, um, and made it through." Yeah, a lot of bad luck for uh, Deaka. Basically, they got stuck in bridges and had some things go against them. What do you think? What do you think about the rest of the tournament? And tomorrow, you're up against Lindner. We want to do our best against them. We'll see, uh, you know, if if we can make it through. And our goal is to get at least third place. 
tomorrow. Uh, last year, we were in the finals as Team LSA, and now different with the sponsorship of Voltra. All right, we're going to have a look at the replay. So, yeah, what they said there is if they can win tomorrow against Lindner. The, so it's first a group A against second and B and vice versa. That is our semifinals tomorrow. But we'll have the two fifth place games, Copter, to settle first. Um, there's still two spots in the semifinal uh, to decide. We've got My Insanity and Badnar, a rematch of the second game of the day in group A to decide who's runner up there. And then Lindner against Voltra and Group B tomorrow. So uh, as we have a look at the highlights, first tell me like uh, what you think about um, kind of these these final spots in the finals. Do you expect uh, there to be any real surprises there? And who do you think are your favorites? It's very hard to call. I mean, especially the next match on this Group B, I mean, the Lindner versus Voltra. Uh, I was just looking at that lineup and uh, I, I, I was thinking about it like, how that's going to go because i mean Valtra is now showing a very good performance beating the fourth uh, place team on the circuit points and uh, and, and lindner kind of like still having that like the black horse element of the whole tournament so that you know that i don't know how that's going to go to be honest so i mean both of the teams i'm going to be happy because i do kind of like you know cheer for lindner because i really like how they play and the, because they did the, the combo stuff today as well and then like i said Valtra <laughs> as a as one of my like, teams that is like close to my heart because of the nation where they're coming from. I mean, as, as a team, as an organization. So uh, it, it's a hard call. I, I mean, both teams I kind of like hope would be, uh, you know, getting to the semis. But of course, that is that is just not possible. Right. Alex, are you surprised by how strong Vulture were there against Ayaka Ehrenfeld? Yeah, it was uh, it was a real turnaround from their first game. They they came back they were strong they were uh they were doing everything right and uh yeah i, I didn't expect them to to be quite as strong as they were after after that uh that first loss today um but they seem to be finding their stride a bit and that could that could make a, a big difference um to coming up against lintner tomorrow um, if they have that confidence uh, and they come into it they they very easily could make it through to the semi-finals yeah, I think, I mean, the only teams really uh, with the pressure off, at least temporarily, are Trelleborg and New Holland. They get to uh, sit by and kind of watch their potential future opponents tomorrow in those uh, fifth matches of each group, the final, if you will, of the loser's bracket to decide who will make it into the semifinal. Um, yeah, those are the only two confirmed teams. So Lindner and Voltra will fight for the right to play Trelleborg, the number one seed, and then for My Insanity and Bednar's rematch, what's at stake is a matchup against New Holland. And Voltra, yeah, they were pretty strong there. I think they were they showed the nerves, especially after that first round. And you could see a little bit of sliding of their tractor at times and a little bit shaky still going over the bridges. So that's the type of thing that they might need to clean up tomorrow because uh, although they are facing off against Linder in the loser's bracket, Linder really had uh, four really strong performances, too, in my opinion, uh, or two really strong performances in each match that they played. Um, and they are probably the favorite and, uh, of course, of the higher seed. But uh, Voltra showed that that didn't really matter to them. So, guys, uh, let's set the scene for tomorrow. So for you, Maddie, it's your first ever season final for the Farming Simulator League. Actually, it is for me, too, because I was sick last <laughs> year, and DJ Goham stepped in. It just hit me. Um, so for me, I'm yeah. excited, too. But, Maddie, tell me how you're feeling about it. I'm definitely excited about it. I think there's going to be so many uh, uh, interesting matches already. The first games for tomorrow, they're going to be all very exciting series. Of course, looking very much forward to the uh, kind of like the lower bracket matches that we're going to be seeing the match number, was it five, from each of the brackets because right. they are both very close and of course somebody will be eliminated. So I think my focus is going to be there. Right. Yeah, we already know that Trelleborg and New Holland are sitting and waiting. They're the two teams to beat Alex. Um, and we're having a look now. So they, like I said, get to sit by tomorrow. 
And I think, uh, obviously, they're already the stronger team. They've earned the right to now be able to sit and watch tomorrow. They'll be able to kind of watch and see what their opponent is doing. So if you're my Insanity and Bednar, you're Linder and Vultra, your first focus is you got to win that game. But then how do you go into a potential matchup if you advance against Trelleborg and New Holland? How do you surprise the two best teams in the Farming Simulator League, Alex? That's that's the thing. It's it's a, a tough route to go through the loser's bracket, um, especially for uh, Vultra and uh, and for... Um, uh, and... <sighs> I'm trying to remember the other team we went through. Um, and, uh, and <laughs> Linder Mainz and Vultra. Yeah. And, and have had to, to work their way all the way through the losers. Right. right. You know, they're playing a lot of games to make it to the semifinal. Um, I think all four right. teams in those game fives, in the in those loser bracket games, are really strong teams. Um, in the games, we've seen them get through to, uh, to, to get that opportunity. So uh, yeah, I think it's uh, I think there's everything to play for, and I think it's going to be a, an amazing day of FSL tomorrow. Yeah, we've got six matches coming your way. It all starts at 10 a.m. Central European time, 4 a.m. Eastern time. Right here, same channel. The same three guys will be back. I'm looking forward to it with Copter and Virtual Farmer joining me again tomorrow, and all of you in chat. Hopefully, we'll be back as well. Uh, we'll see you then. Until then. Keep being awesome, guys. Bye.